Copyright web novel Claim Your, I was among the first 10 readers of this fanfic, Badge by commenting here. Now, let the new journey begin. Shit, why did you make me come to this point in time? In a civilian house in Amagecure, Ruji's face was full of displeasure. It was now the 59th year in the shinobi world, and the young people would graduate soon. As soon as they graduate, Orochimaru's Kanoha destruction plan would begin. Immediately after, the Kami Pain, who was now in Amagecure, would start the tailed beast capture plan. At that time, Amagecure would become the enemy of the whole shinobi world. How was a guy who didn't even have chakra going to survive the fourth shinobi war? This was the shinobi world, where people died, and clans perished. Ding! The examination system is bound. When he heard the name of the system, Ruji was confused. No way, I've crossed over to the Naruto world, and I still haven't escaped exams. It wasn't until Ruji looked at the entire examination system that he realized that he was the one overthinking it. This examination system wasn't for him to take exams, but to pull some people to the exam space and take the exam. To ensure the fairness of the exam in space, the whole process of the exam would be broadcasted live. There were five questions in each exam. Correctly answering three questions would mean a pass, and the higher the accuracy rate, the more generous the reward received. On the contrary, if one failed the exam, the examinee would have to face severe punishment and take a makeup exam. And to make up, they would have to pay the makeup fee. As the system owner, each time the test was taken, Ruji could choose a part of the test questions. The system would randomly select the remaining ones from the question bank. Likewise, he may receive a percentage of the candidate's award or makeup fees. Knowing this, a glint of light flashed in Ruji's eyes. If he pulled Payne, Conan, and the others into the examination space and then assigned them some examination questions that would reveal the course of the future, then the shinobi world's future would definitely change. Without the Eye of the Moon plan, without Black Zetsu, Uchihamadara, and others scheming, could the shinobi world enter the era of peace by then? He could also reveal Akatsuki to everyone. Allowing everyone to improve. And by the way, take the paper angel Conan home to warm his own nest. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Just do it. Ruji opened the examination space, waiting for those who were selected to enter. At the same time, in a building at the top of Amage Cure. Payne was in a wheelchair, with Conan standing behind him, looking calmly at the man who called himself Uchiha Madara. Behind the latter stood a guy with a huge Venus flytrap plant on his body. These two were none other than Uchiha Abito and Zetsu. At the moment, the two were pressuring Payne to execute the Eye of the Moon's tailed beast capture plan as soon as possible. Therefore, they brought Kakuzu, Sasori, Uchiha Itachi into the organization as early as six months ago. Now, Akatsuki had gathered all ten renegade shinobi besides Abito. Ten Kage-level shinobis. The current Akatsuki had an extremely frightening combat capability. Therefore, Abito didn't want to wait. He couldn't wait for, that world with Rin to happen. I got word that Orochimaru is about to attack Kanoha, and when that happens, we can take advantage of the chaos to invade Kanoha and take the Kyubi Jinchuriki away. Zetsu's voice was somewhat eerie. The green leaves above his head swayed as he spoke. Pain calmly looked at the duo. The Rinnegan's ring seemed incredibly strange. But neither Abito nor Zetsu was a simple character. They acted as if they couldn't feel the pressure Pain exerted on them. Pain was just about to speak when a radiant light suddenly lit up among the crowd. The light converged rapidly as the crowd watched, forming a massive and incomparable portal. When the sudden portal appeared, Conan subconsciously stepped forward and stood in front of Pain. Behind her, a pair of paper wings instantly opened, and the explosive tags were raised, ready to detonate at any time. At the entrance of Amage Cure, Pain, who was preparing to go on a mission with Itachi, suddenly stopped and turned his head and ran towards the top of Amage Cure. Uchiha Itachi looked at the back of Deva Path Pain, and his eyes flashed a different color. After half a year's contact, Uchiha Itachi knew that the leader possessed the most mysterious and unpredictable, Rinnegan. He called himself Kami as if nothing in the world could make his indifferent eyes fluctuate. But just now, it was clear that something beyond his expectations had happened. He left without saying a word. And even. Uchiha Itachi looked up. Somehow, the rain had stopped in Aim Village. 
Uchiha Itachi pondered for a moment. His two hands, under the black robes with red clouds, each made a seal. Two different jutsu were activated at the same time. Clone Technique Transformation Technique On the surface, Uchiha Itachi disappeared. But in fact, his true self had gone after Deva Path Pain. As the clone was left in his place, he left leisurely. At the same time, in Amage Cure, five hidden figures opened their eyes at the same time and woke up from a deep sleep. They share the same Rinnegan and short black sticks for transmitting chakra stuck in their bodies. They were the other paths of pain, outside of Deva Path. The five figures rose up simultaneously, chakra raging around their bodies, racing towards the Amage Cure above. Someone invaded. In Amage Cure, the other members of Akatsuki felt the surge of chakra and immediately ran towards where it was converging. As the figures flew in, they stood in front of Nagato and Conan as if they were enemies. Deva Path aimed his hands at the light portal, ready to unleash God's realm technique at any time to repel the incoming attackers. Ashura Path was prepared, his wrists were bent, and a series of missiles appeared, ready to shoot at any time. The human path's hands were in the shape of claws, waiting for the incoming attackers. As long as the other party appeared, he would be the first to kill the other party in seconds, extracting the other party's soul and memory. And the animal path, Preta path, and Naraka path were surrounding both sides of Pain and Conan, paying close attention to anything that moved. At this moment, Pain could no longer care about hiding his real body and ability, he stared at the light portal with deadly eyes. He could hardly imagine that there was someone who could silently perform a jutsu on them all in the entire shinobi world. And it worked. How is this possible? Did the Sage of the Six Paths do this? To be precise, in addition to him having the Rinnegan, there was also Uchiha Madara with Mangekyo Sharingan here. The Uchiha Madara. The once Shura of the Shinobi world. On the other hand, Uchiha Abido, who was posing as Uchiha Madara, was seen by other Akatsuki members who arrived before he could hide. A new member. Another Sharingan. As soon as Daidara came in, he saw Uchiha Abido and his one eye, outside of the mask, and suddenly felt displeased. He joined Akatsuki and was caught by Uchiha Itachi's Sharingan. His hatred for those eyes was as strong as Orochimaru's longing for them. Madara Unlike Daidara, Uchiha Itachi was pulled into Akatsuki by Abido, and therefore, Uchiha Itachi always thought that Abido was Madara. After all, the other party had helped him destroy his clan, and the only person with that kind of strength, in his knowledge, was Madara. At that moment, seeing Madara here surprised him. Didn't he say he wasn't joining Akatsuki? Could it be that the leaders got into a dispute? But compared to this, the disabled man who was being kept behind by the leader was the object of his greatest concern. To be protected by the leader. His importance was self-evident. Uchiha Itachi's heart stirred. He fanned his wings and landed on the beams of the building, watching below. The Jutsu user isn't within a hundred mile radius. Zetsu, who had disappeared at some point, burst out of the ground. His voice was filled with seriousness. He lived for thousands of years, living through the entire history and rise and fall of the shinobi world. He had never seen such a peculiar technique. He mobilized tens of thousands of white zetsu and checked all the chakra fluctuations within a hundred mile radius but still couldn't find the wielder. This showed that either the wielder was more than a hundred miles away or this was an existence beyond their common sense. For some reason, the moment zetsu saw the light portal, he had the feeling that his thousands of years of preparation were about to be ruined. Humph, with so many people, do we have to be afraid of this thing? Kakuzu grunted coldly, and a tentacled creature with a ghost mask emerged from his back and walked towards the portal. Swoosh! A blinding white light flashed. In the next moment, everyone realized that they had arrived in a pure white space. The Akatsuki group was carefully exploring this unknown space. This was a pure white space filled with thick white fog that made them completely lose their bearings. At the same time, huge screens suddenly appeared all over the world. Throughout the shinobi world, almost everyone had a screen above their heads. Screens that appeared in places like shinobi villages and nations, where people converge, were even bigger. After these screens appeared, they first flickered a few times, and then sound images began to appear. It was the view from within the examination space. 
the people in the examination space didn't know that the entire shinobi world was watching their every move. Even their voices were very clear. In Kanahagakur, the third Hokage, Sarutobi Hiruzen stared at the sudden images. His eyes looked grave. He dispatched Umbu to investigate the screens that suddenly appeared in various parts of Kanoha. He believed that with Umbu's ability, he would soon get the desired results. As he watched, a group of figures wearing black robes with red clouds appeared on the screen. These people were both men and women, and without exception, all carried an extremely imposing presence. Kage level powerhouses. Sarutobi Hiruzen shook his head. If for others, a dozen Kage level powerhouses was a strong force, but for Kanoha. But, um. But when did such a force emerge in the shinobi world? Could it be a secret scheme from another shinobi village? Just as Sarutobi Hiruzen wondered, a figure on the screen suddenly formed a seal with both hands and slapped his palm on the ground. Such sealing speed. Summoning technique. It failed. As a jutsu expert, Sarutobi Hiruzen had a veteran eye. The moment the other party made a seal, he could tell that the other party would perform a summoning technique. But what he didn't expect was that the other party would fail. Even the jutsu writings didn't come out. This low-end mistake could be avoided, even if it was Naruto up there. Is it, the space? Sarutobi Hiruzen's heart sank. He narrowed his eyes to look closely at the shinobi. This shinobi was very strange. His whole body was shrouded in a black robe. Black sticks were stuck in his exposed ears and face. Even on the eyes. Wait. Eyes. Sarutobi Hiruzen suddenly stood up and looked into the eyes of the shinobi with horror. Rinnegan. These were the legendary eyes that belonged to the Sage of Six Paths. Sarutobi Hiruzen's face was solemn as he looked at the group of people behind the shinobi. He couldn't care less about a dozen Kage level shinobi. But Rinnegan, he couldn't help but. This is impossible. How can there be so many Rinnegan? Sarutobi Hiruzen's horrified voice resounded through the Hokage's office. These dozen people were all Kage level powerhouses, that was fine. But there were seven pairs of Rinnegan. He was trembling, staring at the picture in front of him, dying to get into the screen to find out what was going on. As if it heard Sarutobi Hiruzen's yearning, the picture suddenly zoomed in. Like a close up, passing in front of each face. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Confirming once again, Sarutobi Hiruzen sat down feebly in his chair. He couldn't understand why such a terrifying power had appeared in the shinobi world. He rubbed his eyes and tiredly looked at the screen again, right into a pair of scarlet eyes. Mangekyo Sharingan. Itachi. Hiruzen was startled again. He didn't realize that, at this moment, his voice had taken on a shaky tone. He didn't expect that the organization Itachi told him he would join was such a horrifying one. The scene shifted again to a guy wearing a mask. He only had one eye. Sarutobi Hiruzen was just about to take a breather when suddenly, a blinding red light erupted from that one eye, almost causing the third Hokage to lose his breath. I, I, isn't that Mangekyo? Achiha Itachi. On the training ground of Kanoha Ninja School, a black-haired boy was coldly sparring with a fox-whiskered boy when he suddenly saw the figure of Achiha Itachi on the screen. I'm going to kill you. In Sunagekir, Raza, the fourth Kazakage, stood at the village entrance and looked at the screen in the sky angrily. Behind him, there was a group of Suna shinobis who he had just reprimanded, all with their heads down. You bunch of trash, who can tell me who they are? Trash, trash. Somebody else is throwing a jutsu at your gate, and you don't have any response. And you're still telling me that you can't find anyone? Bah, a group of useless trash. Find them for me. Even if you have to dig the ground. Find them. The more Raza cursed, the more anxious he was. The Suna shinobi standing behind him didn't dare to look straight at him. Suddenly, among the shinobi behind Raza, someone recognized Sasori in the image. Sasori. Why is he there? Chiyo's grandson. Yes, that's him, that's his Hiroko puppet. I fought him when he defected. Didn't he defect? Could this be the organization he defected to? It looks powerful. Listening to the voices chattering behind him, Raza's eyes narrowed. Bring the two elders to me. 
tell them to give me an explanation. In a casino in the land of iron. A blonde woman brazenly pushed her chips forward. Open. 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 Hmm. The woman felt something and looked at the image that somehow appeared overhead. Why is that guy up there? Forget it, whatever, whatever. Open, open. Ah, uh, I lost again. Shizun, bring the money. Next time, I'll win. Such scenes weren't only happening in these places, but also in other places. Jutsu is invalid here. Seeing the animal path's futile efforts, Abito suddenly spoke out. Not only ordinary jutsu but time-space jutsu also couldn't be used. Itachi? Why the hell are you here too? Daydara suddenly made a sound in the crowd. The group looked at the sound and saw that Daydara was squeezing a few clay bombs and was aiming at Uchiha Itachi. Without a word, a big conflict was going to start. Red, is this illusion technique? Conan saw Uchiha Itachi appearing out of nowhere. Her pupils shrank slightly and then she spoke as if nothing had happened. Uchiha Itachi had a pair of Mangekyo Sharingan that could see through most illusion techniques, and he, himself, was a master of illusion technique. No. Itachi had a calm expression. As a professional spy, even if an S-class forbidden technique were fired in front of him, he wouldn't change his expression. It had become a solid passive skill. It's just that, under his calm appearance, his heart already had great waves. Suddenly, footsteps sounded. Uchiha Itachi looked puzzled, and together with the people of Akatsuki, they looked back. Two figures were coming through the fog. The moment they saw the Akatsuki crowd, the two people visibly froze. A dozen figures in black robes with red clouds stood together, creating a tremendous visual impact. Akatsuki. Orochimaru's hoarse voice rang out with seven part surprise and three part scorn. Orochimaru. Akatsuki's crowd saw that the visitor was Orochimaru, and one by one, the corners of their mouths picked up into inexplicable smiles as they turned their heads to look at their leader, Pain. Orochimaru attacked Uchiha Itachi six months ago and defected from Akatsuki after having his hands chopped off by Itachi. They didn't expect to see him here. That's really clever. Sasori glanced at Orochimaru coldly, pulled out a scroll from his body, and looked at Orochimaru quietly. It seems that Akatsuki had gone to great lengths to catch me. Orochimaru sneered and took out his Kusanagi sword from his stomach, and assumed a fighting stance. He knew that he was in trouble today. After all, he couldn't beat the leader and Itachi, even in his prime. Not to mention now, there were other members of Akatsuki. Orochimaru knew exactly how weird the people who could join this organization were. First, find a way to get out of here, and as for Orochimaru, we'll talk about it when we get out. Payne said and turned his gaze to another place, where another figure also became clear. The untamed white spiky hair, a huge scroll behind his back, and a forehead protector with the word oil, written on it. With a greasy face and untidiness. There was only one person dressed like this in the whole shinobi world. Jiraiya. Payne didn't expect that this space would pull him in as well. It seems that this wasn't just for Akatsuki. Sensei. Behind pain, Conan's body tensed up the moment she saw Jiraiya, and then, with a long sigh, her tense body slowly relaxed. Jiraiya was flabbergasted by the scene before him. Glancing at Orochimaru, who was also on guard, he thought, this wasn't Akatsuki's ambush for me because they found out that I was investigating them, right? Conan's voice was so weak that Jiraiya couldn't even hear it, but it was live streamed out of the space. Sensei. Did she just call Jiraiya Sensei? My god, Jiraiya Sama's disciple is so beautiful and powerful. But I never heard that Jiraiya Sama was accepting disciples. Bullshit, if you knew, the whole shinobi world would know. In my opinion, today's incident is in all probability the brilliant plan of our third Hokage Sama. Plan. Think about it, although it's peacetime right now which other shinobi village isn't eyeing us. If Hokage-sama took the initiative to divulge Kanoha's strength, combining reality and illusion to scare them, wouldn't it eliminate war in its infancy? Surprisingly, that makes sense. We are so lucky to have such a far-sighted Hokage-sama. Long live, third Hokage-sama. Long live, third Hokage-sama. Kanoha, Roots Headquarters. 
listening to the cries outside, Danzo's face was incomparably gloomy. He didn't expect Sarutobi, that old guy, to let Orochimaru and Jiraiya take in students outside Kanoha. No wonder Jiraiya never came back to the village. It turned out he was teaching Kaga level students. So, it seems that Orochimaru's defection and Tsunade's departure were both intentional. Sarutobi, I never thought your schemes were this deep. Danzo's two fists are clenched tightly. He had to be the next Okage. He would never allow these two people to take over his authority. Never. In Iwagakure, Anoki, the current Suchikage, looked at the picture somberly. The village had withered. He had to continue to hold the position of Kage as the young generation had no successor for Tsuchikage. He was the oldest Tsuchikage, the most knowledgeable, and the best at conspiracy theories. Seeing this scene, he immediately decided that this image was Kanoha's means to show their strength. However, he had to acknowledge the brilliance of that old man, Sarutobi, in choosing to reveal Kanoha's strength at this time. Looking at the woman who addressed Jiraiya as sensei, Anoki was furious. Their Iwagakure also had a gifted teenager who mastered the unique secret technique, which was very powerful. He was the most promising person to become the next Suchikage. But. 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 This fucking kid showed up on the screen. Daydara, you little brat, don't let me catch you. Above the clouds, Ruji saw that all the participants had arrived and waved his hand. Suddenly, in the white space, large letters began to condense. The space and rules here were introduced to the crowd. Examination space, after the exam, you will be rewarded or punished according to your score. No jutsu allowed in the examination space, and no fighting. Violators will be punished. After reading the introduction, the crowd had a thoughtful expression on their faces. They were all rebellious shinobis of the major shinobi villages, top powerhouses, who had long matured. Although their hearts scoffed at the punishment described by the space, none of them raised objections. Instead, one by one, they became interested in the lists in the space above them. According to the space, these lists collect information from the entire shinobi world, and the test questions for their exams were categorized according to the lists. Permission Restriction Only the top 10 can be viewed from the shinobi's pride list, the rest can't be viewed. Please take the exam and upgrade your permission. Open the shinobi's world list. As the leader of Akatsuki, Payne didn't need to ask others for their opinions and spoke directly into space. Hey, this shinobi's pride list contains all kinds of lists in the world. I'd like to see where my name would be ranked in the top 10. Daidara's defiant voice sounded. His eyes looked at Uchiha Itachi provocatively. Itachi ignored it. Anoki, who was far away in IWA village, nodded at Daidara's words. It's not that Daidara was bragging. His talent was indeed the strongest of the younger two generations of Iwagakure. Otherwise, Anoki wouldn't pity his defection. Anoki estimated that in the entire shinobi world, the number of shinobis with greater talent than Daidara wouldn't be more than a handful. Oh, you want to compete with him? In Kanoha's training ground, Uchiha Sasuke coldly sneered. He didn't know who this guy was, acting more arrogant than himself. But he didn't deserve to compete with that guy. After all, even if he didn't want to admit it, it was his brother. Only he was allowed to challenge him. Under the nervous gaze of countless people, the shinobi's pride list slowly opened among the many giant lists hanging above the space. A golden light appeared on the list. Taking the giant list as paper, the light was the pen, writing down names one by one. The writing style was bold and vertical. The momentum could sink mountains and pull down the sky above. The handwriting alone overwhelmed the hearts of the crowd and filled them with awe. The overall look carried an unspeakable momentum and artistic conception. Number one strongest of the shinobi world, Atsutsuki Urashiki. Number one mother of the shinobi world, Atsutsuki Kagaya. Number one illusion of the shinobi world, afterimage clone. Number one taijutsu user of the shinobi world, the noble green beast, Mike Guy. Number one speed of the shinobi world, yellow flash, Namikaze Minato. Number one pervert of the shinobi world, Toad Sage, Jiraiya. Number one heroic person of the shinobi world, Senju Tsunade. Number one hardest to completely kill in the shinobi world, Orochimaru. 
Number one most filial son in the shinobi world, Black Zetsu. Number one most reckless ninja in the shinobi world, Uzumaki Naruto. No, nothing. Kakuzu looked at the names and felt a little upset. He was waiting to see the number one longest lifespan in the shinobi world. Why wasn't it there? He had some expectations and wondered if the following list had the number one longest lifespan in the shinobi world. Is the exam the only way to get permission to continue seeing it? Impossible. I can't believe that I, Daidara, the number one artist in the shinobi world, isn't on it. This list is fake, right? Humph, don't be a bragger. Even if there is the title of the number one artist in the shinobi world, it's still mine. Sasori's puppet looked at the ranking above, discarded his emotions, and suddenly had a desire to leave his name on it. Mother. When he saw Atsutsuki Kagaya's name, Black Zetsu's eyes were filled with alarm. He never imagined that such a name would be on the list. He had already erased her from the shinobi world's history. He even destroyed the clans with his mother's bloodline over the years. Could it be that the guy on the moon was behind this list? Black Zetsu looked upward but couldn't see anything. The moment they saw this list, some in the shinobi world concluded even more firmly that this was Kanoha's means of showing off their might. Others didn't know, but how could the five kages of other villages not know? Between these ten names on the list, Kanoha had seven. The remaining three couldn't be confirmed as Kanoha's people yet. Het boring tricks. In Kimogakure, the fourth rakage, saw this list and grunted coldly. A thunderbolt raged on his arm, directly shattering the table in front of him. Kanoha, you're through. Is the number one taijutsu user in the shinobi world a great name that a little jonin like you can carry? Someone, notify everyone that in three days, I will personally visit Kanoha's noble green beast. Tsunade-sama, your name is on it. In the casino, Shizun, holding Tauntin, pointed at the screen in surprise. Tsunade looked up, and her face instantly changed. Old man, you've crossed the line. Shaking her head in disappointment, Tsunade sighed. Even if she didn't like it anymore, it was the place that her great-grandfather and grandfather had built. Shizun, let's go. Tsunade-sama, where are we going? Kanoha. Ha. Huh. My name. That's my name. Ha ha ha. Uzumaki Naruto pointed to his name and shouted, causing the crowd to look at him intolerantly. I've really become a great ninja, ha 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 ha. How can it be you? You loser. That's right. It's just a guy with the same name. Meanwhile, at the entrance of Kanahigakur, dozens of people have gathered at this moment, seeing the list and discussing it fiercely. Ha ha ha, see, see, this is the depth of my Kanoha, the number one shinobi village. Yes, yes. The hearts of the people living in Kanahigakur were filled with pride as they looked at the names on the list. Kanahigakur is the safest. A strong sense of pride and satisfaction erupted inside. On the list, Kanoha had everything. Kanoha had seven people out of the ten positions on the Shinobi World's pride list. This made this group of people living in Kanahagakur feel incredibly fortunate. One slightly literate guy even shouted the following prose, the pride of the Shinobi World, Kanahagakur has seven. The umbu who came back to resume orders didn't even notice anything unusual. Hearing the cheers from below, Saratobi Hiruzen's face was getting more and more unsightly. He felt that someone was deliberately targeting Kanahagakur. And wanted to provoke Kanahagakur and other shinobi villages to fight and start a fourth shinobi war. Thinking of those weird pairs of Rinnegan, Sarutobi Hiruzen became silent. Sensei, the noble green beast, might guy. Is that you? On Kanahagakur walls, Rock Lee pointed to the sky in shock. His eyes were full of admiration, Sensei, it says that you are the number one taijutsu user of the shinobi world. What? Number one. Might Guy jumped up, placed his hand on his forehead, and looked at it for a while, showing his trademark smile. Yash. Lee, to celebrate being the first in the world, an extra 500 laps should be added to today's run. Yes. Watching Rock Lee run out excitedly, the smile on the corners of Might Guy's mouth faded as he gave a self-deprecating smile. Number one in the shinobi world. He wondered who was bored enough to make up such a list. After all, even if he had the eight gates all fully open, 
he could only last for eight minutes. And, in his heart, there had always been a green figure. He. He's the strongest in Taijutsu. In the exam space, Payne scanned the list twice but still didn't see his name. Sure enough, the list of mortals wouldn't hold Kami's name. Suddenly, everyone in the space changed their expressions. The shinobi world's pride list was folded up. Then, the handwriting and images in the sky changed together. It's time for the exam to begin. What was the reason Akatsuki was destroyed before the Fourth Shinobi War? A. The unrealistic goal of peace in the shinobi world. B. It's too weak to resist the allied shinobi forces. C. Members of the Akatsuki organization took off their clothes in battle. D. Deception by internal members from beginning to end. Looking at this question, everyone was confused. None of them expected that the exam questions in the exam space would be so straightforward and explosive. Both the questions and the answers contained so much information. For a while, it left everyone at a loss as to how to answer. Will the organization be destroyed? Payne stared at the question with a deadly gaze. Blood began to fill his eyes. He didn't believe it, he couldn't believe it. Akatsuki was founded by Yahiko, the painstaking efforts of the three of them, and with him as a kami, how could it be destroyed? Just as Payne was about to explode, a soft, gentle hand gently rested on his shoulder. Before Payne looked up, Conan's voice rang in his ear. Don't be afraid. Nothing has happened yet. Hearing this, a burst of sharp light flashed in Payne's eyes. He instantly understood what Conan meant. My goodness, what kind of organization is this Akatsuki? The Allied Shinobi Forces. What is that? Could it be that the five shinobi villages would unite together? Impossible, this is absolutely impossible. How can I join forces with the shinobi of the Sunagakir? When they killed my uncle. This question is insane, right? Why would they fight with the Allied Shinobi forces to maintain world peace? Wouldn't that mean that the Allied Shinobi forces are the bad guys? Some people were shocked and disgusted with some disbelief. Some of them had already seen that this question was about the future. After all, there was no sign of a fourth world war happening yet. In Kanahagakur, Shikaku and Shikamaru, father and son of the Nara clan, were looking at the screen in front of them. The shogi game on the table was half played. Shikamaru, what do you think of this question? It couldn't be the third one by any stretch of the imagination, could it? Shikamaru shook his head, and the tied up hair on his head wobbled with him. We are all shinobis. If we take off our clothes in battle and die, wouldn't that be, well, too much of a joke, right? Nara Shikaku smiled, Shikamaru's thoughts coincided with his. Shikaku-sama, the Hokage-sama is asking for you. Two figures leaped down from above and approached Nara Shikaku, arching their hands. Got it, got it. Tell Hokage-sama that I'll be right there. Nara Shikaku smacked his forehead, he knew that he couldn't avoid this kind of thing. Kirigakure. Seeing Kanoha's depths, Turumi May once again felt anxious about Kirigakure's weakness. In addition to herself and Ao, there were no capable shinobi in the current Kirigakure. Even for advisors, only Ao could give her advice. Turumi May's beautiful eyes fell on the screen, her eyebrows slightly wrinkled, looking at the tall figure on the screen. Kisame Hashigaki. In fact, not only Kanahagakur and Kirigakure but other major shinobi villages or organizations had summoned their advisors to study the information revealed by this question and answers. It's just that the more they examined, the more frightening they felt. In the examination space, the Akatsuki crowd also snapped out of their shock and looked at their leader, Payne. They didn't expect that the leader that had the eye of six paths would be that crazy. Leading them against the entire shinobi world. Such a worthy leader. Kakuzu nodded with satisfaction, recognizing Payne's position as the leader from the bottom of his heart. As an old monster who survived the Warring States period, he always felt that his leader was too weak. He obviously had unimaginable power, but he didn't want profit. He never thought such a person would end up becoming a big threat. Kakuzu shook his head. He really would live long enough to see everything. He had long since become a monster after fusing with Earth Grudge, and as long as his four hearts weren't destroyed at the same time, he was an immortal being. Besides, it was a secret that he never told anyone. 
Kakuzu tried to eliminate all the impossible answers and finally was left with only one answer that he felt was the most irrelevant. If I die, I think we can rule out the fourth answer. At the back of the crowd, Uchiha Abito and Zetsu looked at each other without saying anything. Akatsuki would be destroyed. With the two of them in it, Akatsuki would certainly be destroyed. Then that option D was about the two of them. At most, adding one more. Uchiha Madara. Therefore, in their hearts, the fourth was the correct answer. Listening to Kakuzu, ruling out the fourth option, Abito and Zetsu looked at each other and read the meaning in each other's eyes at the same time. Kakuzu is a fool. Stay away from him later. At the same time, Uchiha Itachi was surprised to see option D has it been discovered. My identity as a spy is going to be exposed. He immediately turned alert. On the contrary, Orochimaru, with a smile on his face, looked at the question and answers. He didn't want to participate in the exam and knew that even if he did, he still wouldn't believe him with Akatsuki's leader's character. Anyway, he was no longer a member of Akatsuki, whatever the outcome. If Akatsuki was destroyed, didn't that mean that he would get a chance to get their eyes? Hee <laughs> hee, then it was better for them to get destroyed. It's better if they died. Orochimaru was prepared to find an opportunity to mark all these people, and when they died, he would pick up their corpses for himself. And Orochimaru licked his lips, his heart bursting with enthusiasm. Number one hardest to completely kill in the shinobi world. It seems that my research on immortality will succeed. If we have to make a choice, we can rule out the second one. With our strength, it wouldn't be difficult to overthrow the entire shinobi world, so why would we be afraid of some small allied shinobi forces? The one who spoke was Zetsu. After deep consideration, he was ready to help the crowd eliminate the second option since the correct answer had already been eliminated by Kakuzu anyway. Nobody here knew more about the shinobi world and its strengths than he did. He had 100, 000 white Zetsus under his command, the weakest was at Chunin level, and the strongest matched the strong Kage level powerhouses. With the current power of the shinobi world, not to mention the allied shinobi forces, even if those people from the moon were added, they could be easily destroyed with the turn of his palm. If it weren't for the conditions for unsealing his mother, this shinobi world would have been destroyed a hundred times over. In that case, only options A and C remain. No way, they're actually trying to overthrow the shinobi world. Ha! Ha ha ha, that strange leaf monster is making me laugh to death. The allied shinobi forces being too small. Overthrowing the entire shinobi world. Did he eat too much fertilizer and burn his brain? Overthrow the whole shinobi world. My Kanahagakure is here, try it. It's just a frog at the bottom of the well. How could he know how vast the world is? Sixteen people. Including Orochimaru, there are only seventeen. They are the small ones, but they have big mouths. Shikaku, which one do you think is the correct answer? The third Hokage looked at Shikaku, who was frowning and pondering and spoke out to interrupt his thoughts. They saw everything that happened in the exam space. Every word spoken by the Akatsuki crowd was also clearly audible. The other party inexplicably ruled out B and D, which seemed ridiculous to the third Hokage, Saratobi Hiruzen. He asked Shikaku for the correct answer. It was because he knew the answer to the question. Besides him, there was another person at the scene who knew. Uchiha Itachi. What does Hokage-sama think? The fourth option. A smile appeared on Saratobi Hiruzen's face for the first time in a long time. Uchiha Itachi was his exclusive spy. Combined with the fourth option, Saratobi Hiruzen could easily guess that Itachi and Kanoha must have destroyed Akatsuki. It seems that it was his own cooperation with Itachi, took these people down in one fell swoop. This group of Akatsuki members was nothing much. I think Hokage-sama is correct. On the other hand, Payne looked at the two remaining answers. The unrealistic goal of peace in the shinobi world and Akatsuki members taking off their clothes during the battle, respectively. The goal of peace in the shinobi world. Will come true. That was Yahiko's dying wish. I will definitely be able to fulfill it for him. I choose C. The answer is C. What? He chose the third option. Is he stupid? Huh, those circle eyes of his are consuming his IQ. 
Seeing Payne choose the third answer, a chorus of boos rang out from all over the shinobi world. How could the demise of an organization be so dramatic? Could it be that the members of their small organization would die if they took off their clothes in battle? Cut it out. How could mere clothing control a shinobi's life? Strip and die. Some shinobi shook their heads. They had thought this Akatsuki was a powerful organization. If you ask me, the correct answer is the fourth one. The guy in the wheelchair is so young. I'm sure the guy who just said they should rule out the fourth option lied to him. Hee <laughs> hee, I think it's the first answer. Peace in the shinobi world. Don't be ridiculous. You go ask the fourth Reikage, I, the fourth Kazakage, Raza, and the Tsuchika Janoki. Would they agree to peace? Ha, huh, you said it. Wouldn't that mean destroying all other shinobi villages was just pacification? Ha ha ha, anyway, our Kanahagakur is the biggest shinobi village. We would destroy them, and they can't destroy us. Stop it, don't make noise. It's time for the results. Ha, huh, I'm so looking forward to what punishment he'll receive for answering incorrectly. Correct answer. Do you want to see the analysis? Hmm. Looking at the exam space's ruling, the shinobi world instantly fell silent, and everyone became unnerved. They had all kinds of answers, but none chose the third option. To highlight their wisdom, they were even more impatient to tell the crowd beside them the answer. Now, they were instantly hit in the face. The answer was C. How is that possible? Really? Stripping. It'll kill you. I feel that my IQ has been insulted. I want to check the analysis. Check the analysis. At that time, people who answered incorrectly in various parts of the shinobi world asked to see the analysis. But people in the space couldn't hear their demands. The space wouldn't open the analysis because of their demands. Standing on high for a long time, you know that the most unlikely things are often the most possible. Payne's voice spoke proudly. Then, he turned his head to the crowd. The six paths of Payne lined up behind him, seven pairs of Rinnegan altogether stared at the crowd behind him. With a sneer on his lips, he said, What do you guys think? Do you want to view the analysis? Grr. Hearing Payne's words, a drop of cold sweat dripped from Zetsu's face. Abito's palm turned wet. Itachi blinked, his pupils opened. Space, show me the analysis. Since the death of Akatsuki's previous leader, the new Akatsuki leader, Nagato, awakened his Rinnegan ability and inherited the dying wish of making the world peaceful and became pain. After the Fourth Shinobi War, shinobis of the world put aside hatred, developed together, and the shinobi world eventually moved toward peace, so option A is incorrect. Option B is a trick answer. This question is about the time before the Fourth Shinobi War. The Allied Shinobi forces occurred in the Fourth Shinobi War, and the question does not match the timeline. So, in the Fourth Shinobi War, the two, Zetsu, and Kabuto, stalled the Allied Shinobi forces, which was not in line with a single side. Option D is a confusion option. Although various parties have deceived Akatsuki, the deception of insiders wasn't the direct cause of Akatsuki's demise. Option C, Akatsuki's Rei, Akatsuki's Sho, Akatsuki's San, Akatsuki's Hoku, Akatsuki's Gyoku, Akatsuki's Bayaku, and Akatsuki's Genbu all had their red cloud robes destroyed when they died, and Akatsuki's Shu wasn't wearing a red cloud robe when he died. Therefore, this option is the correct answer. Note, it's referring to the Akatsuki members' codenames based on their ring's character. Rei equals Pain slash Yahiko, Sho equals Deidara, Sen equals Haiden, Hoku equals Kakuzu, Gyoku equals Sasori slash Tobi, Bayaku equals Konan, Genbu equals Zetsu and Shu equals Itachi, boom. 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 It was as if a series of thunderbolts exploded in their minds, especially for Akatsuki's group. Looking at the code name symbolizing their own names on it and the proclamation of death, they forgot to speak for a while. All of them were powerful shinobis, long accustomed to combat and death. But now, when they were still alive, they were already sentenced to death. What a terrible thing this was, and what a terrible ability. Orochimaru's vertical pupils had shrunk into a line as he read the analysis carefully several times. Sure enough, he wasn't in it. Ku was his code name in Akatsuki. 
he couldn't figure out how such powerful Akatsuki members died. But it was still all of them at once. Shocked. 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 Looking at the analysis uploaded on the screen, everyone that was eagerly waiting for it was shocked. What great power was this? Predicting the future, predicting death, and even reverting the future. No one believed that these Akatsuki people would make the same choices as they did in the past, knowing the outcome for themselves. Besides, this was only the first question. Everyone understood that the next four questions would reveal more information. For a while, everyone was more excited about the questions that followed. They were eager to know what would happen in the future. Why did the Shinobi world achieve peace after the Fourth Shinobi World War? Also, what was the cause of the Fourth Shinobi World War? Was it similar to Akatsuki, who wanted to maintain peace in the Shinobi world? Also, who was Akatsuki? Who was Kabuto? How could the two of them hold off the entire allied shinobi forces? And what the heck was all this about? Stunned by these questions, the crowd no longer had the energy to probe into the exact cause of death and internal deception of Akatsuki members. They couldn't wait for the Akatsuki members on the screen to start the next question. They were eager to know more information. They wanted more clues. They were going crazy. Suddenly, I'm looking forward to the reward or punishment for their exam. In Kanahagakur, those words suddenly rang out from the crowd that had been stunned by the analysis. It made everyone sober up a bit and curious at the same time. Yes, if all this was true, what would be the reward mentioned by such a magical examination space? S rank jutsu. The wealth that couldn't be spent even for a lifetime. Or was it something else? Someone. Go get Danzo and the two advisors. In Hokage's office, Sarutobi Hiruzen's face was covered with frost. The analysis brought too much information. Big enough to overturn Kanahagakura's status as the number one shinobi village. There was an immensely powerful enemy in the future who compelled the shinobi world to unite. Combined with the analysis of option D, Sarutobi Hiruzen was sure that this member, who deceived Akatsuki, had something to do with that enemy. There must be a connection. He also finally understood that Akatsuki wasn't an existence that he and Itachi could overthrow by working together. Two people could hold back the entire allied shinobi forces. He only had one Kanahagakur, how could he compete? Kabuto. Sarutobi Hiruzen shook his head. That name was the same as the name of a genin from his own village, who had repeated several years. Regrettably, how was it possible for a guy who could achieve that kind of success in the future to be a mere genin now? Ah, how good it would be if such talent was really from our village. Seeing the analysis of option A, Danzo, who was sitting at Kanahagakura's route, finally remembered. He finally remembered who this Akatsuki was. He finally knew why the girl called Jiraiya Sensei. It turned out that these guys in black robes with red clouds were from the organization that he and Hanzo of the Salamander were jointly targeting. In other words, these guys are now in Amigate Cure, right? A flash of killing intent passed through Danzo's eyes. He was the root of Kanahagakur, responsible for all the darkness in Kanahagakur. Those restless guys. If I can't use them, then they shouldn't continue living. Exam space, is there a more detailed explanation? Haydn and Kakuzu spoke almost simultaneously. They both looked at each other and saw the shock in each other's eyes. In a sense, both of them were immortal. How could they die? Could it really be because they took off some clothing? That was too ridiculous. Forget it. Whether it's true or not, they should go back to the cave and get a few more clothes. At best, it would still be useful. If it was useless, then it was all nonsense. Kakuzu had decided to put one on each of his four masks when he returned, just in case. When Payne heard the words from the two of them, his mind moved, and he quickly opened his mouth, space, is it available? In the end, he added, only the last two options will do. What? The last two options? Abito, Zetsu, and Itachi all physically shook slightly at the same time, not expecting pain to still be thinking about the fourth option now. What for? What for? Everyone is going to die, and you are still thinking of who is lying. Insufficient permissions to provide. If you get full marks in the exam, you will be rewarded with watching videos related to the exam questions. Related videos? 
The three who were just about to put their worries down raised them again. The three narrowed their eyes and looked above, once again feeling the great power of the space. Could it be that this space was capable of not only peering into the future but also forming videos of future events? Never let the space play the video. They had to prevent them from answering all the questions correctly. Fortunately, it wasn't about getting the majority. Even if there were three left correct, they still had a wiggle room to mess up too. Deep inside his mind, Uchiha Itachi thought that if it weren't for the inability to use jutsu here, he would have used the illusion technique on the whole crowd. Not getting the answer he wanted, Payne's eyes flashed with disappointment. Fortunately, there were surprises. As long as he answered all the questions correctly, he could see the related videos. Then, he would know who was the traitor in Akatsuki. With that in mind, Payne was already a little impatient. Exam space, continue with the questions. Question 2, which of the following characters is not an undercover agent from Konoha? A. Conan. B. Uchiha Itachi. C. Six Path Pain. D. Uchiha Abito, Silence. Pin Drop Silence. Dead Silence. Pain's seven pairs of eyes stared at the answer to the second question in unison. His hands clenched tightly, and his fists turned white. That's impossible. No way. He just couldn't figure out why his and Conan's names were on it. Whether he was an undercover spy or not, how could he not know? Was Conan an undercover spy? How could he not know? Since Yahiko's death, they've only had a grudge against Kanoha. Conan still held a tinge of gratitude for Jiraiya, but today was her first time seeing Jiraiya since they parted ways. But. 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 This second question, no matter how they choose, was stating the fact that three out of four people were spies. What the hell was going on here? For a moment, Payne was confused. Such bastards. Amazing bastards. Fucking amazing. Uchiha Itachi had a huge shock in his heart. He didn't expect Kanoha to be so fierce. In Akatsuki, there were only a dozen people in total. And including Orochimaru, numbered only ten. And three people from Kanahagakur had infiltrated. Even the woman beside the leader was a spy. Not bad, third Hokage. Worthy. Such a veteran schemer. But. Uchiha Itachi frowned and glanced at the masked guy on his left. Uchiha. Abito. Why is my name on it? Abito couldn't believe it. Except for Zetsu and Madara, who had died of old age, no one should have known about it. He hadn't seen or heard of that name in over a decade. Unexpectedly, today his, Uchiha Abito's identity was exposed by the exam space. It's just that. He didn't expect it, he really didn't expect it. Four people on the list, except him, were all Kanoha spies. Uchiha Abito sighed faintly in his heart. He thought that his identity had already been considered as a spy, but he never thought that in Akatsuki, the major players were all spies. Members of Akatsuki were spies. The leader of Akatsuki was also a spy. Who was playing who? Abito shook his head in his heart. No wonder, in the end, all these people died, and only Zetsu was left to start the Fourth Shinobi World War. I think it was my future self who discovered their identities and killed them all. Danzo, your people. Sarutobi Hiruzen took a puff of his pipe and looked at Danzo with an amiable face. He didn't expect that Danzo would be as far-sighted as he was, having placed spies in the most dangerous organization long ago. Such far-sightedness, such planning. Not bad for an old buddy of his. Alas. I would have added you to the Hokage candidates if the Hokage position hadn't been made unavailable to you. Ha, ha. A flash of suspicion passed through Danzo's eyes. He didn't understand why this Sarutobi was pretending with him. Conan, Payne and the teenager who he killed were all Jiraiya's students. They were the three orphans that Jiraiya took in at the end of the battle in Amigekure. Wasn't it obvious whose people they were? His only remaining eye narrowed, looking at the name above. He had figured out the real leader behind Akatsuki. It's that Uchiha Abito. The real answer to this question could only be Uchiha Abito. As for the Uchiha Itachi, Danzo knew that there was a relationship between him and Sarutobi Hiruzen. If not, 
how could Uchiha Sasuke stay safe and sound in Konoha? Danzo, you did a good job this time. I didn't expect that you had grasped Akatsuki's leader. Saratobi Hiruzen looked at Danzo with a smile, can you tell us how you got hold of him? Sure enough, it's Kanahagakur. Anoki had his hands behind his back. Below him, there were dozens of advisors of Iwagakure. His son Kitsuchi and granddaughter Kuratsuchi were all below. No one in their Iwagakure could match the wisdom of Kanahagakur's Nara Shikaku, but there were many of them. Father, if it is true that Kanoha secretly controls this power, then. Kitsuchi's simple face was somewhat fearful. If what was said on the screen was true, the Akatsuki group could easily overthrow any shinobi village. And if Kanoha controlled this power, then Kanoha. Everyone agreed to fight and develop together, but they secretly colluded with a powerhouse. Anoki was about to speak when a shinobi eagle came in through the skylight above the council chamber. Tearing off a cloth strip from the ninja eagle, Anoki read it twice. The corners of his lips lifted. Kitsuchi, get ready. In three days, we are going to Kanoha. Kitsuchi froze and was about to turn around to get ready when he heard Anoki added, in two days, inform Kanoha that I, Reikage, Kazakage, and Mizukage, are going to visit the Hokage in Kanahagakur. In Kanahagakur. Uchiha Sasuke saw this question and became distressed and worried. No matter how he thought about it, Itachi must be an undercover agent. Would he be killed by those people when his identity as an undercover agent was exposed? Don't die. Uchiha Sasuke stared at the screen, be sure to live long enough to let me, kill you. This question. Ha 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 ha, I don't care if the question isn't answered. I want to laugh at the thought that Akatsuki members are all spies. At the entrance of Kanahagakur, a group of people watched the live broadcast with laughter. They found that they were already falling in love with this thing. The life of a shinobi was inherently boring, except for the daily training and missions, the only entertainment was making children. Now, finally, there was something more enjoyable than making children, and that was watching the live broadcast. It's too damn funny. They were all shinobis taking a break today, and they had a certain understanding of shinobi's deception techniques. Although deception techniques couldn't be called truly going undercover, but this Akatsuki being infiltrated like this was indeed the worst they had ever seen. This was really worth following. Nagato. Conan nudged Pain, snapping him out of his frozen state. Nagato looked up and found that everyone in Akatsuki was looking at him. Those eyes were amused, sympathetic, mocking, and, no fluctuation at all. Pain met all the eyes and smoothly found the ones with no fluctuations at all. Uchiha Itachi. Shu, what do you think of this question? He <laughs> he. The rest of Akatsuki enjoyed themselves and had a good laugh. Everyone's eyes turned to Uchiha Itachi, following Pain's words. They didn't expect the leader to start with Itachi first. It seemed that when they got out later, they would be able to watch a battle between Rinnegan and Mangekyo. He <laughs> he. In the minds of the crowd, this question was a send-off question. How could they mistake an easy question like this? The leader asking Uchiha Itachi for his opinion was nothing more than a threat and humiliation. Between crackles in their stares, Itachi knew that he had been exposed. But he didn't panic. There was even a desire to laugh, to laugh out loud, and laugh rapturously. Because. He had long thought of a good statement. Leader, I am indeed a spy. Just as the words left Itachi's mouth, he immediately felt an angry gaze. Itachi was a bit surprised to see that there was also his own teammate, Hashigaki Kisame. Swish. A figure appeared in front of him, sharing part of the pressure for him. Itachi glanced over and walked right past Jiraiya to meet the crowd's gaze. He now wanted to take on all the hatred but couldn't be involved in anything with Kanahagakur's Jiraiya. I initially joined Akatsuki under Uchiha Madara's orders, and since Uchiha Madara is from Kanahagakur, I could be considered a spy for Kanoha. However, I haven't passed on any messages to Kanahagakur yet, as my teammate, Hashigaki Kisame, can testify. Rather, this man. Uchiha Itachi turned his words and pointed to Uchiha Abito, wearing a mask on the other side. Leader, this person is far more harmful to Akatsuki than anyone. Because he's that fourth option. Uchiha. Abito. Dash, binge raw link in synopsis.
Am I right? Achiha Abido. Achiha Itachi slightly gnashed his teeth. He wondered why he had an extremely uncomfortable feeling when he came in contact with this guy. It turns out that he was a fake. Achiha Madara was a fake. Achiha Itachi looked calm on the surface, but his heart sank to the bottom. This Abido, who approached him in the name of Madara, also helped him eliminate the Uchiha clan. What was his purpose? And if he's fake, then? What was the reason behind the destruction of the Uchiha clan? Was there something he didn't know? Uchiha Itachi no longer dared to think about it, but he knew that this space wouldn't let him and Akatsuki off so easily. From the first question to the second question, he had discovered it. The questions from this space were changing from encompassing everyone to specific people. That was to say, as long as it was related to Akatsuki, many secrets, whether it was the whole shinobi world or individual, would be ruthlessly dug out and made public. No one could escape it. This was one of the reasons why he admitted to being a spy so blatantly. He's Uchiha Abido. Akatsuki's eyes shifted from Uchiha Itachi to Uchiha Abido. They weren't familiar with Uchiha Abido yet. In Uchiha Abido's own words to pain, it wasn't time for him to join Akatsuki yet. Therefore, right now, he hadn't entered Akatsuki under the disguise of a comical shinobi. After all, Sasori wasn't dead yet, and his Gyoku ring was still firmly on his hand. Humph, Itachi. Don't you know who I am? Don't forget who helped you to destroy the Uchiha clan. I'm Uchiha. Madara. What? Bang. Looking at Danzo, who was still stammering, Sarutobi Hiruzen slapped the table in front of him. The good feeling towards Danzo that had just risen instantly turned into nothing. That night, you let others in beside Itachi. With two eyes already glaring to the limit, the third Hokage looked at the two advisors who were chilled to the bone, you knew about this, too. The more Sarutobi Hiruzen thought about it, the more frightened he became. Danzo had dared to let the suspicious Uchiha Madara into the village. How dare he? Sarutobi, listen to Danzo. He will explain it to you. Sarutobi, for that matter. Humph. Sarutobi Hiruzen, you're getting more and more cowardly. Danzo grunted coldly. In his opinion, without using Kanahigakura's power, he could eliminate the restless Uchiha clan, so why not? Good. Very good. The third Hokage laughed angrily, don't forget your advisor position. I am the Hokage of Kanahigakur. In an instant, the atmosphere in Hokage's office was unbearably oppressive. Don't forget, who helped you destroy the Uchiha clan. Don't forget, who helped you. Don't forget. Don't forget. As if countless thunderbolts rattled through Sasuke's mind, one after another, like lightning striking the ground, he was dazed and confused, his eyes disoriented. His vision slowly blurred, and his whole body fell backward. Before he completely passed out, he also heard the mockery from the loser, ha 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 ha. You can't beat me, can you? I'm powerful. Ha 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 ha. I beat you. I'm the number one reckless shinobi. Everywhere in the shinobi world, everyone jolted at the sound of Uchiha Madara's name. They never thought they would hear this name while listening to Akatsuki's drama. No matter how long time had passed, this name, whenever they heard it, they felt the pressure. Any ninja in the shinobi world could be ignorant of the Uchiha clan, ignorant of Kanahigakur, and even be ignorant of how to refine chakra. But absolutely no one was unaware of Uchiha Madara. Because it represented not only a person, a legendary shinobi, but also an era. That sentence, do you want to dance? No one knew how much blood had been shed from each village. Madara, could it be? He is still alive. Impossible, it's impossible. No one could live that long. But, he's the man who built the hidden village era, with the first Hokage. Inevitably, he mastered techniques beyond our comprehension. That's impossible. Senju Hashirama is dead. How can he still be alive? That's it. He and Hashirama both died together. So if he's still alive, doesn't that mean that Hashirama is also still alive? So, what if, in the final battle, he obtained Hashirama's cells? Anoki's voice instantly silenced the advisors of Iwagakure. 
They were all people who had access to all kinds of secrets and knew, of course, what the Hashirama's cells represented. Those were the cells that could multiply infinitely. Indeed. The possibility of immortality exists. Looking at Payne, who was deep in thought, Uchiha Abito secretly uttered some curses. He knew that both Payne and Conan had been suspicious of his identity. Conan, in particular, had repeatedly advised Payne to cut off contact with him. She also threatened him, even if you are Uchiha Madara, I'll make you pay the price if you harm Akatsuki. But, on the one hand, Payne wanted to use the Madara's power. On the other hand, he felt that he was powerful enough to suppress Madara. But at this moment, if he found out that he wasn't Madara, Uchiha Abito was sure that pain would instantly strike him. This kind of headstrong person hated it when others deceived him. It wasn't that Uchiha Abito was afraid of fighting the other party. After all, he had the Mangekyo Sharingan and had a strange space-time jutsu, Kamui. If he couldn't fight, he could still run, right? Besides, he was accompanied by Zetsu, a guy that he, himself, couldn't judge how powerful he was. Others didn't know Zetsu's details. But how could he not know? Uchiha Madara's creation before his death could be regarded as Madara's shinobi way. Abito even suspected that this guy possessed the ability to leave this space at any time. He glanced at Zetsu and saw the two huge leaves on top of the Zetsu's head move gently as if nodding unnoticeably. With their eyes facing each other, Abito seemed to see something in Zetsu's gaze, Abito, don't panic. I got this. Sure enough, he had the means. There was a smile under Abito's mask. Why is Abito looking at me? Zetsu froze, his body shaking unnaturally. The leaves on top of his head swayed, and his puzzled eyes looked at Abito. Seeing Abito turn his head and look at pain, Zetsu's heart trembled. Damn, this guy's attitude, he's not going to keep his mouth shut, is he? This matter had come to this point. Is it useful to keep my mouth shut? They would get the answer and the analysis, not to mention who knows what would be asked in the following questions. He would only suffer if he kept his mouth shut now. The bigger picture is more important. Moreover, it's not like there are no other means. So, why should I keep my mouth shut? Shouldn't we learn from Uchiha Itachi's disaster? Abito's rating in the Zetsu's mind was lowered again. It seems that after Uchiha Madara's eyes were given to him, he really went blind. Why did he find such an unlucky thing like Abito to complete the plan for him? If you admit it, others may still be afraid of Madara's cleverness, thinking he had hidden things in your body to accomplish great things. But if you don't admit it, you'll be directly exposed. Zetsu shook his head. If Abito were exposed, he would inevitably not be able to continue working with Akatsuki. It seemed that the Eye of the Moon plan must be delayed. Anyway, Uchiha Madara was six feet under. There was no concept of time there, which was precisely what he had the most. He decided that when he escaped from this space, he would immediately leave, moving far away. Wait for the influence of this space to pass, or wait for the shinobi who knew about it to die, and then continue to plan. Abito, this man, no way. I really can't. I really can't use him anymore. I have a hunch that this one-eyed guy isn't Uchiha Madara. Certainly not. Look at his cowardice. With Madara's temperament, if people were suspicious, he would have long asked these people if they wanted to dance. Why is he still talking nonsense? In other words, if this person is that whatever Uchiha Abito, isn't he also considered a survivor of the Uchiha clan? Bullshit, didn't you hear? He destroyed the Uchiha clan, together with Uchiha Itachi. The Uchiha clan is so ruthless. They're all just ungrateful bastards. Then that orphan in our village wouldn't. Don't talk nonsense. Since he was left alive, and the meaning from the higher-ups, just don't mention it. Don't talk about it. In fact, to put it another way, the Uchiha family aren't pitiful people. It's just that their feelings were too narrow. This group of people gathered at the entrance of Kanahagakur didn't realize that on the wall, not far behind them, a guy dressed in black and wearing a white cat mask was faintly staring at them. He quietly looked at the screen above the crowd without moving, as if he was made of stone. Whether you're Uchiha Madara or not, Uchiha Abito is the spy for Kanahagakur. Hashigaki Kisame grunted coldly, not wanting to continue to watch them go it back and forth. 
All his life, he hated spies the most. But he won't ask others to do anything. He would only ask himself not to cross the bottom line. That was his bottom line and his shinobi way. In his mind, a shinobi should be pure. If he was captured to keep the information a secret, he was willing to die. So, at this moment, he was the angriest in the crowd. His eyes shifted from Conan, whose face was as cold as ice, to Payne, who was sitting in a wheelchair. Leader, this traitor, are you taking action, or should I? As if feeling the anger from its master, the Samahata behind Hashigaki Kisame untied its bandages, jumped from his back, and opened his mouth towards Conan. Killing intent condensed in the space. Above the space, Ruji excitedly looked at the farce below. He knew that replacing Orochimaru with Conan, the correct answer was more distressing to pain. Sorry. Ruji ruthlessly looked at the deadpan pain below. He didn't think pain could choose the right answer. This question was just an ordinary one for others. Straightforward thinking would peg pain as the correct answer. But for pain, this was torture. Believe in yourself, reality, or friends. People are selfish. Especially now, when Payne was bent on taking revenge on Kanahagakur. Looking down at the Samahata that bared its teeth at Conan, Ruji made a motion of smacking it aside. Bastard! Whom are you yelling at? In the exam space, Samahata that had its teeth out had an indescribable sense of crisis enveloped it. Its front end touched the ground and gently sniffed a few times as if it smelled danger. A loop of bandages quickly wrapped around it as it rolled and ducked back behind the shark man. Kisame saw that something was odd with Samahata, but before figuring out what's going on, a thick fog-like palm came down from the above space. Boom! The huge palm that was formed from the thick fog was very fast. It directly fell on the shivering Samahata. Samahata couldn't resist it and was instantly shattered. The powerful force came down, Kisame's body shook, and a mouthful of blood gushed out. Before he could react, his flesh shattered with a bang. A trail of blood splashed in all directions in the shape of a sharp sword, landing on the others and making the red clouds on the black robe even redder. Kakuzu, who was closest to Kisame, suddenly felt a burst of warmth, followed by a flash of red in front of him. He reached forward, and a bluish scrap of face skin appeared in his hand, carrying a large amount of shredded flesh. Kisame. Kakuzu shuddered. The earth grudge in his body suddenly contracted, and the four hearts trembled at the same time. He didn't expect Kisame to die like this. That was Hashigaki Kisame. Known as the tailless tailed beast. He wasn't even sure if he could do it himself, but now. Dead. Other Akatsuki members were also horrified. At the moment, there was some minced meat and blood on them, but they couldn't think of wiping it off yet. Or rather, they didn't even dare to move. Pain, in particular, had the most genuine and strongest feelings. One second, Kisame was still shouting at him, and the next, he was turned into mincemeat. He didn't even see how the space had struck, and the guy was already gone. This. If this thing was aiming at me, could I dodge it? No. He simply couldn't. Pain wasn't the only one who thought so. The other Akatsuki members had the same question flashing in their minds. Uchiha Abito, in particular, was really afraid. He almost made a move just now. Lucky. Very lucky. He remained reasonable. It was a good thing that he chose a heated debate instead of persuasion by force. Abito's heart was full of gratitude, and he told himself over and over again. Absolutely. 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 Never start a fight in this space. Fuck. Too much power. Above, Ruji slapped his own forehead. He didn't expect that the punishment force of his own exam space was that powerful. He took advantage of the exam space's power to casually strike and blow Hashigaki Kisame to bits. If only he had the same amount of strength. Ruji knew that he used too much force because it was his first strike. After all, these guys below were shinobis, not pirates. Each one was a veteran and sly. Since entering the space, each one looked more obedient than the other. There was no chance for Ruji to show his strength. Finally, a dog jumped out to cause trouble, offering himself up for sacrifice. Ruji just wanted to establish authority and didn't really want Kisame to die. 
After all, right now, Kisame was one of Amigekyo's powerhouses. Hashigaki Kisame interfered with the discipline of the examination room for the first time and warned once. Shit. 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 Someone died, and it's still saying it's a warning. In Kirigakure. A tall, thin figure looking at the screen suddenly cursed. He wasn't cursing the space because it killed Hashigaki Kisame. That guy would die by his hands, sooner or later. If you kill him, you kill him. What did Samahata do wrong? It was just a shinobi sword. What bad intentions could a shinobi sword have? Mizukich Sama. Ao at Terumi Mei's side made a terrifying noise. He was so shocked that his transplanted Byakugan automatically opened. Blue veins stood out at the corner of his eye, looking dreadful. Let's cancel the plan. Terumi Mei waved wearily. Kisame, this short lived guy. She was discussing a plan to welcome him back with Ao, but they didn't expect him to die so soon. Kisame defected because of a failed attack on the previous Mizukich. He had no conflict with her, and there was no harm to the village. He was a good shinobi. In fact, since she took office, Turumi may have been looking for traces of him, but they couldn't find him. When they finally had information, and before Turumi may was able to contact him. He died. Is it impossible to restore the glory of the past to our village? Jerumi May rubbed her forehead, suddenly felt tired, and even the voice was full of fatigue. From this point on, the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist are no more. In Sunagekir, seeing that Hashigaki Kisame was killed in one blow, the fourth Kazakage, Raza's face suddenly changed. One strike. Killing a Kage-level powerhouse. And even. With more than a dozen Kage-level people around, Hashigaki Kisame failed to leave a complete body. That's terrible. Unlike others, he had fought against Hashigaki Kisame and understood his strength. That's a scary guy who could summon a waterfall in the desert. He could fight with himself in the desert, resulting in a draw and leaving in one piece. That guy had more strength than an ordinary Kage. But that same guy died in one strike. Did this mean that he, himself, wouldn't be able to withstand a blow from this space? Thinking of this, Raza once again looked at the screen above, and his eyes were filled with dread. Please be conscientious in maintaining discipline in the exam space. As the big words above disappeared in the space, a suction force suddenly appeared among the group. The faces of the Akatsuki crowd changed. In several flashes, they shifted their original positions and looked in disbelief at the heart that had appeared out of nowhere. The heart pumped. Thump, thump, thump full of vitality. As the heart beats, a series of blood vessels, tissues, and veins appear around it. In the blink of an eye, a human form has been outlined. The human form was blood red, without any flesh and skin. Only the most basic veins and arteries were there, looking very bizarre. Could it be? The Akatsuki crowd was viciously shocked and looked in horror at the blood and flesh floating off their own clothes. Sure enough, under the inexplicable pulling force, the scattered blood and minced meat floated up from where they were splattered to and floated to the blood veins that formed a person's silhouette. This scene caused the Akatsuki crowd to freeze completely, not knowing what to say or do. They felt as if the blood in their bodies was going to freeze, and all the hair was standing up. They felt if they dared to move their bodies, the goosebumps on their bodies would fall. This wasn't something a normal person could do. This was. God. God. Lord God. Haydn knelt directly on the ground. His hands were open, embracing the sky. He bowed again and prostrated himself reverently on the ground. Such a miraculous blood and flesh sacrifice. Such a monstrous blood and flesh offering. Compared to this, my proud ceremony is simply ugly. He was shaking violently, and his mouth was muttering very fast as if he was the most devout believer and the most insane jashinists. He pulled out the decorative knife from his robe. With a swish, 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 he cut off all his limbs, letting blood flow, forming a circular sacrificial pattern around his body. Haydn was constantly losing blood, and his body gradually turned grayish-white, like a dry corpse or a zombie. But strangely, his eyes were getting brighter and brighter, as if he had witnessed and understood something. At the same time, looking at the space, Hashigaki Kisame's constantly reconstructed body in Haydn, 
who performed the Jashin ceremony, everyone in the shinobi world fell into silence. Especially the major shinobi villages. They thought they paid enough attention to this inexplicable space, but they still underestimated it. They thought they had paid enough attention to Akatsuki, but they still underestimated it. Rewinding time. Resurrecting the dead. Those who have broken hands and feet but could be healed quickly, but this. For a time, all those in the shinobi world had such thoughts. Was this, was this something a jutsu could do? Izanagi. Seeing Hashigaki Kisame's resurrection, Danzo was even more convinced of his initial suspicions about the exam space. Combining the answer to the second question, Uchi Abito. Danzo already had a new answer. Since Abito was the leader behind Akatsuki, the dark hand in the shadows. And Uchiha Abito, being the bloodline of Uchiha Madara outside of Kanahagakur. Then, this space must be the result of Uchiha Madara's Sharingan. Although the information recorded about Uchiha Madara's pupil technique wasn't like this, however. After so many years, even an idiot shinobi could master new abilities, not to mention that demon Uchiha Madara. In that case, it all makes sense. Danzo's eyes flashed with light. He finally understood. He understood it. How this space could reverse time. Why would Uchiha Madara help Itachi attack Kanahagakur? That's because Uchiha Madara wanted to collect a lot of Sharingan like him. His purpose for collecting Sharingan was for this space. And the best hard evidence was, through the entire shinobi world, only this one jutsu was capable of modifying time. What a big move. Danzo coldly snorted in his heart, unfortunately, you met me, Danzo. Madara. I've seen through all your schemes. I'm going to make my own plans. This is the forbidden art of the Uchiha clan, Sharingan Sizanaji. You, what did you say? Saratobi Hiruzen almost thought he misheard. That technique. Izanagi. The technique filed in the Jutsu Scrolls. Change history and rewrite the outcome against you at the cost of permanently sacrificing Sharingan. But now that the Uchiha clan was gone, only a few with the Sharingan remained. Uchiha Itachi, Uchiha Sasuke, Hitaki Kakashi with one Sharingan and that one-eyed guy. Sarutobi Hiruzen's brow wrinkled. He wanted to refute Danzo, but when he thought of the strange situation just now, he kept silent. His two old eyes blinked. A sense of exhaustion suddenly appeared from the bottom of his heart. He didn't know how much more this space would shock him, but he understood. He really was, getting old. He's resurrected. Chiyo in Sunagakir calmly said. Ebizo beside her squinted and finally nodded his head. Yes, he's resurrected. Fuck. Is it time to talk like this? Also, what's with your affirmative tone? Raza looked at two old elders who didn't look surprised at all and growled in his heart, but he didn't dare to show his anger. He told the two advisors to come, asking them to explain the situation to him. And along the way, let them open up more to accepting him. But who would have thought that after they came, they only took everything fucking lightly. Oh, there's the Sasori kid. Well, sis, it seems that Sasori is having a good time. Then, I am relieved. Fuck. 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 Raza couldn't treat them like ordinary shinobi. If not for the status and strength of these two, Raza would have torn them both up long ago. Unfortunately, these two old guys had the means to restrain him in their hands. In fact, what Raza didn't know was that the two elders didn't show any surprise because they also had the means to revive the dead. Although, this method was costly. I. I was revived. Kisame looked at his hands in shock. He was clearly slapped to smithereens by that fog-like palm. Even the unimaginable pain he had just endured was still fresh in his mind. How come I'm still alive? He felt something shaking on his back. Hashigaki Kisame looked back, only to see Samahata that was bound by bandages, shaking violently. It can be seen from the strange wobbly movement that this guy was trying to suppress his own shivers. What happened just now? Seeing that everyone was far away from him, as if he was a wild beast, Hashigaki Kisame couldn't help but ask. You were dead. Sasori's voice trembled a little, something that would have been impossible. After all, his current body was Hiroko, 
in other words, a puppet. The puppet's voice simply couldn't tremble unless. Sasori, who was controlling Hiroko's body, was also trembling. But. But. But you came back to life. Daidara's palms were trembling. It was obvious that he hadn't calmed down either. Not to mention them, even Pain, Abito, or Achiha Itachi, looking at the resurrected Kisame and Samahata, the calmness on their faces had long disappeared, leaving only shock and bewilderment. Conan covered her hand with her mouth and looked at the resurrected Hashigaki Kisame. Suddenly a flash of light passed through her mind. Resurrection. Resurrection. Question 2, which of the following characters isn't a spy from Kanahigakur? A. Conan. B. Uchiha Itachi. C. Six Path Pain. D. Uchiha Abito. Nagato. Behind Nagato's wheelchair, Conan's ten fingers subconsciously clenched together. Witnessing the miracle of the exam space, even Conan began to doubt herself. She knew of Nagato's hatred for Kanahigakur and also knew the pain that Nagato had gone through and was going through. After all, compared to her, Nagato not only lost Yahiko but also lost his health and freedom. Unable to stand up again for the rest of his life, he had to sit in a wheelchair and control the six path pains to walk through the world for him. Obviously possessing the power to make all the decisions, but. Such sadness. Therefore, if the exam space was really right, then between the two of them, if there was a traitor, it could only be her. Conan's heart ached at that moment. She had already thought of what terrible harm her betrayal would do to Nagato. If there was really a situation where I would become a traitor, I think, that would be because your life was threatened. Conan's trembling voice sounded behind Nagato. If that happens. I hope you won't blame me, Nagato. Conan's voice was full of anguish. A tear rolled down her face, hitting Nagato's thin cheek and splashing into several petals. Nagato, this question, the correct answer must be you. Conan was getting more and more aggrieved. Her strength, obviously, could defeat Sasori without any effort. Her expression could obviously remain unchanged, like frost for over ten years, but now, she just couldn't control her tears. She choked back a sob. She couldn't understand why the shinobi world was so cruel to her. Shouldn't the stronger someone was, the more accommodated they should be? Why was there only harm done in her case? Why? She was still a woman. She was still a woman. Also. Perhaps, knowing the future, we could avoid these things. Her voice was so small as if she couldn't even convince herself. Tears silently eroded her makeup. The blue, cold eye shadow was completely spent. Looking at the angel of the organization so out of shape, even the most rigid Kakuzu and the most inhuman Haydn and Sasori had no disdain at this time. They could all see that the cold angel in the organization was, at the moment, really helpless. Although it is impossible, I don't know why, but I hope Conan in option A is the correct answer. A.O. standing behind Turumi Mei, spoke dryly. He was a stiff man who didn't know how to comfort a woman. When he said this, he still looked at her as his immediate superior. His Byakugan opened because he was frightened, although only 359 degrees, could still see them. The tears on her face and the suppressed lightly shrugged shoulders of the figure in front of him. Although the tears haven't fallen, they were vaporized by the heat on her face, and even the water mist couldn't be seen. No matter how strong a Kunoichi was, she was a woman after all. For a while, May's heart was surprisingly a bit saddened. On the main road leading to Kanahigakur, Shizun looked at Tsunade, who had stopped in amazement. Somehow, two tear marks appeared on her face. Tears. On Tsunade-sama's face. Shizun couldn't believe it. She couldn't associate tears, a fragile thing, with a strong kunoichi like Tsunade-sama. But what is that deep helplessness and empathy in Tsunade-sama's eyes? Shizun, I'm tired. Let's rest for today. Ah. Okay. Shizun scratched her head. I don't understand how Tsunade-sama is tired after just coming out of the casino for less than half an hour. Half an hour ago, wasn't she still shouting at the gambling table that she would win and provide relief to the victims? Above, Ruji looked at Conan, who was in tears and suddenly felt that he had gone too far. He himself put pain in a dilemma to fool him without thinking about what the other party, Conan, would think. 
Alas! Looking at the tearful Conan below, Ruji sighed. She was always too soft-hearted to carry everything by herself. System, if Payne could answer this question correctly, can you give him a little extra reward? Yes. It needs to be deducted from your reward. Hmm. Ruji was stunned. Deducted? I did not expect, did not expect that a system like you could understand the conservation of mass. Heh, who made me too young and made the mistake that all men would make. Okay, if Payne gets this question right, take half of my reward and give it to Conan. If he gets it wrong, take half of his reward and give it to Conan. You do not have enough privileges to assign exam rewards, you can only give them away. Please continue to manage the exam and unblock your privileges. Order, you can only give your reward to the person who answered the question. Are you sure? WTF. Ruji froze, smiled bitterly, and could only accept it. Below, under the watchful eyes of the crowd and the countless eyes of the shinobi world, Payne finally opened his mouth to speak slowly. Conan, the happiest thing in my life is to meet you and Yahiko. Tears came out of his eyes, letting Payne know that Rinnegan could also shed tears. I believe that Yahiko thinks so too. With a passionate heart, we dared to proclaim that we would bring peace to the world when we clearly had nothing. Although we haven't defeated the darkness of the shinobi world, and Yahiko is dead. But, I believe that if Yahiko were here, he would make the same choice as me. A decision was made in his mind, but Payne's mind was much more at ease. Answering the space. I choose A. Conan is definitely not Kanahagakura's spy. Shouting out the answer, Payne relaxed and slumped back into his wheelchair. At this moment, he felt that he was more relieved than ever, and the corners of his mouth were slightly up. Conan, I believe in you, better than I believe in myself. Woo woo. Conan completely collapsed. She didn't expect it, she never expected it. What she looked forward to and longed for came true. At this moment, she burst into tears. At this moment, she no longer held back. She hugged Nagato from behind, hugged his wheelchair, buried her head in Payne's hair, and burst into tears. She seemed to cry out all the grievances. Stupid. Stupid. Zetsu's eyeballs popped out and suddenly pointed at Payne. He was about to continue to scold, but a fist suddenly smashed him from the side. Where did this guy come from? Disrupting the exam. Exam space, I will help you teach him a lesson. Bam. Unprepared, he was beaten by Daidara. Only punching Zetsu away, Daidara reacted, a drop of cold sweat dripped from Daidara's face. He didn't know why he wanted to hit him. But his nose felt sour, so he wanted to hit something. And this guy jumped out. Now, he was starting to have second thoughts. If that fog-like palm came again. It's okay, everyone has the right to maintain discipline in the examination room. What, what? Daydara was shocked when she saw the fog spelling something out. He almost burst out laughing. However, before his laughter came out, he suppressed it. He looked up in disbelief, ahem, this, this is. How is this possible? Correct answer. Do you want to see the analysis? Crap. 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 Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Why are you talking like me? Because I'm uncultured. I can't express my current mood, the admiration and joy in my heart right now, like a flood that broke the dam, sweeping me away. I can't hide my inner heart any longer. My current mood is like the attraction between the stars and the universe, and although I stare into the abyss, I experience the exhilaration of the abyss. My soul is like a sapling after a long drought, absorbing the sweet spring. I feel like every hair on my body is trembling, I feel like. Okay, just stop it. What's the matter? Akatsuki. Akatsuki is so awesome. Pain is awesome. Yes, my friend, you are right. Pain is awesome. This was a dialogue between two ordinary samurais in the land of iron. Shit. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. In Kumobikure, the Jinchuriki killer bee looked at the screen overhead, waving his fists excitedly, and couldn't wait to pull out the eight tails and jump on him to dance. In fact, he solicited the eight tails' opinion but was ruthlessly rejected. 
The Eight Tails' reason was, I don't play with fools. In Killer Bee's body, the eight-tailed cow-like beast was too lazy to take care of the crazy Killer Bee. He looked carefully at the crying man and women on the screen. At first, only the girl cried, but when the exam space said they were correct, the man in the wheelchair also cried. The crying was greatly dramatic, but nowhere near as dramatic as the smile on his lips. Even the eight-tailed beast admired this unreserved belief in each other. Everyone knew the shinobi world was a world of deception. He knew that this guy wasn't good, but he had to admit that this guy was, extremely charismatic. Like a born, leader. I'll remember you. Kid. This courage. This drive. This vigor. Momochi Zabuza's eyes were fixed on pain. Instead of mocking the other's cowardly display of hugging a woman and crying. On the contrary, he was impressed. He was the executioner's blade user in the second generation of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. He once assassinated the fourth Mizukage to stop the blood mist, and after failing to do so, he fled the village and became a renegade ninja. He was now fleeing from Umbu's pursuit while brewing his next coup. For this reason, he started to lose his bottom line and was hired to carry out assassinations by anyone willing to pay a high price. His experience made him believe that the world was only about rivalry and deceit and that even the favorite of children could turn the butcher's knife on their parents to survive. Now, his worldview was collapsing. It turns out that there are people who are different. There really are. He felt he was too narrow-minded. If he had such an organization, such a leader. Momochi Zabuza's eyes showed a bit of a struggle. It completely disappeared after seeing the smiles on the faces of the Akatsuki members. I need to see him. His brow furrowed and quickly unfurled. He didn't know where this organization was now, but he knew how to find Hashigaki Kisame. Momochi Zabuza jerked to his feet but woke up the child beside him because of the excessive movement. Zabuza-sama. I've changed my mind. You should go, I have other things to do. Momochi Zabuza didn't stop and walked forward. The place he was going to was too dangerous to take the kid with him. Stunned, the pale boy bit his lips, stubbornly trying not to cry. He remembered that Zabuza-sama had said that. Tools must not shed tears. Moreover, tools could never leave their master. Wait for me, Zabuza-sama. In fact, not only Momochi Zabuza, many people in the shinobi world who hadn't returned to their villages after seeing the scene just now were all curious about pain and this organization. They had no place to live, they didn't care about justice or evil, and even more so scoffing at the major shinobi villages. After what they had just experienced, they felt pain was strong, bold, and ambitious. This person may be worthy of their devotion. If this boy remains alive, he will become a great threat. Danzo's face also has a hint of shock. He didn't expect that the correct answer would be the girl. This made his face a little red. He believed that Uchiha Abito was the real answer. As a result, he was instantly smacked in the face. However, he really didn't think that pain could make such a choice. Not even trusting yourself. Such a ruthless person. Everyone, I think it's time for us to talk. The apparent coldness in Sarutobi Hiruzen's voice startled both Hokage advisors at the same time. Sure enough, in the next moment, Sarutobi Hiruzen's words plunged them into an ice cave. I'm old, and it's time to abdicate. When I abdicate, and Kanoha's Hokage is no longer in need of advisors, you can step down with me. As for Danzo, I remember that a little over ten years ago, you and Hanzo from Amigekure jointly attacked an organization, whose name was also called Akatsuki. If your answer doesn't satisfy me, I will simply recall your route. Sarutobi Hiruzen. How dare you! Danzo sprang to his feet and looked at Sarutobi Hiruzen viciously. But to his despair, Sarutobi Hiruzen didn't roar back in anger but rather flatly said, I figured it out. I'm really old. Dead branches shouldn't stay on trees. They should fall to the ground with the leaves and turn into nutrients to nourish the tree. This matter is settled. Now that this has happened, I believe that both Tsunade and Jiraiya will return, and when they return, we will determine the specifics. Kanoha's fire can't wilt in my hands. Zetsu rose from the ground and looked overhead. I can't believe you got it, right? That's not right. 
Zetsu suddenly stared at everyone in the hall, even at Orochimaru and Jiraiya, who had the least sense of existence. Someone struck me. Why didn't anyone die? Is it not considered a disruption of the exam space discipline? Zetsu was a little confused but found that everyone looked at him with unfriendly eyes. He quietly got up and walked over to Obito to play dead. He just tried to put on a show but was interrupted before he could start. Now, he wasn't going to continue. He laid flat. No more struggling. He was tired of being around these people. Above, Ruji saw Conan hugging Pain with a calm expression. He didn't expect that Pain would make such a choice. This requires more than trust. No wonder, in the past life, even when Akatsuki clearly failed, there were still countless people who loved them. Some people even said that the ten people of Akatsuki represented ten dreams. Peace, friendship, affection, art, love, dominance, longevity, childhood, religion, and strength. Ruji didn't know, but now, looking at Conan, who was slowly calming down, he just wanted to cross back and tell them that, Akatsuki was really worthy of your love. System, give them the analysis. Option B, Uchiha Itachi, originally a Kanahagakure ninja, was deceived into killing the whole clan to protect his younger brother Uchiha Sasuke and joined Akatsuki as a Kanahagakure spy due to the investigation towards Uchiha Abito, who was pretending to be Uchiha Madara. Option C, Six Path Pain rebelled before the Fourth Shinobi World War. Option D, Uchiha Abito defected in the Fourth Shinobi War. Pin drop silence. Deadly silence. Both the crowd inside the exam space and the shinobi world outside the exam space were dead silent. They thought that after the ravages of the previous question's analysis, they would be able to talk and laugh about the next analysis with some mental preparation. As a result, they had clearly overestimated themselves before. Looking at the analysis, countless people were stunned. Not to mention that the leader of Akatsuki was really a traitor, or Madara and Abito's mutual fondness for each other, Uchiha Itachi alone could put everyone in a daze. Destroy the whole Uchiha clan, for Uchiha Sasuke's sake. He even killed his parents, but it turned out that it was to protect his brother. Was this bastard even human? Point Toei. At the entrance of a shinobi village, a group of people spat on the ground one after another. Their status and position didn't allow them to say anything about the spies of their own village, but their actions had already said it all. In their opinion, the first filial son of the shinobi world shouldn't be that whatever black Zetsu, but rather Uchiha Itachi. Such filial piety. This, this. The person himself, Uchiha Itachi, was shocked when he saw that he had been deceived as if several huge hammers weighing several thousand pounds were hammering his head and heart. In fact, he had a vague sense of foreboding when he learned that he was working with Uchiha Abito instead of Uchiha Madara. Now, the feeling had come true. But he couldn't understand what went wrong. Or where he was deceived. Being a double agent of Kanahagakure and the Uchiha clan himself, and as the heir of the Uchiha clan, no news was hidden from him within the Uchiha clan. If I was blinded by the Uchiha clan, does it mean that the whole clan was blinded? If that's true, doesn't that mean? What was behind the destruction of the Uchiha clan? Itachi's heart sank. He, to protect me. In the hospital, Uchiha Sasuke, who just woke up, looked at the screen sorrowfully. He now had a splitting headache, and both of his eyes were covered with red veins. What a joke. It must be a big joke. Uchiha Sasuke scoffed to his heart's content, he didn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. But it was as if a voice in his heart was telling him that this was the truth. That's impossible. Impossible. Ah. Uchiha Sasuke huffed in anger as he held his head. Then, he fell backward. It turned out that I had betrayed. Pain's Rinnegan power exploded, vaporizing the tears on his face as he smiled bitterly to himself. He didn't believe that he would defect, but the exam space said so. Naturally, there would be a reason. It was Conan, behind Pain, who turned her attention to Jiraiya, who was thinking. The people of Akatsuki were thinking when suddenly the analysis disappeared. Then, the next question appeared in the sky. Question 3, Who is Noera Rin's real murderer among the following characters? A. Hataki Kakashi B. Black Setsu C. Uchiha Madara D. Namikaze Minato 
This is bad. Mixed in the crowd, Zetsu shuddered violently when he saw the question, followed instantly by a sharp gaze from their side. Without even turning his head, Zetsu knew who the owner of this gaze was. Resisting the urge to look back, the leaves on his head closed slightly as he kept silent. He never thought that this space had things on him. I can't let them answer this question correctly. Never let Abito see the analysis. With his understanding of Abito, if this guy knew that Noera Rin's death was planned by himself and Madara, he would definitely go crazy. He wasn't afraid of him. After all, Abito was just one of the many pawns. To be exact, he was the pawn of a pawn. It might seem as if he was the center of this dark power, but in fact, he had nothing. But he was absolutely afraid that the guy would go crazy in this space and pull himself to die together. Zetsu lifted his head and looked to the sky. It was as if he wanted to see through the mist and see the landscape above it. Unfortunately, he couldn't do it. Rin. 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 Uchiha Abito's fingers clenched his mask with a death grip, suppressing the rage in his heart. With the first two questions laid out, how could Abito not see it? There was another story behind Rin's death. Option A, Kakashi, Abito had witnessed it himself. That guy killed Rin with his own hands. But the exam space asks who the real killer was. The real murderer. Hataki Kakashi could only be regarded as the murderer, at best. And Namike's Minato was definitely not the answer. So, the real answer. It's one of B or C. Shu. 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 Abito figured everything out between each heavy breath he took and stared at Zetsu with a deadly gaze. He knew that Zetsu must know something. Who is Noera Rin? Daidara was stunned. This question, with his level of IQ, was somewhat difficult. Kanahigakura's Kunoichi, who died in the Third Shinobi World War. Namike's Minato's student. Hearing Jiraiya interject, the group of people looked at Jiraiya. Namike's Minato? Sasori asked a rhetorical question. He knew that name very well. The number one speed of the shinobi world, the yellow flash, Namike's Minato. There wasn't a single person who survived the third shinobi world war and didn't know this name. Being able to be at multiple places at the same time. When anyone went against Namike's Minato from Kanahigakure, they could abandon their mission without penalty. This showed how that name had dominated in that period. In other words, this woman is a student of the fourth Hokage. Conan's cold voice rang out, causing the crowd to notice the uniqueness of this Noera Rin gradually. Yes. Jiraiya smiled bitterly but didn't hide it. She, Hataki Kakashi, and Uchiha Abito are students of the fourth Hokage. Rin. At the entrance of Kanahigakure, an umbu, who was in charge of public security, froze instantly when he saw the examination question. Like a cold hand touching his spine, from his tailbone all the way up to his neck. Making the blood in his body freeze all over. He swayed, almost blacking out, and was about to fall but snapped awake and steadied himself. Ha ha ha, it turns out that the fourth Hokage is called Namike's Minato. A vigorous voice rang out, and the crowd at the entrance of Kanahigakur looked at the owner of the voice, and a different emotion appeared in their eyes. There was resentment, disgust, and sympathy. He isn't a famous Hokage. Uzumaki Naruto walked towards the crowd. Originally, he did not like crowded places. After all, he didn't know why, but the villagers never liked him. But now, he was different. He was the number one reckless shinobi of the shinobi world. This was something that even that space recognized. How could people in the village not recognize it? I'm the man who will become Hokage. Option A is Kakashi Senpai. A figure flashed in Itachi's mind, a Sharingan that he had seen himself when he was in Umbu. As far as he knew, Kakashi's Sharingan was given to him by his teammate Uchiha Obito. The Uchiha clan had pressured him to return it, but it was stopped by the third Hokage, and it was eventually dropped. But he didn't tarnish the prestige of Sharingan either. With the Sharingan, he made a name for himself in the shinobi world as the Copy Ninja. This question, I can't answer it. Do any of you know the answer? Daidara directly spoke out. He couldn't help it. He was born late and was a shut-in before joining Akatsuki and didn't pay much attention to the shinobi world outside. 
From the five names above, he knew of Uchiha Madara and Zetsu. Thinking of Zetsu, Daidara sighed a little and said, Zetsu, how come you're everywhere? He was on the shinobi world list, he was also in the analysis of the first question, and now he was in the answer list to the third question. The answer to this question shouldn't be you, right? The speaker had no opinions, but the listener had opinions. Uchiha Abito turned his questioning gaze to Zetsu, which was simply ignored. Pain thought for a moment, but he couldn't answer this question anyway, so it was just right for Zetsu to answer it. Guy, what do you think the correct answer to this question is? Note, Guy, is Zetsu's codename, Black Zetsu was stunned, not expecting that his turn would come so soon after the treatment towards Uchiha Itachi. White Zetsu sympathetically glanced at Black Zetsu. Of course, Black Zetsu knew the correct answer to this question, but he couldn't say it. However, if he didn't answer correctly and deliberately answered it wrong, others would still deduce the correct answer. What should he do? White Zetsu looked at Black Zetsu inquisitively. I was there during the Third Shinobi World War and saw Kanahagakure's Hitaki Kakashi kill Noera Rin with lightning release jutsu. So, the answer to this question, I think, is A, Hitaki Kakashi. Black Zetsu originally wanted to say that he and Madara were both at the scene, but after thinking about it, he left Madara out. So, it seems that the answer to this question is A. Payne nodded and was about to speak out to the space when a voice stopped him. Wait a minute. The correct answer should be B or C. Oh. Hearing this voice, Payne's eyes finally perked up. Are you finally going to stop pretending? Meanwhile, seeing that Payne, who was about to answer the question, was stopped, Zetsu cursed indignantly. Shit. Uchiha Madara was really blind. To actually choose someone like you to carry out the plan. The reason why Zetsu chose Hitaki Kakashi was so that it could blame Uchiha Madara in option C for it. But at this moment, he was interrupted by Abito, which made his plans come to naught. Oh, if it isn't Madara. Right? What do you have to say? Kakuzu had a hint of teasing in his voice. He once fought against the first Okage and knew how powerful the legend of the shinobi world was. How could the person in front of him now be Uchiha Madara, that person's rival? Abito ignored Kakuzu, and at the moment, all his attention was focused on the answer to this question. I was there when Kakashi killed Rin. His voice carried an undisguised pain, he was just the tool. The real murderer in this question should be someone else. Itachi looked at him with a sneer and suddenly said, Are you ready to stand up? Achiha Abito. What? That's Abito. Hitaki Kakashi's face suddenly darkened. How is that possible? At that time, Uchiha Abito was crushed by stones in the cave, and half of his body suffered serious injuries. Even if he survived, it was impossible to finish treating his wounds and move to another battlefield in such a short time. This was a contradiction. Hitaki Kakashi pondered, feeling that he had missed something crucial. This was something that would make the contradiction come true. Wait. The Mangekyo's ability. That space. Does it have the ability to teleport? Hitaki Kakashi's chakra gathered onto the Sharingan, and instantly, the three hooks in the Scarlet Sharingan slowly connected, forming a marvelous pattern. The Sharingan's form started to change, and Kakashi continued to put in more chakra. Swish! As the chakra input reached a certain threshold, the space in front of Kakashi suddenly distorted, and then his body disappeared into the wall. The next second, Kakashi's body appeared in the same place. He gasped violently and leaned on both hands in front of him, clenching them into fists. He was right there. Then why didn't he show up? Why? Zetsu is a member of the organization, relative to you. I think we are more willing to believe in him. Payne's voice was elevated and cold, and his Rinnegan stared at Abito as it came from the abyss. I don't care if you're Uchiha Madara or Abito. But if you make a mistake and we won't be able to see the video because of it, can you bear Akatsuki's wrath? Akatsuki's crowd looked at pain in surprise. They didn't expect that the leader would say such a thing. Conan, who knew pain the best, had a different expression flash in her eyes. Nagato is forcing this man to reveal his identity. Although, by the way, he's acting now. He already guessed the guy's true identity. Uchiha Abito wasn't stupid, on the contrary, 
He was a very clever man who could manipulate Akatsuki in the palm of his hand. Hearing Payne's statement, he certainly knew what Payne meant. His body shook as he hesitated for a moment. A youthful figure appeared in his mind. Abito, you must be Hokage, this is our promise. Rin. A watery glint appeared in Abito's eyes. Since Rin died, he was completely disappointed in the world. Over the years, wasn't he trying to create a world with Rin in it? Now, the real culprit who killed Rin was among these four people. He couldn't afford to miss this. If you need to have a reason, then my identity as Uchiha Abito is enough. Abito ripped off his mask straight away, revealing a bizarre face. The left side of his face looked handsome with his dark eye, while the right side of his face was full of grooves that looked as if they were spliced together and incomparably scary. How? How is this possible? Even though he had a hunch in his heart, at that moment, Hitaki Kakashi still couldn't believe it. He was shocked to see the Sharingan in Uchiha Abito's right eye when he took off his mask. Mangekyo. The pattern on that Mangekyo was identical to the pattern on his left eye, exactly the same. Oh. A smile appeared on Payne's face. His eyes moved away from Uchiha Abito's right face, then answer this question. Behind the crowd, Jiraiya was surprised to see Uchiha Abito's face. He had read Minato's mission briefing that time. Uchiha Abito was smashed by earth release, and Hitaki Kakashi's left eye was destroyed at that time. So, Abito gave his left eye to Kakashi as a gift for becoming a jonin. Who would have thought? Now, Uchiha Abito was standing here, perfectly healthy. Abito. There was a rare fluctuation in Zetsu's voice. It was anger. Great anger. He thought Abito stopping himself was the extent of it, but to his surprise, he took off his mask. It's over. It's all over. Zetsu's fists clenched up, resisting the urge to punch Abito's screwed up face into powder, looking at him with hatred. He could already imagine what kind of situation they both would face when the exam space disappeared. Uchiha Abito would face six path pain and Akatsuki with full force, while he himself had to struggle in a life and death battle against Uchiha Itachi. Zetsu didn't believe that with his and Abito's strength right now, they would be capable of running from these people. Zetsu, I'm only going to ask you once. Was it you? Or Madara? Zetsu was speechless as he glanced at Uchiha Abito, who gave you the courage to question me. He was completely disappointed in Abito. He who couldn't measure his own worth. There's no composure at all. Not the slightest concern for the bigger picture. All he can think about is that woman. Destroying a world for a woman and creating a world for a woman. Just like that guy Uchiha Itachi. Create everything for his brother and destroy everything for his brother. Sure enough, the Uchiha clan were all narrow-minded people, cursed with feelings. But he had to admit, the deeper the Uchiha clan were sick like that, the stronger they were. This was the curse of the Uchiha clan, the curse of the Sharingan. Seeing Zetsu ignore himself, Uchiha Abito already had a choice in his mind. Over the years, Abito had also suspected Uchiha Madara, and he had privately investigated numerous times, all to no avail. Until today, he found that Zetsu wasn't just someone's creation. Even if it was, that person wasn't Uchiha Madara. Uchiha Madara was unworthy. Otherwise, there was no way that Zetsu's name would show up in the Shinobi world list, where Uchiha Madara's name wasn't. So. Zetsu even deceived Uchiha Madara. This also explained why he and the shinobi named Kabuto were the ones who started the fourth shinobi world war. Uchiha Abito's eyes grew brighter and brighter as he felt he was getting close to the truth. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath, repeating it several times. If he didn't, he was afraid he wouldn't be able to control the killing intent inside. For this question, I choose B, Black Zetsu. Uchiha Abito looked at the fog almost frantically. He wanted to know, to understand. Correct answer. Do you want to see the analysis? Absolutely. Seeing that his answer was correct, Abito suddenly looked up to the sky with a shout, and two black chains slid down from his sleeves. In the next instant, his body flashed and appeared beside Zetsu. Although Jutsu couldn't be used here, Taijutsu wasn't sealed. The two black chakra chains in Uchiha Abito's hand were like snakes, bounding Zetsu. Desperate to attack Abito, 
a dark light flashed in the pitch black eyes. But before he could continue with his next step, a huge foggy palm slapped down from the space above, crushing Uchiha Obito. Uchiha Obito was badly hit, and a mouthful of blood gushed out. The two jagged leaves on the Zetsu's head close together, blocking the blood from splashing on him. Uchiha Obito struggled violently. The thick fog on his body kept thickening. In the blink of an eye, it was as if he was supporting a small mountain of white fog. The small mountain was in the shape of five fingers, pressing him down. Zetsu. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Uchiha Obito struggled helplessly and roared as if he was an evil spirit from hell. Incompetent people barked the loudest. Zetsu grunted coldly. They were still within this space, and Jutsu won't work. If Jutsu could be used, he would have been dead the moment Uchiha Obito made his move. He was injured that year and had a white Zetsu implanted in his body for quick healing. Daring to fight with me. Did he really think that white Zetsu was dead? Why did he think he could master would release? Heh, trash. What a bunch of trash. Zetsu's icy cold gaze swept past the faces of Akatsuki's members in turn. He decided that when the questions were done, he would kill all these people himself. Forming white Zetsus. He would get Uchiha Madara's eyes back and wait for decades or even hundreds of years before planning again. Next time, all the pawns and pawns of pawns involved in the plan would be personally screened by him. Uchiha Obito is such an idiot. Having one as a teammate once was enough. Black Zetsu's irritation eased a bit. When he was done with the matter at hand, he was ready to go to the shinobi world and find the shinobi named Kabuto. Since this space said that he had cooperated with him, it seemed that he could work with him. On the other side, Abito wailed angrily, and blood slowly flowed out of his eyes, nostrils, ears, and corners of the mouth, matching his ferocious face. He looked like a fierce ghost demanding a life, incomparably terrifying. Space, show us the analysis. Faintly withdrawing his gaze, Payne looked to the sky and said so. Although he felt that this question might have nothing to do with him, he still chose to see and analyze it. Uchiha Madara was deceived by Black Zetsu, selected Uchiha Obito in his old age to complete the rebirth plan for him after his death. In the Battle of Kanabi Bridge, Uchiha Madara sent ninjas to capture Noera Rin, sealed the three-tailed beast Isabu in Noera Rin, and put a forbidden individual curse tag in her heart. Under Madara's control, Rin and Kakashi rushed to Kanahagakur to let Rin release the tailed beast and destroy Kanahagakur. Abito, who was rescued by Madara, learned from White Zetsu that they were under siege and went to save them. Rin chose to die at Kakashi's hands to protect Kanahagakur from destruction. At that moment, Zetsu brought Abito to witness the scene where Kakashi penetrated Rin's chest with Chidori. Kakashi fell into a coma, and Abito killed all the shinobi, causing his utter disappointment in the shinobi world. Afterward, Abito returned to Madara. He acknowledged it and was inspired to create an ideal world without war and forever peaceful, a world with Rin in it. So, it was like that. Hataki Kakashi looked lonely. Until today, he didn't understand why Rin ran into his Chidori's path. As it turned out, she wanted to die. To Kakashi's surprise, he didn't expect that Uchiha Abito was not only at the scene but also saw him kill Rin. No wonder he wouldn't come out to see himself. However, when he was unconscious, Abito killed all the shinobi. Why didn't he kill him? Hataki Kakashi's mind was full of confusion. But at the moment, the guy who could answer his questions was being suppressed under the large palm created by the space. Seeing the murderous intent in Zetsu's eyes, Hataki Kakashi's heart lurched. Uchiha Abito had fallen out with this guy named Zetsu, wouldn't that be dangerous? Hataki Kakashi didn't think that this guy who could even deceive Uchiha Madara was inferior to Uchiha Abito. What's more, he taught Uchiha Abito. How could Zetsu have no means? I have to save him. Hataki Kakashi made up his mind. Since his man Gekyo Sharingan could connect to one dimension, he believed that Abito could do that too. As long as he entered the dimension and waited for Abito to open the dimension too, he could bring him back. But. I wouldn't be a match for that guy. I need to get some helpers. While pondering, a green figure appeared in Hataki Kakashi's mind. At the same time, the fourth question had appeared in the exam space. Question 4, 
which of the following killed Jiraiya during his investigation? A. His student Namikaze Minato. B. His student Uzumaki Naruto. C. His student Uzumaki Nagato. D. His student student Uchiha Abito. I. Died. In the exam space, Jiraiya froze for a moment, then the corners of his mouth picked up slightly. Unlike everyone in Akatsuki, he had already prepared for his death. In the shinobi world, investigating information was one of the most dangerous tasks. The chances of dying in this kind of mission far exceed those of going undercover. Seeing his end, his death, Jiraiya's heart had a hint of regret. He hadn't found a child predicted by the great toad sage. Tsunade hadn't agreed to him yet and opened up her heart to him. She. Wait. Suddenly, Jiraiya looked at the options and then at the leader of Akatsuki, the guy in a wheelchair. Nagato. Nagato. Jiraiya's tone became more and more certain. In the beginning, he felt Nagato and Conan were familiar, but Jiraiya didn't think about it because there were too many Rinnegan users in the space here. Until now, when he saw the name Uzumaki Nagato in the answers to the fourth question, he remembered the three orphans he had taken in Amage Cure. Nagato, Conan. Jiraiya waved carelessly and saw pain turn his head. Jiraiya looked at the two, his voice full of joy. He didn't expect to meet his former students here. Especially now, they had grown into powerful shinobis. This made Jiraiya feel gratified and proud, Conan, Nagato, where is Yahiko? Yahiko. Nagato didn't expect to hear this name from Jiraiya's mouth again, so he fell into a trance. Time seemed to go back to the time when Jiraiya took care of the trio. If he hadn't left at that time, that wouldn't have happened. Nagato pressed down his emotions. His voice sounded like a kami, without a trace of emotion. That guy is already dead. Uzumaki Nagato is Jiraiya's student. That Uchiha Abito is his student's student. Jiraiya-sama, this is too miserable. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect these two people to be his students. What kind of karma is this? However, worthy of a Sanin, to have taught such a strong disciple, and more than one. In front of Kanahagakur, the loser Uzumaki Naruto stared blankly at the frozen white-haired monster above him. He didn't even listen to the things discussed by people around him. Or maybe he heard it but got used to pretending not to listen to it. He didn't know who this guy with long white hair was, but his unruly appearance and indescribable temperament gave him a good feeling at first glance. As if he was waiting for this person his whole life. He's going to be my sensei. Seeing his name, Uzumaki Naruto smiled. If this guy is going to be my sensei, then I'll promise not to mess up and train with him well. By the way, doesn't that guy Uchiha Abito have to call me senpai now? Uzumaki Naruto smirked as he looked at the guy, who was silently wailing in exam space and shook his head. He was too young to understand the suffering the former was experiencing, but since he was now his senpai. Then I have to get revenge for him. Sensei, and Abito Kohai, when I become Hokage, I'll definitely get revenge for you. Uzumaki Naruto's voice caused some dissatisfaction among a group of shinobi around him. They were about to curse a few words, but when they turned around they saw that, it was him. After they changed expressions several times, they finally suppressed it. Next to him, several genins were about to insult the fool, but a friend stopped them on the side. Today is not like the old days. The Sanin, Jiraiya-sama, is going to be his sensei. Hearing their friend's advice, the several genin put on an ugly smile, then turned their heads and went back to the village. This guy was a monster, which had something to do with the nine-tailed demon fox's attack on Kanahagakur several years ago. They were genins, and they couldn't get access to high-level secrets. They only knew that some parents, children, and loved ones died on that bloody night. And he was the culprit. Huh, sure enough, it's different. Uzumaki Naruto punched his own palm. Just now, he thought he was almost going to get bullied, beaten, and scolded again. Unexpectedly, they gave him an ugly smile and simply left. He heard what the group said when they left. Jiraiya-sama, was that because of you? Jiraiya, you're still so stupid. Orochimaru coldly looked at the red-faced. Jiraiya and spoke out, look at the third option. You are in danger of dying at his hands. The disbelief in Orochimaru's eyes hadn't completely disappeared. 
he didn't expect that Akatsuki's leader was the same child from back then. The child who almost died at his own hands. Orochimaru secretly rejoiced. Fortunately, he was relatively stable when he was in Akatsuki. Otherwise, he would have been miserable if the kid went looking for payback. At that time, he met Deva Path Pain. After losing the battle, he volunteered to join Akatsuki to stay alive. He was acutely aware of how scary the guy with Rinnegan was, not to mention his bizarre sealless jutsu. Now, there were a bunch of guys with Rinnegan. Even Orochimaru felt his scalp tingling. Impossible, my students wouldn't kill me. Jiraiya turned around and spoke to Orochimaru. Out of the corner of his eye, he happened to see the subdued Achiha Abido. And. I think my student student wouldn't strike me down either. Jiraiya said something that even he didn't truly believe. We can rule out option A, Namike's Minato. He's already dead. Kakuzu suddenly said. He said so because the wanted notice on Namike's Minato hanging in the underground bounty office was withdrawn. He knew so much about this matter partly because that bounty was so high that it left an impression on him. On the other hand, this was one of the few commissions he was afraid to take on in recent decades. Option D, Uchiha Abido could also be ruled out. His strength is no match for Jiraiya. Seeing Kakuzu speaking, Uchiha Itachi also spoke up. He knew about Uchiha Abido's Mangekyo's ability to open up another dimension. Although Abido had developed it into many variations, its killing capability wasn't very powerful. The use of space to evade and sneak up on the enemy was just that. Such strength wasn't enough to kill a shinobi at the Sanin level. So, only option B, Uzumaki Naruto and I are left. Nagato nodded and looked at Jiraiya. Uzumaki Naruto, who is he? Listening to the group's serious blather, Jiraiya was shocked. No way, no way. I couldn't be killed by my own student. So miserable. I wonder if Tsunade and I would be together at that time. Jiraiya looked back at Uchiha Abito again, and seeing his miserable face full of blood, he nodded in despair and rubbed his chin, it seems like, well, it's possible. At that moment, Pain's inquiring voice rang out, Uzumaki Naruto. Who is that? Uzumaki Naruto. I don't know who that is. Jiraiya was about to say so, but suddenly. This name. It couldn't be that kid, could it? Someone with the same name as the protagonist of his own tale of the utterly gutsy shinobi, the son of the fourth Hokage. Jiraiya's mind recalled a certain golden-haired guy, looking tenderly at the red-hot-blooded habanero's big belly, Teacher, I want my child to use the same as the protagonist of your novel. Uzumaki Naruto. Jiraiya stroked his prickly stubble and hesitated. That boy should be in Kanahagakur now. He would be about eight or nine years old at this time and should be graduating from ninja school soon. A light flashed in Jiraiya's head. The third Hokage sent a message to him the other day, asking him to return before the Kanoha Chunin exam. Is it for this boy? The more Jiraiya pondered about it, the more he thought it was possible. After the death of the fourth Hokage, the third Hokage took back the seat. He was the student of the third Hokage and the sensei of the fourth. It was reasonable for him to train the child of the fourth Hokage. I wonder what kind of person that boy would be. Uzumaki Kushina belonged to the Uzumaki clan, and his name was Uzumaki Naruto. Maybe he had red hair. Jiraiya smiled as a red-haired Namikaze Minato appeared in his mind. I don't think it's him. He's still a kid right now. Jiraiya shook his head and said, as far as I know, he hasn't graduated from ninja school yet. It takes about a few decades of practice to beat me. Having said that, Jiraiya couldn't help smiling to himself. It's not that he was boasting. He was titled the Toad Sage Jiraiya, the only powerful ninja in the shinobi world who has practiced sage techniques. Am I that miserable? Killed, just because they say I would be killed. Jiraiya's eyes looked at several names in the answer list. He was prepared. When he finds out the correct answer, he was going to clean the person up. He was going to make the person understand what it means to respect your teacher. Putting their teacher to shame. Sure enough, the young man with Rinnegan is Jiraiya's student. Anoki, who was floating in mid-air, sneered at the broadcast screen. His wise eyes had long seen through everything. What Akatsuki, what about the fourth shinobi war? 
this was just a means for Kanoha to show off their strength. He understood this point as early as the first question. Now, he was even more sure. Look at these four students of Jiraiya. What bullshit is this? Anoki angrily took a puff on his pipe. He was jealous. He was dying of envy. Why is Kanoha always full of talent? Was it the only cradle for talent in the shinobi world? Anoki deeply sighed. Although he didn't want to admit it, he had to. No matter which generation, there was a huge gap between Kanahagakure and Iwagakure. No, there was a huge gap between Kanoha and every other shinobi village. When he thought about it, his Iwagakure wasn't any worse off than the other shinobi villages. But it was poor enough. In his own generation, though Iwagakure had him, Kanoha had, the professor, Sarutobi Hiruzen, and the advisor, Danzo. In the next generation, there were only a few jonins in Iwagakure. But what about Kanoha? It was like an amazing fluke, they had the San Nin. Not to mention Kanoha's white fang, who died early. Until the generation after. Heh. Anoki sighed again. Looking at the several names on the screen, he began to wonder about them for a while. In the first Shinobi World War, the two supreme shinobis were from Kanoha, subduing an entire generation. In the second Shinobi World War, the Sanmin came out of nowhere to oppose the demigod. In the third Shinobi World War, the yellow flash roared and dominated the battlefield. I wonder what monsters Kanoha would spawn in the fourth Shinobi World War. Damn it! Anoki looked at the names above for a moment. Namike's Minato and Uzumaki Naruto aside, according to the questions, Uzumaki Nagato and Uchiha Abito seem to have something to do with the Fourth Shinobi World War. Anoki briefly recalled. According to the analysis from the exam space, Uzumaki Nagato died before the Fourth Shinobi World War, and Uchiha Abito also defected in the Fourth Shinobi World War. In that case, there should only be a few from Kanoha in the Fourth Shinobi World War. Thinking that far, Anoki slowly felt relieved. After the shinobi world united to defeat the enemy, power distribution must have become even more intense. It would be terrible if Kanoha still had shinobis that could conquer the fourth shinobi world war. The entire shinobi world could become Kanoha's. I'm really overthinking this. Anoki shook his head and wiped away the hint of discomfort in his heart. As for the guy named Uzumaki Naruto, he wasn't too concerned. As the Kage of a village, he naturally knew a few things about powerhouses at the level of San Nin. Especially for prodigals like Jiraiya and those who spend a lot of time in public like Tsunade. Jiraiya hadn't accepted any disciples yet. Meaning this guy named Uzumaki Naruto hadn't been accepted yet. Well, that's a relief. Anoki guessed that the Shinobi World War in the future would only be a few dozen years from now. If it's ten years, this guy named Uzumaki Naruto may still be a genin. If he could grow from a teenager to a shinobi that could survive the fourth war in such a short time, then this person's talent would be unbelievable. Besides, if this guy could really survive the fourth war, why would Jiraiya go out and investigate this and that? Wouldn't it be better for him to stay in Kanahagakure and teach his student? Anoki couldn't help but smack his lips when he thought of Namike's Minato's poise, Uchiha Abito's madness, and Nagato's eccentricity. If this Uzumaki Naruto also participated in the Fourth Shinobi World War. Jiraiya fought in the Second World War, his students fought in the Third World War, and then took a student to fight in the Fourth World War when he was that old. Indeed, whether the Shinobi world is chaotic or not, he, Jiraiya, has the final say. If that's the case, I'll eat my Cough cough. That must be impossible. If Jiraiya could teach so many unbelievable people, he wouldn't need to investigate any such shit. If he taught these people well, the shinobi world would have been peaceful. But. Anoki laughed. If his imagination came true, wouldn't Jiraiya be beaten to death by Sarutobi Hiruzen? With Sharingan's trickery, even the Sanmin Jiraiya would get trapped, right? In the exam space, Daidara's tone was somewhat sour. Besides, Orochimaru is also a Sanmin. Wasn't he also trapped? As long as you don't give them time to summon their beast, their strength would be greatly limited. Uchiha Itachi slightly raised his eyelids. He really wanted to tell him that the gap between Sharingan was as big as the gap between Kage-level powerhouses. B. 
Being able to kill the fifth Kazakage didn't mean that they could also kill the fourth Reikage. Don't you understand such a simple truth? Also, you think the Sanmin are famous in the shinobi world just because their summon beasts are insane? Jiraiya, what have you been doing all this time? Me? I write books and travel. If you don't tell the truth, I'll bring Akatsuki to visit Kanoha. Kane said lightly. When the other Akatsuki members heard these words, a strange smile appeared on their faces. They didn't expect it, their leader could also subtly threaten people. He was more and more like a villain. But. They liked it. Nagato, you. Jiraiya's face changed. Four people like them, except Orochimaru, all put the interests of the village first, and their personal feelings and interests after. Jiraiya's eyes deepened. If Nagato said so, he must have some kind of a plan. During this time, have the patrolling shinobi pay attention. Saratobi Hiruzen addressed the three people who looked pale behind him, saying that without looking at them. He secretly compared Akatsuki's strength with Kanoha. If the people in the exam space were all members of Akatsuki, excluding Orochimaru, there were 16 people. Originally there were 17 people, but Saratobi Hiruzen counted Uchiha Itachi as someone on his side. Seriously, if it weren't for guarding us against the other shinobi villages, these 16 people, against Kanoha's full strength, had no possibility of spreading waves at all. To know, just his own Sarutobi clan and the number of jonin in recent years. Ha <laughs> ha. Sarutobi Hiruzen's eyes flashed with a cold glint. No matter the Akimikis, the Yamanakas, the Naras, or other small clans, which one didn't produce a few jonins. Not to mention Kanoha's Hyuga clan. Not to mention Kanoha's Umbu, Root, and many other means. As long as these people weren't at Uchiha Itachi's level, a dozen people at the Jonin level could consume them. Did they really think everyone was like that rakage, going against 10,000 at a time? Not to mention the fact that these guys have internal conflicts that couldn't be ignored. Kanoha has the right time, the right place, and the right people. What should we be afraid of? Thinking of this, Sarutobi Hiruzen's heart raged. If you dare to come, you would have nothing left. Jiraiya's facial expression fluctuated several times. Although he hadn't returned to Kanoha for so many years, he knew about Sarutobi Hiruzen's tactics. Kanoha now was more than the fourth Hokage's era. Otherwise, why would they, the San Nin, leave one after another? There were just some things they didn't want to see. He didn't want to see his disciples fight with Kanoha. During this time, I have been investigating news about Akatsuki. You guys had left some traces in the shinobi world that aroused my suspicions. Jiraiya looked at Nagato calmly and decided not to hide it. After all, this wasn't exactly information that would be useful to Akatsuki or Orochimaru. I'm heading back to Kanoha to attend Kanoha's Chunin exam. Jiraiya didn't expect that his words would expose Kanoha directly. If Jiraiya had known that the entire shinobi world would hear his words, he wouldn't have said them. Jiraiya is going back to Kanoha before the Chunin exam. Orochimaru raised his eyebrows lightly. He didn't expect that Jiraiya would be going back to Kanoha at this time. Surely it didn't mean that. Kanoha noticed my movements. Orochimaru suddenly realized that many things might face changes because of the appearance of this space. It seemed that he had to start early. Idiot. Stupid. How dare you disclose Kanoha's information to the public. Idiot. Hiruzen is that what his teacher taught him? Hearing Jiraiya's words, Danzo broke into a cursing fit, looking furious. His eyes were fixed on Sarutobi Hiruzen's back. Today, he was angered by the forcefulness of the third Hokage, and after pointing the finger, felt much better. However, his anger wasn't all pretending. If Jiraiya weren't the one who said this today, he would already be sending someone out to kill him. Sarutobi Hiruzen was livid. No one knew if he was angry with Jiraiya or because of Danzo scolding. They don't seem to know that the whole world is watching them. Behind them, the Hokage advisor's words made both of them turn pale at the same time. Ridiculous. This is Kanoha Shinobi. Is this the quality of Kanoha Sanin, Jiraiya? Ha ha ha. In Sunagakir, the shinobis that gathered snickered as they watched Jiraiya. 
They didn't expect that the famous Sanin Jiraiya would expose not only Kanoha's upcoming Chunin exams but also the fact that he was rushing back to Kanahagakur. Raza's eyes were also full of disdain. This Chunin exam was attended by all the shinobi villages that had a treaty with Kanoha. But of the five major shinobi villages, only his Sunagakir was by itself. The remaining ones were Amagakur, Kyuzagakir, Takigakir, Odogakur, and Kanahagakur. The reason why he participated was that Orochimaru had contacted him some time ago. Raza frowned. However, the news of Kanoha's Chunin exam would eventually spread to other villages. But now that it's being brought out, it's much more maneuverable. Report Kazakage sama, a Kyumo shinobi, and an IWA shinobi appeared at the border and left a scroll. A scroll. Chio looked at the two scrolls held by the puppet behind Sajin. Her five fingers moved slightly. A dozen chakra lines invisible to the naked eye were linked directly to the puppet, depriving the puppet of control. She controlled the puppet to fly away and opened the scroll. After a while, she saw nothing happened and controlled the puppet to bring the scroll back. In three days, the Tsuchikage will visit Kanahagakur and is inviting the Kazakage to accompany him. The content on the other scroll was similar, but it was a little more informal. I, the fourth Reikage, I, will be going to mess Kanoha up. Are you coming? Raza looked at the scrolls and laughed. Reply to them and say that the fourth Kazakage agreed. With the scroll destroyed in one move, Raza was sure that the Mizukage would receive similar scrolls. Everything is becoming even more interesting. It seems that the leader is the correct answer to this question. Uchiha Itachi was worried. He thought Jiraiya would investigate Amagekure in the future, was found by the leader, and a battle broke out. Jiraiya was defeated and killed by the leader. Sure enough, the leader's strength was better than that of Jiraiya-sama. Nagato looked at Jiraiya, his eyes slightly twitched. It turns out that my future self also shouldered his life. His shoulders were getting heavier and heavier. Space, this question, I choose C, Uzumaki Nagato. Correct answer. Do you want to see the analysis? Yes. Option A, Namikaze Minato, is Jiraiya's fourth student. He died in the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack incident after the Third Shinobi World War. Although he was resurrected in the Fourth Shinobi World War, there's no interaction with Jiraiya. So, this option is incorrect. Option B, Uzumaki Naruto, Jiraiya's fifth student and a child selected by Jiraiya personally. He got along well with Jiraiya during Kanoha's Chunin exam. So, this option is incorrect. Option D, Uchiha Abito, started the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack and caused his sensei, Namikaze Minato to die, but he hasn't interacted with Jiraiya. So, this option is incorrect. Therefore, C is the correct answer to this question. After the end of the Second Shinobi World War, the Sanin met three orphans on their way back from Amagekure. Jiraiya gave up going back to the village and stayed on his own to teach the three children. Therefore, he lost the best opportunity to pursue Senju Tsunade. After the teachings were completed, Jiraiya didn't take the three children back to Kanoha to protect them but chose to leave them on their own. Many years later, Jiraiya left Kanahagakur without saying goodbye, having accepted the fifth Hokage, Tsunade's hint of confession, and went to Amagekure to investigate Akatsuki. After being exposed during his investigation in Amagekure and knowing that the leader of Akatsuki was Uzumaki Nagato, Jiraiya, who had activated his sage mode to obtain information about Rinnegan, chose to die in battle. Before he died, he imprinted the information on a toad's back and passed it on. Looking at the analysis above, Orochimaru's eyes flashed a little understanding. Resurrection of the Dead Kabuto with such clear words, thinking about some of his recent experiments and what he was going to hand over to Kabuto, it became clear to Orochimaru. It seemed that although the exam space wouldn't reveal his relationship with the Fourth Shinobi World War, it was obvious that he was most likely an integral part of the Fourth Shinobi World War. It's just that. I don't know what role I'm playing in it. Orochimaru stared gloomily at the name Namikaze Minato. Even if others weren't aware, how could he not be aware of where the soul of the fourth Hokage was? Without digging his soul out of the Shinigami's belly, he didn't have the conditions to be resurrected. In that case, some of his own suspicions were also true. God can be deceived. 
Orochimaru's eyes narrowed comfortably. He gained a lot from this trip into this strange space. Although there was no improvement in his actual strength, he could confirm some of his hypotheses, which greatly saved the time for him to do his own experiments. Namike's Minato. Resurrected. The fourth rakage, I, looked at the word resurrection that had quotation marks. His eyes rounded up, full of disbelief. He didn't understand how a dead guy could come back to life. Still trying to stop the living. The fourth rakage felt a headache coming. He was a shinobi who understood Namike's Minato's speed firsthand and was responsible for issuing that rule about facing the guy at that time. That's the guy that he could only look up to. He was so fast it was crazy. The fourth rakage scratched his head. He wanted to know what happened in the fourth shinobi world war and why even the dead would join the party. Speaking of. They would resurrect the whole group of Kanoha's kages, right? A bad feeling flashed through the fourth rakage's heart. Shit. It's you again. It's fucking you again. In Iwagakure, Anoki burst out cursing. He couldn't help it, really couldn't help it. How could he not be angry? He had just thought that living old guy in Kanoha didn't have anyone to fight in a fourth shinobi world war now. As a result, a dead one popped out. Now, Anoki felt like he had broken a tooth and swallowed it in his stomach. He had to admit that if it were that guy, not to mention the fourth shinobi world war, he would be a tough opponent to beat even if there were two more wars. This was unacceptable to Anoki. If the real answer was like this, it was better to let that Kanoha guy named Uzumaki Naruto grow up quickly. What the heck is this? Anoki sighed. Compared with the news that the fourth Hokage would be resurrected, the hint of Senju Tsunade of the Sanin becoming the fifth Hokage didn't make any waves. After all, even if the old man Sarutobi Hiruzen liked power, he would still release his power one day. Between the defected Orochimaru and the unruly Jiraiya, Senju Tsunade, born in a noble family, was simply the best choice to become the fifth Hokage. Thinking of the gap between him and Sarutobi Hiruzen, Anoki shook his head. The old guy had a group of people who could take over the Kage position, and they were doing everything possible to get to the top. While Anoki himself, who wanted to abdicate, didn't even have a successor. It's true what they say, too much and too little is equally as bad. Jiraiya-sama is going to die. Are you guys ready to eat your shorts? Back in Kanoha village, the atmosphere of the crowd chatting was again interrupted, and the angry eyes looked at the owner of the voice. There was a small fat boy who was eating a pile of high-calorie food in his hand. Beside him, a young and pretty girl with a long ponytail was patting her forehead, trying to look like she didn't know him. Shouldn't the focus of your attention be on that Uchiha Abito who started the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack? Choji's eyes looked righteous. He was only one year old during the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack. But later, he heard from his father, who was the head of the clan, that many people from the Akimichi clan died then. Because of their secret technique, when the Kyubi attacked Kanoha, they were the first to bear the brunt. His uncle, his second uncle, and his eldest uncle died that night. His father had also told him that because the Kyubi was controlled by Sharingan, none of the other clans meddled on the night of Uchiha's destruction, although they were all preparing for battle in their own clans. His father had heard the wailing all night long. Choji Akimichi looked at that name, and hatred flashed in his eyes. He was just fat, not stupid. There were some things that he couldn't say, but he knew. I would accept Jiraiya. I hinted at a relationship with him. Somewhere in the shinobi world, Tsunade looked at the analysis, lost in thought. If she understood correctly, the space's analysis meant that at that time, she had become the fifth Hokage, and Jiraiya went out on a mission to help her and made an agreement with her. If he came back, she would accept him. No, maybe. It was a decision made by herself, and Jiraiya didn't know. And so, he died. Two tears unwillingly shed, leaving two clear water marks on her face. Sure enough, people close to her would die. Tsunade looked up at the sky, no one could tell how she felt. She just wanted to cry for a while, but Shizen was still behind her. The sadness of being an adult was such that sometimes one couldn't even cry as much as one wanted to. Tsunade-sama, did Jiraiya-sama miss the opportunity, to teach the three children? After listening to Shizun's words behind her, Tsunade thought of Jiraiya, who had always teased her since their first class together, and it warmed her heart. That guy, 
as he said, only liked me in this life. Shizun, it's a thing of the past, who knows? Tsunade's voice rang out quietly. She didn't know about the situation that the space was talking about. But at the beginning, when Jiraiya was ready to stay, she was reluctant. And he tried to persuade her. After returning to the village, Dan appeared. If. No. No. I would approve of Jiraiya. No way. He's been taunting me since I was a kid. Why else would I have developed the strength of a hundred seal technique? Impossible. Never. Tsunade shook her head like a rattle. They were both old. If they came together, wouldn't she have to give birth at old age? Although she was the most prestigious medical shinobi in the shinobi world and had experience in delivering babies, how could she have experience giving birth? Moreover, she knew that, though Jiraiya looked so wild and had produced a nice little perverted book, he was very clean and pure. To this day, he's still a virgin. I'm not going to marry Jiraiya, not in this lifetime. I'm just going to go back and inherit the fifth Hokage position and deal with intrigue with those old guys every day. I won't ever marry. After saying that, Tsunade glanced at the smile on Shizen's face and couldn't help but add to it. Unless Jiraiya could fly in the sky, unless Orochimaru became a woman, unless Akatsuki destroyed Kanoha, and unless the moon falls down. Otherwise, Senja Tsunade will never have anything to do with him. Ah. Uh. Shizun had a frustrated look on her face. That's too much. Although she was a relative of Tsunade's ex-boyfriend, after years of getting along together, Shizun sincerely hoped that Tsunade could build a family. In Shizun's view, Jiraiya was definitely the best candidate. He was somewhat handsome, rich, and a veteran. Most importantly, he spoiled and followed whatever Tsunade-sama said. Can someone tell me what sage mode is? In the land of iron, Mifune looked around and felt his head hurt. How did that group of troublemakers develop a new jutsu? I wonder if they used seals or not. The land of iron was a neutral country. There were no shinobi villages in this country, only samurai. Samurai don't use jutsu. The reason why they were able to remain neutral among the shinobi countries and were not invaded was solely because, to some extent, their force exceeded that of the shinobi. For example, below Chunin. Below Chunin, a shinobi seal speed wasn't as fast as their sword swinging speed, so there was no chance for them to display their jutsu, which was the main reason why they could defeat shinobi. Otherwise, when the shinobi fought with jutsu, even he couldn't be their opponent. However, this balance would be lost at the jonin level. A jonin strength and seal forming speed far exceeded the reaction speed of ordinary samurai, and when the two compete, the latter would definitely lose. Fortunately, the number of jonin in the shinobi world wasn't very large. There weren't many jutsu without hand seals. After all, not everyone could start up a jutsu without using seals. Not everyone could clap their hands and shout whatever they wanted. Therefore, after the live broadcast appeared, Mifune and other samurai were watching coldly. They had to admit, watching from the sidelines, watching those shinobi fight each other, their hearts were filled with a sense of superiority. But now, Mifune couldn't sit still. Sage mode. Sage mode. The more he uttered the words, the more he felt unsure. Someone. Inform the people below. We are going to take a trip to Kanahagakur in two days. Yes. Ha 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 ha, it seems that I'm going to die in your hands. Jiraiya grinned broadly and waved his hand at Nagato, unconcerned with the results. The analysis said, at that time, he refused to escape after using the sage mode to obtain the information on Rinnegan. It's different now. I know I can't beat you. Why would I still fight you? Am I that hard-headed? Jiraiya looked at the Uzumaki Naruto answer. A child I personally selected. Is he the child, the great toad sage, prophesied about? A little guy who could bring peace to the shinobi world. The destined child. Jiraiya couldn't wait to see the little guy. I think a red-haired, hot-tempered little guy would be raised well by the third. After all, he is an orphan of the fourth, not to mention his mother is Kushina. The couple had paid too much for Kanoha. I just hope he isn't raised to be a spoiled rich kid, sigh. Jiraiya was worried that the third Hokage would raise Naruto into an overbearing little village tyrant. After all, it would add a lot of challenges to his teachings. 
But. Even if he had to suffer, he would turn him into an excellent ninja. After all. I'm Jiraiya. On teaching students, in the whole shinobi world, no one would say they were better than me. The proud Jiraiya's eyes continued down the analysis and suddenly froze. Tsunade. Tsunade accepted me. Smack. Jiraiya threw a slap at his own face as he let out an audible pump, covering his red and swollen face with surprise in his eyes. Surprise, giddiness, maddening joy swept over him in an instant. Jiraiya's feet were dancing on the ground, happy as a child who had gotten a New Year's gift. He looked around, looking for someone to share his joy with. Itachi. Tsunade promised me. Let's go back to Kanoha, and I'll treat you to a meal someday. Oh ho ho, Orochimaru, don't get distracted, look up. Jiraiya threw himself at Orochimaru's head and forced it to look up. See, Tsunade accepted me. You slap yourself and see if it hurts. I just did, and it isn't a dream. By the way, by the way, didn't you say that if I could get Tsunade, you would call me Honorable Father? You don't have to be my son. Just take Tsunade's surname, follow your mother, Senju Orochimaru. Ah, I think it sounds good. Wham! Boomph! The Shinobi World Seeing Jiraiya's silly appearance, Tsunade's eyes turned red and sour, and her tears flowed down consciously. Just how deep was the love that could make him so persistent? Her heart warmed up as if a sun had been filling it up inside. Humph fool! While talking, her pair of beautiful eyes fell on Jiraiya. Suddenly, she thought of something. When the exam space was done, would the space pull them in together? He could enter the answer space. Could it be that he was right next to Akatsuki? Shit. Jiraiya is in danger. I can't let him die. Shizun, come on, let's go back to Kanoha right now. Jiraiya is in danger. Ah. Shizun was stunned. Didn't you want to rest? Why do you want to return to Kanoha right now? Besides, didn't you say that you had nothing to do with Jiraiya-sama? Conan looked at Jiraiya with joy, with a rare smile on her face. He was still like that and never changed. Conan saw some more things from the analysis of the fourth question. Jiraiya-sensei didn't bring the three of them back to Kanahagakur after teaching them to protect them. Conan pursed her lips and quickly figured out the cause and effect. It seemed that Kanahagakur wasn't as peaceful as it appeared. I think Jiraiya-sensei was worried about what would happen to Nagato in Kanoha because of his eyes. After all, everyone knew that Kanoha had the two largest clans that were experts in pupil techniques. Conan's head was slightly tilted. She wondered if it was just a feeling, she felt like someone was watching her from above the fog. As if there was an unknown existence overlooking her. Conan tried to see through the fog but to no avail. She could only see the fog that formed the analysis drift away. Sarutobi Hiruzen. How dare you give the position of fifth Hokage to Tsunade? Danzo stared angrily and viciously at Sarutobi Hiruzen. I've shed blood, sweat, and tears for Kanoha. The position of the fifth Hokage should be mine. Danzo directly stated the words in his heart. For a long time, everyone was aware of his obsession. After all, even a fool could see that Danzo had thoughts about the Hokage seat with what he had done. But for a long time, this open secret had never been acknowledged in public. Until today, he became angry from embarrassment and pointed it out himself. Danzo, you crossed the line. Hiruzen, don't be angry. Danzo didn't mean it. Yeah, Hiruzen, Danzo is just babbling, don't take it seriously. The two advisors of Hokage rushed to console Sarutobi Hiruzen, fearing that an angry Sarutobi Hiruzen would turn on the two of them, only to find Sarutobi Hiruzen looking at them with a strange expression on his face. What, what's the matter? The two advisors were extremely uncomfortable by Sarutobi Hiruzen's gaze and asked as they touched their faces suspiciously. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at Danzo again and shook his head in disappointment when he saw that he was still angry. These three people had lost their sensitivity to information and their ability to analyze intelligence. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at the three calmly and said something that made the hair on their bodies stand on end. Tell me, in what kind of situation would I choose Tsunade? And in what kind of situation would Danzo agree to it? Ha, huh, I would agree. I would nev. 
Danzo Shimura was about to taunt Sarutobi Hiruzen for being senile when he suddenly froze. He remembered the conditions for becoming Hokage. When a Kage takes office, they must obtain the unanimous consent of the jonin of the village. He would never agree to anyone other than himself becoming Hokage, but Tsunade became the fifth Hokage. In other words, Danzo looked at Sarutobi Hiruzen in horror, and for a moment, his whole body felt like he had fallen into an ice cave. We've gotten four questions right, and if we get one more right, we'll see the video. Kakuzu moved his wrist. Several black tentacles extended from his arm, waving like octopuses, looking impatient. He couldn't wait to find out how he died. Thinking about the question just now, since that Namike's Minato guy could be resurrected, it's not surprising that others could be resurrected as well. He just wanted to know who killed him. After all, the one who could kill him must be a powerful person in the shinobi world. If it's really as he imagined, it would be an honor to die at the hands of those two. But if he died at the hands of a nobody, Kakuzu absolutely couldn't accept it. I don't know what the last question would be. I can't wait to spread the faith of my god. Haydn licked his tongue excitedly. He had turned back to his normal state. Orochimaru, who looked unscathed, glanced at him from time to time through the corner of his eye. In fact, in contrast, I would like to know what kind of art exploded when I died. Daidara's voice was full of fanaticism, as he knew his ultimate means. He believed that no one could survive such an art except for the leader. Uchiha Itachi still would be able to. Therefore, compared with who his enemy was, he was more looking forward to seeing what kind of brilliance would finally bloom with the desperate means he could only use once. It also determined whether he wanted to use that technique in the future. Hashigaki Kisame's eyes wandered around, revealing a terrible smile. He was looking forward to anything. This existence could easily kill him and bring him back to life. What kind of shock could it bring next? At the same time, Akatsuki and people from all over the shinobi world were waiting for the fifth question to appear. Everyone knew that everyone in Akatsuki had answered four questions correctly, so as long as they answered the last one correctly, they could get the reward from the space. Having witnessed the magical things the space could do, everyone was interested in the reward that the space had talked about. Dad, what do you think the exam space will give them if Akatsuki gets the last question right? Nara Shikamar looked at his father, who had been stony and silent since he returned from the Hokage's office, and asked. What do you think, Shikamaru? Nara Shikaku withdrew from his pensive state, having just been thinking about the connection between several questions in the space. If the analysis of the space were all regarded as true statements, he could guess the real participants and their involvements in the Fourth Shinobi World War. This should be the immediate reason why Zetsu and the shinobi named Kabuto were able to hold back the entire shinobi coalition with just the two of them. Resurrection of the dead. Resurrection of a large number of the dead. And that Uchiha Madara needs to use Uchiha Abito in the plan. Combined with the resurrection of the dead. Uchiha Madara wants to be revived. But with Madara's temperament, he would never be satisfied with resurrecting like an undead, so. Uchiha Madara's plan must be a true resurrection. Nara Shikaku looked at the broadcast screen above. He knew too little news, and the information he could scrutinize was too little. Nara Shikaku thought for a moment. Now, if he wanted to get more information, he could only use the video as a starting point. Hope they can answer the last question correctly. Dad, what are you thinking? Ah. Uh, nothing, I was wondering what kind of answer you would give me. In my opinion, the exam space may give them something to enhance their strength, or it may give some precious tools that we haven't seen before. Anything else? Nara Shikaku looked calm. These are things ordinary people could think of, but his son wouldn't only think of these things. Make up exam chances. Shikamaru, with a burning light in his eyes, cared about this the most. This was something the space had only mentioned once, and he kept it in mind. He wanted to know if he could take the next exam with this. Oh. Why? The expression on Nara Shikaku's face finally changed. He suddenly found that his son was lazy, but his IQ was higher than he thought. There were no recreational activities in the shinobi world, and civilian life was very boring. Coupled with the sensitivity of one's own identity, Nara Shikaku did not test Shikamaru on shinobi matters. 
Therefore, Narashikaku had always played chess with his son and trained him by playing chess. Until today, with the appearance of the live broadcast, Narashikaku felt that he had unlocked a new parenting style. It was really an effective means of education to test his own brat with the questions from the space. This is the first time this exam space appeared. Obviously, it wouldn't be the only time. Nara Shikaku nodded and motioned Shikamaru to continue. I found that both the analysis and the list of the Shinobi World list were only shown to us once. So far, the only thing that hasn't demonstrated its usefulness to us is the makeup exam chances. According to the exam space, people could be exempted from the makeup exam fee and directly participate in the exam with a makeup exam ticket. And the space has also said that people need to keep taking exams to upgrade their privileges and continue to see the Shinobi World List, which indicates that subsequent members of Akatsuki still have the opportunity to enter the exam space. Therefore, I guess whether Akatsuki answered the fifth question correctly or not, the test space will give them a makeup exam ticket as one of the prizes. Because no one is more suitable than them to show what it can do. Yes, anything else? Nara Shikaku looked at his son with relief and couldn't help but feel emotions from the bottom of his heart. This is my son. He's showing his skills as a strategist now. Nara Shikaku was about to correct some of Shikamaru's oversights when she heard Shikamaru continue. Dad, do you think that this exam space has a purpose of some kind? As far as I know, no matter what exam, it has its purpose and significance. So, what is the purpose of this exam that can predict the future? Suddenly a thought flashed in Nara Shikaku's mind. He quickly tried to catch the thought, but it was too late. Nara Shikaku recalled the conversation just now and gradually turned serious. Almost. Just a little short. Shikamaru, go on. Nara Shikaku picked up the glass of water on the board and took a sip of water. Shikamaru, this kid gave him so many surprises today. Assuming that this exam is to select people who meet certain requirements, then the exam space will not only summon Akatsuki and Jiraiya-sama. With its great ability, it could summon everyone in the entire shinobi world. Nara Shikaku held the cup to his mouth and tilted it slightly, letting the water refresh the corners of his somewhat dry mouth. He knew what his boy was going to say. As expected, Nara Shikamaru opened his mouth and said, there are two major commonalities in this group. One is that the vast majority of them are members of the Akatsuki, the second commonality is that they are all powerful shinobis. Gulp. Nara Shikamaru stared at his father. When he spoke, he felt his mouth go dry. He knew it wasn't physical, rather a mental reaction. Shikamaru cautiously pursed his lips, not knowing whether to voice his suspicions. After all, this was too sensational. Do you suspect that a certain number of strong people would induce the exam space to descend? Therefore, do you think that the five major shinobi villages are all suspected places where the examination space would appear next? No. Dad. Shikamaru looked around cautiously and leaned out about halfway towards Shikaku's ear. I'm worried that someone behind the space is manipulating it, and that person doing so is most likely related to Akatsuki. Crack. Shikaku's finger subconsciously excreted force, and the water cup in his hand shattered. The water inside it splashed all over the place. Nara Shikaku didn't pay attention to it at all. At that moment, he was looking at his son in shock. How did he come up with this? This intellect, bordering on the demonic. Nara Shikaku smiled bitterly and was about to speak when the door to the room behind him suddenly opened. A sweet-looking woman anxiously came in with a broom. First, she looked at the pair of father and son. When she saw that everything was fine, she slowly breathed a sigh of relief. Then, she swung the broom directly at Shikamaru and his father, sending them flying. You too, how dare you make a ruckus when watching the live broadcast. I'll tear you apart. In the exam space, the crowd was anxiously waiting. The fifth question finally slowly appeared above the space. Question 5, When Pain Attacked Kanahagakur, who stopped him? A. Sarutobi Hiruzen. B. Hataki Kakashi. C. Mike Guy. D. Uzumaki Naruto. E. Namikaze Minato. An extra option. Is it to increase the difficulty? The answer list that was longer than the first four questions instantly captured people's attention, and they coincidentally looked to the answer first. 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5, 5. Looking at the five options of the fifth question, they paused. They didn't expect that the format of the exam questions in the exam space would change. Does that mean that there might be additional exam questions and even more difficult ones in the future? Shit. No wonder some analysis of the second question answers only had single sentences. Daydara let out a strange yell. Every time the space analyzed the answers, there would be long explanations, but the second question had only one message about the leader's rebellion. Option C, Six Path Pain rebelled before the Fourth Shinobi World War. So, it was waiting here. Daydara secretly cursed the exam space's mother and then spoke without looking up, Leader, in the last question, you were chosen because you could beat Jiraiya. Who do you think could beat you out of the five people in this question? At this moment, the spurred Jiraiya's head was full of question marks. Since when did the value of strength become the basis for answering questions? Looking at Daydara, who kept drawing hatred, Jiraiya shook his head. All five were Kanahagakur's people, and he was familiar with all of them. But to be honest, the one that can beat pain. Let's not talk about pain, I should think about it first. Jiraiya thought differently. After all, if they couldn't even beat himself, how could they still try to stop pain, who he couldn't even beat? Sarutobi Hiruzen, too old. Hataki Kakashi, chakra is severely lacking. Might guy, he can't use jutsu either. Uzumaki Naruto, is still a child. Minato. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. If he didn't know that Minato could be resurrected in the future, he thought, there wouldn't be a correct answer to this question. What did you say? As Daidara's words fell, seven pairs of Rinnegan simultaneously settled on Daidara. A terrifying pressure that couldn't be described in words instantly swept over him. Daidara was stunned. He heard a trace of anger from the leader's words. I, I said. You could beat Jiraiya up. The seven pairs of dangerous eyes narrowed at the same time. Daidara realized something. Is our leader prideful? The next words. Seven cold voices sounded in unison, almost scaring Daidara to piss himself. He knew that because he was a member of Akatsuki, the leader wouldn't do anything to him. At most, he would threaten him as he was doing now. What's more, this was the exam space, and the last person to cause a ruckus was still being suppressed right now. But being targeted by Rinnegan, Daidara felt that the whole body was going numb. It was as if the air around him was being stripped away under the effect of Rinnegan, making it difficult for him even to breathe. It's terrible. The leader's strength is too frightening. What kind of situation did he get himself into? Daidara boasted that his strength was no weaker than that of a Kage level. Although it was far from his own sensei, compared to other Kages, even if he couldn't win, at least he wouldn't lose too quickly. But, right now. The leader's gaze alone gave him an urge to kneel. And, what the hell was this, if I resist, I will die, feeling in my gut. Not even Anoki had ever brought out this kind of feeling in him. Does it mean that? The leader's strength was far superior to Anoki. Even. Far beyond Anoki. Daidara wasn't a fool. After entering the exam space all this while, he had long since discovered who the real leader of Akatsuki was. He knew it wasn't just him, the rest of Akatsuki had found out too. It's just that these guys, one by one, were acting like they didn't know anything. That guy in the wheelchair was the real leader of Akatsuki. He manipulated the remaining six bizarre corpses, six corpses whose strength were equal to or even exceeded the Kage level. Such strength. Such power. Daidara forcibly suppressed his body's impulse to tremble. The feeling of pins and needles on his scalp hadn't gone away, letting him know that above, pain was still staring at him. It seemed that if he didn't give him an answer, he would keep staring. Daidara took a deep breath. In this situation, he certainly knew what he had to say. To be honest, he was an idiot. Fortunately, he had experience in dealing with prideful people. Hopefully, there should be no distinction between men and women in the shinobi world. At the thought of this, Daidara immediately stood up. He raised his spirits with a slightly cheerful tone. Leader, I just mean that you're at the peak of the shinobi world. At your level, only a god could beat you. Bullshit. Bootlicker. Fucking idiot. 
listening to Daidara's words, not only pain but the other Akatsuki members also froze. Conan's hand covered her mouth, blocking the giggle. Snap! The scroll behind Sasori directly fell to the ground. The crab-like puppet froze completely, as he forgot to control the puppet. At the peak of the shinobi world, only a god could beat pain. Peak of the shinobi world. Only a god could beat pain. A god. Daidara's voice seemed to have some kind of magnetic charm, like a bell ringing in his ear. In the wheelchair, Nagato's eyes erupted with a sharp light, and goosebumps rose all over his body. Yes, yes, yes. Even though he was emotionally stable as he always was, at the moment, he yelled three times in his heart. As a man, who didn't want to get drunk on power and take over the world. As a strong man, he also wanted to be able to do anything and everything he wanted. But, his body. How long has it been? How long has it been since I've felt like this? Tears appeared again in his eyes. Under his robe, Payne's hand clenched his leg in a deadly grip. Exhilaration. Excitement. Thrilled. He didn't expect that he could get such an evaluation. He didn't expect such a comment to come from the mouth of a subordinate whom he regarded as a tool. And, in front of so many people. This guy knew him well. Nagato's face almost turned red. He looked around between the group of black-robed wearing people. For an instant, Nagato surprisingly felt indebted to these guys. Except for Kakuzu, it's amazing that everyone else didn't even get a paycheck. This won't work. Things have to change. Must be changed. Daidara held his head high, but his eyes kept noticing the expression on Nagato's face. When he saw Nagato actually blushing, he slightly shook his head in his heart. The leader's mental capacity isn't too high, Sai. There were at least 100 kinds of heartfelt words at this level. Unexpectedly, this one already worked. Seeing Payne's eyes sweeping in, Daidara quickly straightened up. Payne's eyes fell on Daidara, his gaze softened, and he nodded in his mind. Although Daidara had poor strength, poor mental endurance, and poor combat experience. Daidara, you are too weak. If you encounter an unbeatable enemy, you can summon Deva Path for help. As the voice fell, Deva Path Payne stretched out his hand and tossed a scroll that landed steadily in Daidara's hand. Ah. Uh. Yeah, okay. Daidara's face suddenly showed a surprised expression. Deva Path, isn't this the one everyone else thought was the leader? Did he just, just, lent the guy to me? Oh, not lent, but I can summon him once for myself. This. That's a one-time get-out-of-jail-free card. Daidara held the scroll and mentally thanked a black-haired girl from back home. The leader is powerful. The leader is awesome. The leader is invincible. Shameless. Such shamelessness. TSK. Haydn and Kakuzu stared at Daidara, who was still cheering. They didn't expect that the situation would turn out this way. Originally, everyone was watching how ridiculous Daidara was, putting his foot in his own mouth, only to turn around and receive a one-time fast pass. Pun intended. That was the original leader. Even Orochimaru couldn't last a single move in its hands, and now his summoning scroll was given to Daidara. Fuck. If they had known that a mouth could be that powerful, what was the use of gaining strength? The undead duo looked at each other, and both saw the resentment in each other's eyes. They both had lived for so long, but this is the first time they saw this kind of thing. Sasori was shocked. We agreed to make art together, but Daidara turned into an ass kisser. And kissed it successfully. His words. At the peak of the shinobi world, only a god could beat the leader. This ass kissing was really loud. Not to mention that the leader should be in the leading role. He tried to put his name into it, and his whole core shivered with excitement and was almost damaged. At the peak of the shinobi world, only a god could beat Sasori. Sasori's body trembled again, so he hastily closed his senses to force himself to calm down. He was also a puppet, so there shouldn't be any feelings like pride. Daidara. Daidara. You're really something. Sasori sighed tiredly. Now, he finally knew what Daidara's art was about. It's not fucking clay at all. It's his mouth. That talking mouth. Daidara, you have a lot of mouths. 
It's fucking amazing. At the peak of the shinobi world, only a god could beat Anoki. Anoki nodded in satisfaction. It was good to listen to, and he liked it. Note, he's imagining it. Narrowing his eyes and gauging Daidara, who was gaining benefits, Anoki grinned. Daidara has grown up. TSK. A boot-licking ass-kisser. Below, Kuratsuchi, with a pair of long legs and a head of black hair, spat in anger. Daidara, this guy, actually said the same words she used to beg him for help. Humph. Without me by your side, you are becoming more and more skilled, Daidara. A dangerous light flashed in Kuratsuchi's eyes. She turned to look at her grandfather. She wanted to ask her grandfather to find a chance to catch him and bring him back. Catch him. Catch. Grandpa. Seeing Anoki huffing and puffing, Kuratsuchi blinked dully as she wondered what she had done wrong. Kuratsuchi, if you were half as smart as Daidara, the fourth Tsuchikage of Iwabakure would have been you. Grandpa, what did you say? Kuratsuchi instantly blew up. It was not about being the fourth Tsuchikage, but she was Anoki's granddaughter and knew how much effort the Shadow's affairs required. Besides, with her current status, no one in Iwagakura would dare to talk to her like this. But, she didn't want to be the fourth Tsuchikage. She only blew up because her grandfather said she wasn't half as smart as Daidara. How was that possible? I have a lot more intelligence in my one toe than that guy's entire head. Oh, you're not convinced. Anoki shook his head. This granddaughter of his, smart and agile but too high-minded and arrogant. Did you see what Daidara just did? TSK, what else should I see, it was flattery, who wouldn't do that? Kuratsuchi muttered. When she saw Anoki drifting to her face with a stern face, she quickly changed to a naive look. Grandpa my good grandpa just tell me, okay? I'm really worried about you. Anoki couldn't stand Kuratsuchi's spoiled act and gently stroked the top of Kuratsuchi's head. This was still effective in the shinobi world. You see, Daidara, with a mere word of flattery, not only solved his situation but also gained benefits. Anoki nodded and spoke in a serious tone, in the shinobi world, without having a lot of power, this ability to adapt to changes is extremely valuable. A great man can bend and stretch, judge the situation, know when to advance or retreat, and understand gains and losses. You are far inferior to Daidara in this matter. Anoki spoke with a few hints of warning in his voice, whether it's the shinobi world or anywhere else, rigidity is easy to break. You see the third rakage, even though he is the enemy of ten thousand people, he isn't advancing. After listening to her grandfather's long lecture, Kuratsuchi's face darkened as she turned her head and spat her tongue out. Her eyes happened to fall on the bootlicking Daidara again. Him. That good? Making grandpa think he's a great man. Kuratsuchi's eyes twitched slightly as she heard her grandfather's words of heartache and regretted Daidara's defection from Iwagakure. Since you're so strong, get your ass back here. Kuratsuchi made up her mind. She was going to find a chance to grab and drag him back from Akatsuki. Get him back so he could work as the fourth, and she could stay free. H.M. My name again. Uzumaki Naruto was somewhat excited, and he found that his name appeared a little frequently. What does this mean? I'm probably a hero. Uzumaki Naruto touched his bare chin and posed like a hero. As the number one reckless shinobi in the world, the answer to this question must be me. Uzumaki Naruto, who vowed to make a big splash, didn't notice one thing. Not far behind him, behind the building, a little head was stealthy popping out. A pair of snowy white eyes fell on him. The face exploded in a blush, and it was as if smoke began to escape from her head. Love was blind. In the eyes of others, Uzumaki Naruto's words were arrogant. In Hyuga Hinata's young mind, it was just a goal that Naruto hadn't accomplished yet. Naruto, the answer is definitely you. Ojusama, we should go back. Ah. Okay. Hyuga Hinata retracted her gaze reluctantly and followed her clan's people behind her to leave one step at a time. The posing Uzumaki Naruto didn't notice the scene happening behind him. In the space, Hashigaki Kisame was no longer listening. He was an honest man, and Daidara's words were so disgusting that he couldn't stand them. What's more, after talking for a long while, the guy hadn't repeated anything. Too damn creative. 
so powerful. He could make him, an S-class renegade shinobi feel so awkward, he was shivering. As if his whole body had countless bugs crawling on it. This Daydara had talent. If it weren't for the leader being here, he couldn't wait to tell Daydara, I, Hashigaki Kisame, would like to say, you have the strongest, talk no jutsu, in the world. Unfortunately, these classic words from Daidara's mouth weren't compliments for him, Hashigaki Kisame. Leader, as I see it, these people in the answer aren't as strong as you, but they will all be a hindrance to you. Especially option C, Mike Guy, who's on the shinobi world list. Before Kisame could finish his words, Nagato raised his hand and stopped him. His mind hadn't yet calmed down from the first question to the second question, from fright to relief, and then to the great joy of this question. His mind was now in a bit of a trance. The emotional ups and downs made him feel a little mentally exhausted. Stop thinking about the strength of these people. The corner of Payne's mouth was slightly raised. It was overwhelming confidence. Daydara is right. With my strength, these five are as good as grass in my eyes, and Kanahigakur is even worse. So, what they used to stop me should be strength. Nagato's voice was unmistakably condescending. As if on trial, he looked around at the stunned crowd and continued to speak. So, I want to reverse the thinking on this question. I don't know who the strongest is among these five people, but the weakest one should be the fourth, Uzumaki Naruto. What do you guys, think? Think? I think you're fucking crazy. Madness. How arrogant. In Kanahagakur, a group of Kanoha shinobi was shaking with anger when they heard Payne's arrogant words. As the largest shinobi village, Kanoha, numerous people wanted to move their families to Kanahagakur. This was the most powerful place in the shinobi world, the most stable place to live. Living in Kanoha, they didn't have to worry about being killed by a jutsu when they slept at night and didn't have to worry about renegade shinobis causing a riot. Kanahagakur had always been their pride. This damn Akatsuki, how dare he call Kanoha worse than grass. For a moment, both shinobis and civilians living in Kanahagakur felt angry. If it weren't for the live broadcast not conveying their voices to Akatsuki, Akatsuki would have been cursed to death. Heh, as if Akatsuki was that awesome. Aren't you still going to get killed? You guys are going to die. Why are you still acting arrogantly against my Kanoha? No. Aren't they our undercover spies? Why are they still going to attack us? Fuck it, undercover or not, come on. Let them come. Exactly. Fuck you, Akatsuki. I'll look down on you if you don't come. My house is in Kanoha, come on. I dare you to come and demolish it. Heh, not only is my home here, but the whole seven generations of my family are here. Come on, just try and kill us. Let's go to Hokage-sama and apply to invite Akatsuki for a fight. Yeah, ask Hokage-sama to invite them here and fight. No one will be spared. We will destroy them all. Go go go, everyone should apply to the third Hokage. Go go go. Go. A group of people marched toward the Hokage's office. At the same time, Sarutobi Hiruzen, in Kanahagakura's Hokage's office, was in a state of confusion. The words, attack Kanoha, filled his mind. He didn't expect pain would really attack Kanoha. Sarutobi Hiruzen was feeling a bit confused. If the strong people like the other party sneaked in silently, it would cause great disaster and loss to Kanahagakura. Unless, of course, he tried to storm in and allowed himself to discover him in the first place. Just, how was that possible? How could an organization at the pinnacle of strength have a stupid leader that would attack Kanoha head-on? Now, he could only hope that the sensory jutsu above Kanoha would first detect the opponent's presence when they intruded. With this in mind, Sarutobi Hiruzen's gaze swept toward the answers below. The first answer was himself. In the face of Akatsuki's invasion, he should take the lead, but he also knew that he was old and wouldn't be able to stop the other party. Hataki Kakashi, because Sharingan consumed his chakra constantly, he had very little chakra. He could stall the enemy with his strength, but it was difficult for him to defeat them. Might Guy, Sarutobi Hiruzen was naturally very familiar with this usually unremarkable taijutsu jonin. He knew that Might Guy practiced forbidden taijutsu and had great strength. His genin father, by virtue of this taijutsu, 
had fended off the entire seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. They were all at the level of special jonin. Against seven people with special sword abilities that were close to the kage level, even if he encountered them himself, he would still struggle. But these seven people were beaten by Might Guy's father. A few were even scared out of their wits and didn't even want to be a shinobi anymore. This showed the power of his forbidden technique. This was why Might Guy was a jonin, even though he didn't meet the requirements to be promoted to jonin. But the Kiri shinobi were only close to the kage level. Pain, the owner of these seven pairs of Rinnegan, was a real Kage level powerhouse. This was evident from the ability to put Daidara under pressure with just one look. Hmm, could he be the answer to this question? It seems that the greatest possibility would be the resurrected fourth. Saratobi Hiruzen thought so. As for Uzumaki Naruto, he directly skipped him for the same reason he excluded Kabuto. How could Uzumaki Naruto block the invasion from a Kage level powerhouse? That kid can't even use the three basic techniques well. Had he not been a Jinchuriki, had he not been the child of those two. With qualifications like his, he couldn't even get through the doors of the ninja school. Thinking of this, Saratobi Hiruzen thought of the approval on the table about Uzumaki Naruto's graduation. Pa! Shit! Saratobi Hiruzen jolted, a cold sweat running down his pale face. He ignored such an important thing. Hurry up! Quickly. Otherwise, it would be too late. Whoosh. His body directly disappeared from the seat. The next moment, Saratobi Hiruzen had jumped from the window of the Hokage's office. At the same time, two figures dressed in black and wearing animal masks appeared quietly behind him. Naruto. Where is he now? Saratobi Hiruzen didn't even notice that his voice was trembling a bit. At the village gate, our men are keeping an eye on him. Ha ha ha, good. Good, Kanoha Shinobi looking for death by going up first, Kanahagakur is really filled with stupid people. In Kimogakur, the laughter of the fourth Reikage, resounded through the Reikage's office. He couldn't wait for Saratobi Hiruzen to appear in front of him right now so that he could have a good look at that guy's ugly face. He should ask him well. How dare your Kanahagakur call yourself the number one Shinobi village? Now, he couldn't wait to drag Akatsuki, that group of people, to the center of Kanahagakur so that Kanoha would bloom red from the center. It was as if the image had appeared before his eyes, Akatsuki's leader opening up his secret technique and sending the entire Kanahagakur straight up into the sky. Hmm. I thought about it. The whole thing might be difficult, but half of it was possible. Ha ha ha. If that happened one day, I would want to see Saratobi Hiruzen's old face at that time. The fourth Reikage was a little excited. His fist clenched, loosened, then clenched again, and loosened again. Stupid people running toward death are worse than grass. Darui, do you think I would be able to say those things when I defeat that Mike guy? I see Kanoha's Mike guy, a moron seeking death, treating other taijutsu techniques like dirt. Below, Darui, who was the right-hand man of the fourth Reikage, froze for a moment. Then, he calmly said, in that case, I think another of Kanoha's great taijutsu user clan would challenge you. You mean? Hyuga. I smiled disdainfully. Taijutsu was about using fists against the flesh, using one's own muscle and force. That group of girly Jukin users was useless. Challenge me. If they aren't afraid of death, let them come. When I beat them, at the right moment, I can also use the words from that renegade Iwagakure brat. At the peak of Taijutsu, only a god could beat me, the Reikage. At the same time, in Kanoha, Hataki Kakashi had found Might Guy, not only told him about his plans but also obtained Might Guy's approval. In that case, I'll go back to report to Hokage-sama. Watching Hataki Kakashi disappear, Might Guy scratched his head. He knew that guy Abito, they attended ninja school at the same period, and they had to save him. Besides, Kakashi was his lifelong rival, and it was his duty to help them out. Arriving at Hokage's office, Hataki Kakashi was stopped by a shinobi at the door. Hokage-sama isn't in his office. Where is Hokage-sama? I have something important to report. I don't know. Hataki Kakashi didn't get the information he wanted, so he thought about it and went straight to the Nara clan's residence. Originally, he was going to report to the third Hokage first and then use the transfer order to find the Ino-Shika-Cho trio. 
But now, it was too late. Sprinting along, by the time Hitaki Kakashi arrived at Nara Shikaku's yard, he found Nara Shikaku cleaning the yard with his son. Shikaku-san. Oh. It's Kakashi. What is it? Is Hokage-sama looking for me again? A strange look flashed in Nara Shikaku's eyes as he saw Kakashi's eager look and solemn face, thinking that something had happened at Hokage's place. Shikaku-san, I need your help. Therefore, Kakashi repeated his plan to rescue Uchiha Abito and looked up, only to find Nara Shikaku's face full of dilemma. Kakashi, have you reported this matter to Hokage-sama? Not yet, Shikaku-san, I. Kakashi, I'm afraid I can't help you. Nara Shikaku's look changed. Although he smiled on the surface, his tone was distant, Kakashi-san, if there's nothing else, I'll go back with my son first. Saying that, without waiting for Kakashi to speak, he held the back of Nara Shikamaru's head and turned around. With a crack, the doors closed. Hataki Kakashi stood there for a while and turned away. Looking at Kakashi's shadow disappearing outside the door, Nara Shikaku retracted his shadow behind the door, his face a little ugly. Kakashi, there's only so much I can do for you. Nara Shikamaru looked at his silent father and pondered. Inside the exam space, Conan's eyes curved into lovely crescents, and Nagato hadn't been this relaxed in a long time. She could feel that Nagato was so relaxed for the first time since Yahiko's accident. Conan looked at the fifth question and answer list. She knew that although Nagato was a little excited, what he said was correct. Having witnessed the ferocity and horror of the demonic statue of the Outer Path, Conan didn't believe that there was an existence in the shinobi world that surpassed Nagato in terms of individual power. It's just that Conan also had some questions. If strength was not the main reason, they could stop pain, then who exactly stopped pain from attacking Kanahigakur? Or perhaps, what means did they use? Conan's brow furrowed. Compared to Jiraiya's opinion that none of them was the correct answer, she thought it was highly likely that all five were the right answer. Conan didn't know much about Sarutobi Hiruzen's generation, but his strategy was well known in the shinobi world, second only to Anoki from Iwagakure. What's more, as the only Kage that took back the seat in the shinobi world, Conan didn't believe that he wouldn't have some kind of special means. Conan knew that Hitaki Kakashi's Sharingan was from Abito, from the space's analysis, and she thought that his Sharingan also had some kind of dimension creating powers. It was possible to trap pain with that power. As for the last three options, Conan directly put them all in the preferred answer category. She thought that these three options were the most likely, and the correct answer was among them. After all, three names were the same as the ones on the Shinobi world list. Number 1 Taijutsu. Number 1 Speed. Number 1 Reckless. Conan's voice was very light. She really couldn't figure out the answer to this question. The pair of beautiful eyes glanced at the Akatsuki members, one by one. None of them met her gaze. In the end, she had to rest her eyes on Jiraiya. Sensing the inquiry in Conan's gaze, Jiraiya stroked his white hair. He initially had an answer, but after being snapped out of it by Nagato, he simply changed it. Defeating Nagato shouldn't only rely on strength. He admitted that Namike's Minato was very strong, and in terms of speed, Namike's Minato was unparalleled. If he was resurrected, Jiraiya believed that he could prevent pain from invading Kanahigakur. However, there was a neglected condition there. Time. Jiraiya quickly calculated in his heart. At this moment, his ability to analyze the information as a high-level shinobi was on full display. It was stated in the analysis of the first question that basically everyone in Akatsuki died in the end, which means that Nagato would also die. Nagato became Kanoha's undercover spy before the Fourth Shinobi World War, that is to say after Nagato became a spy, Nagato died. And I died at Nagato's hands. Moreover, the people listed, who fended off Nagato, didn't have his name in it. Some things were hidden in that stretch of time. Meaning, Pain attacked Kanoha after his death, and Tsunade became the fifth Hokage. Simply put, the future timeline was, his own death, Pain attacked Kanoha, Pain became a spy, death, the fourth shinobi world war. In this way, it explained why he had nothing to do with the resurrected Namike's Minato. Jiraiya's heart stirred. There was another piece of information hidden there. 
If Namike's Minato was resurrected and he wasn't, then either the Jutsu user actively didn't resurrect himself, or his own resurrection lacked some kind of condition. Jiraiya put this unexpected gain into his heart, ready to go out and investigate what techniques could be used to raise the dead. After comparing the conditions for the Jutsu, he could find the shinobi named Kabuto. Then about the fifth question. Jiraiya frowned. They resurrected the fourth. It must have been during the fourth shinobi world war. At that time, many hostile shinobis would be resurrected, and the allied shinobi forces fought hard. So, they began to look for their own dead shinobi to resurrect. That meant when Pain attacked Kanoha, Namike's Minato probably hadn't been resurrected. Number one Taijutsu and number one Reckless, it's really hard to choose. Jiraiya sighed and looked at Pain. Can Naruto really stop this abnormal guy? Jiraiya, do you have a different answer? Pain felt Jiraiya's gaze and suddenly asked. No. Exam space, for the last question, I choose D, Uzumaki Naruto. Nagato's voice just fell, and the white fog in the examination space suddenly shuddered. In the next moment, the fog disappeared altogether and was replaced by a huge live screen above. Fireworks were constantly exploding on the screen, but they were as vivid and beautiful as real fireworks. At the same time, pop-up windows popped up on the screen. Fifth question answered correctly. Congratulations on completing the exam. The minimum passing score is 60, the score for this exam is 100. There is no cheating and no unexpected situation in this examination. All supervisors have no objection to the results, and the results are valid. Congratulations, you got a perfect score in this exam. 100% of the exam rewards will be paid. Reward Recipient, Group You are granted an extra reward, Video Answer Analysis. One correct answer to the revised question, additional rewards granted. Reward Recipient, Conan Privilege Upgrade The number of seats in the Shinobi World list increased by 5. Privilege Upgrade Open other lists. One seat. A series of messages constantly appeared on screen, and then they were pushed off by new messages, which dazzled the Akatsuki group. Space, is there no analysis for the fifth question? Nagato's puzzled voice rang out. Every time after answering a question correctly, the space would ask whether to view the analysis. How come after answering this question correctly, it was gone? Video answer analysis permission has been granted. Normal answer analysis will be cancelled automatically. Do you want to play the answer analysis of the fifth question? Do you want to receive the reward? Do you want to open the shinobi world list? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Nagato, who was smashed by continuous information, was a bit stunned and quickly asked, can you start one by one? Yes, please select an operation. Payne took a deep breath as he looked at the crowd in the space and noticed that they were all staring at him. The urgency in their eyes had already explained everything. Exam space, please play video answer analysis. When Payne's voice just fell, the screen in front of everyone turned black. In the middle, a small circle was turning slowly. Loading, in Kanahagakur, Sarutobi Hiruzen's leaping body suddenly stopped and landed on the roof of a building, staring intently at the spinning circle of light. The exam questions predicting the future were outrageous enough, and now, this bizarre space was going to make a video presentation about the future. What the hell is it? Not only he, but countless people in the shinobi world were looking forward to it. A video that could show them the future. Did such a thing really exist? At that time, the whole shinobi world was quiet, waiting for the image to reappear on the screen. Above the exam space, Ruji spread the prepared video to everyone's screen. The initial video was originally prepared by the system, which was long and tedious. If it were played completely, not only would it take a lot of time but also reveal other information. This wasn't conducive to the opening of the next exam space, so Ruji trimmed off most of the videos the system gave him, leaving only the parts where the answers could be seen. Incidentally, it also came with background music. Just when everyone inside and outside the space was waiting anxiously, the dark screen for over 10 seconds suddenly lit up. The first thing that was revealed was the title of the video, Analysis of the Fifth Question, Analysis of the Fifth Question. Only the analysis of the fifth question. Not all the videos. 
Is it because all the videos would involve future examination questions? Some of the brighter minds had already thought of the reason for space to do so, but they couldn't consider it carefully yet. The picture above had already changed. The first thing that caught the eye was a huge village with five huge stone heads carved into the rock wall in the middle, a highly recognizable structure that made everyone recognize the place at first glance. The land of fire, Kanahagakur. Is that Tsunade? It's her. It seems that she really became the fifth Hokage. Shit, the images are turning too fast. In the midst of all the arguments, and a young child ran past. Behind her, a grey-haired old lady was leaning on a crutch and kindly looking at her little granddaughter. The picture suddenly changed, and the heartwarming scene left everyone dumbfounded. They were ready to watch a violent fight, only to see such a peaceful scene. Suddenly, sorrowful music came out of the screen, which was magnificent but extremely sad, as if foretelling something. In Kanahagakur, the group of people preparing to request something to Sarutobi Hirozen all stopped in their place. They lifted up their heads and looked at the picture above, but their faces became more and more ugly. They were all shinobis of Kanoha, who lived in Kanahagakur for many years and were very familiar with every street in Kanahagakur. Therefore, they knew of that street in the video. It's all true. The street in the corner of the video was where they were standing now. They had guessed, the scene before them was the tranquility before the storm, and all this would be broken soon. Among them, a shinobi looked at the image above and began to tremble violently. Fear, indescribable fear, was attacking him. He was the same person who had yelled, Akatsuki, come here. He felt fear because, in the picture, the old woman and the girl were his mother and daughter. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Boom. A black rocket with a flaming tail suddenly appeared on the screen and detonated at the feet of the old woman who had no time to react and was directly blown to pieces. Boiling blood like red hot rain poured over the little girl's head. The little girl was frozen in place, and before she could react, the building that was bombarded above her collapsed, directly burying her. No. No, no. Please, no. When he saw the tragic death of his mother and daughter, the shivering shinobi instantly collapsed. He sat on the ground, looking at the constantly playing video, no longer the same as when he first taunted Akatsuki. The shinobis around him could no longer care about him, staring at the screen with dead eyes. They were all Kanoha shinobis, so naturally, they understood this attack and what it represented. The attack came so suddenly that the enemy who launched it must have been in Kanahagakur. Pain and his people had entered Kanoha. As the scene in the video kept rising, the whole village appeared in the picture, and everyone realized that the explosion wasn't only in that place, but everywhere. For an instant, everyone looked at the screen in disbelief. Directly attacking the village. This was no longer an invasion. This was war. All out war. Payne and his men were starting an all out war. He, surprisingly, wanted to fight against the entire Kanahagakur with his own strength. Madness. How arrogant. At the same time, the screen in front of everyone was suddenly divided into six. There was a figure with a red cloud robe on each screen with some black sticks stuck in their bodies. One person is different. Jiraiya looked at the woman on the screen. He narrowed his eyes again and looked at the man of the Fuma clan in front of Nagato. Sure enough, he had died before pain invaded Kanoha. Jiraiya's heart sank slightly. He didn't expect to fight to the death but could only eliminate only one person from the other side. If it was to this extent. Kanoha was hardly a match. Unless, all of Kanoha's shinobis used all of their power. Jiraiya looked up with a stony expression. At this point, all the pains on the top six screens had already started to move. The only female animal path pain took the lead, raising her hand to summon several giant animals, and stepped on a summoned monster bird to attack. As soon as these summoned beasts appeared, they began to attack intensively and indiscriminately. In an instant, Kanahagakur suffered numerous casualties. The whole village became increasingly chaotic. This fifth Hokage couldn't do anything. Danzo hugged his arms and looked at the screen coldly. A touch of gloom appeared in his eyes. Foreign enemies invaded Kanahagakur, and Tsunade was so slow to react. Beside him, Sarutobi Hiruzen was also gloomy. 
he thought about it more than Danzo. He knew what this video would reveal next. It would expose everything. Kanoha's strength. Damn it. Sarutobi Hiruzen gripped his fingertips white and stared at the screen. He just couldn't help it. Otherwise, he would have already stopped this video. Meanwhile, on the screen, except for one pain who didn't move, the other pains had joined the fight, going against one Kanoha Shinobi after another. Almost at the moment of contact, the Kanoha Shinobi turned into casualties on screen. The weakest pain was at Kage level, which was extremely powerful. Ordinary people from Kanoha simply couldn't do anything. Except for delaying their advance with their lives. This scene made every shinobi in Kanoha become serious. Some of those were their comrades, some were their clansmen, and some were even themselves. Watching themselves die in the video almost drove them crazy, but they couldn't do anything about it. Now they were full of questions. Where was the Hokage? What about the fifth Hokage? As if knowing they would ask this, a seventh screen suddenly appeared on the big screen. On the screen, the fifth Hokage was grabbing the advisors, one hand each, and angrily said, I'm the fifth Hokage. You must inform Naruto to come back. No, the enemy is looking for him. We can't let him come back. Akatsuki has already gathered all the other tailed beasts. We must not let Naruto come back. The words of the two Hokage advisors shocked all the top leaders in the shinobi world. The tailed beast, the nuclear weapon of shinobi. A village with a tailed beast and a village without a tailed beast have completely different voices in the shinobi world. But shouldn't Jinchuriki, and their tailed beast, be the best protected existence in the village? How did they all get taken away? Could it be? Could it be? Akatsuki attacked every village in the shinobi world head-on, like how they were attacking Kanoha. Kanoha, was just the last one. So, in fact, in the end, the allied shinobi forces only had a few powerful shinobi left before they were stopped by both Zetsu, Kabuto, and some resurrected corpses. Thinking of this, a violent killing intent erupted from the eyes of all the Kages. Staring at the screen. If that was the truth, they must take the lead. For this reason, they didn't hesitate to let go of the hatred with other shinobi villages temporarily. At this moment, everyone who thought about it understood. The sky was changing in the shinobi world. Whether Kanoha could stop them or not, whether Akatsuki would be left alive or not, the shinobi world had a force above all the shinobi villages. In Sunigakir, Raza didn't expect so much. He could become the Kazakage solely because his bloodline limit could bring prosperity to the barren Sunigakir. The two Kazakage advisors behind him had figured everything out and just wanted to tentatively ask Raza's opinion when they suddenly heard Raza swearing, the last one attacked was Kanoha. Akatsuki, do you look down on my son Agekyur? Damn it. Damn it. Uzumaki Naruto looked at Tsunade above. He didn't know this woman, but she seemed very gentle. With his little head leaning on his hand and both his legs swinging back and forth, he waited expectantly for the next scene of the video. As for his practice, it was reasonable. Didn't he recognize Sanin Jiraiya as a teacher? It made sense to follow him out of the village to practice. I hope, when I go out, I will look cool. In Kanoha Hospital, Sasuke had a splitting headache. Clutching his own clothes with a death grip, his eyes already flushed red. Damn it, damn it, damn it. It's him again, it's him again, it's that loser again. What about me? What about me? He was so shocked by all the events today that his mind had drifted into a trance. He was just holding on now, not allowing himself to pass out. He had to see for himself that he was better than that loser. Otherwise, he was unwilling. Very unwilling. He must be the most powerful shinobi in the future. He must be. Meanwhile, as pain wreaks havoc, Kanoha's senior level shinobi begin to appear in the video one after another. The first to appear was a white-haired Hitaki Kakashi, who managed to save Irika from the hands of Deva Path Pain. Kakashi's appearance shocked everyone. Pain was too strong. So strong that they couldn't resist him, even in their own village. They couldn't even form an effective block like the Kanoha in the video. Hitaki Kakashi's appearance brought the mood of all the viewers to a climax. Hitaki Kakashi was the most iconic figure in Kanoha's new generation. His lightning release could cut through anything with one hand and a Sharingan, 
giving him his own exclusive title in the shinobi world. Everyone looked at Hataki Kakashi expectantly, hoping that he would miraculously defeat Deva Path Pain like a hero. Although, he wasn't the answer to the fifth question. Even the Kages of the other shinobi villages, who at the moment pride themselves on having everything figured out, look at the screen and hope that Kakashi would win. Although, they clearly knew that this was impossible. Birth Release Hataki Kakashi didn't let them down. After saving Irika, he hit the ground directly with both hands. With a slight rumble, an earth release wall directly surrounded Deva Path Pain. Is he going to fight this pain? Keeping himself and pain in an encirclement for the sake of others, Kakashi is so awesome. As expected of Kakashi-sama, Kakashi-sama go. Outside the video, the voice cheering for Kakashi suddenly stopped. After putting the earth release into effect, Kakashi was directly struck in his left shoulder by a black stick from pain. Kakashi was hit hard. However, instead of retreating, he advanced, and his right hand was ablaze with lightning, the lightning release, Chidori, that made him famous in the shinobi world. However, he didn't know that the black stick attack on pain wasn't only a physical attack, it could also disrupt the victim's chakra. Deva Path Pain easily escaped Kakashi's attack. Kakashi didn't give the other party a chance to react. He condensed lightning release again and released continuous lightning attacks. For a while, thunder and lightning raged across the screen. The ear-splitting thunder was accompanied by increasingly heavy music, like a sorrowful hymn. It's bouncing off. All the thunderbolts are bouncing off. How is that possible? What is that? He didn't make seals at all. Wait, look at the third screen. He's backing up that pain, oh no, Kakashi is in danger. Watching the screen, the creepy fat man swiftly flew and arrived in front of Deva Path, looking at Kakashi with a sly smile, everyone's heart sank. Kakashi was already exhausted by one opponent, and now with two, Kakashi had no chance of surviving. Everyone shook their heads in disappointment. It seemed that the miracle they were looking forward to wouldn't happen. Kakashi wasn't the first Kanoha elite to change the tide of battle, but the first Kanoha elite to die. Just as everyone fell silent, a surprised voice suddenly sounded, look. He took off his clothes. What? Taking off clothes? They looked at the other, only to see a face grow on each side of Azura Path's side profile, and four arms grew on both sides of his body. With three faces and six arms, clothes would only affect his strength. Azura Path ripped off the red cloud robe he was wearing, and that action was incomparably spontaneous and cool. If they strip, they will die. I know, it must be Hitaki Kakashi having another powerful technique, right? Turning the battle around. Could it be that he rebounded from death and killed this ugly guy? Azura Path, he took off his clothes. In the space, the Akatsuki crowd looked at Azura Path with strange eyes. Even Nagato's face was somewhat unnatural. New Week. Vote Power Stones guys. Under the intense speculation of countless people, the video continued. Deva Path was behind Azura Path, and all of Hitaki Kakashi's subsequent lightning attacks were dodged by him because of their shared vision. Deva Path raised his hand, and an invisible attraction exploded, controlling Kakashi to bump into the blade on Azura Path's arm. Boom. Boom. At this moment, two huge fists fell from the sky and crashed to the ground. The earth release displayed by Hataki Kakashi was like a fragile eggshell. It swept around like a wave of the earth under the giant fists. Deva Path's look changed, repulsion instantly appeared around his body. He was being swept back by the wave of earth, avoiding the huge fists that fell from the sky. The giant fists rapidly shrunk, leaving Azura Path that was deformed and scrapped. Then two figures leaped down from above. They were two fatties, one large and one small. Dad? Huh? Is that me? In Kanahagakur, Akimichi Choji even forgot to chew the food stuffed into his mouth and stared blankly at the figures. Is that who I'll grow up to be? Handsome. Choji, would he be that strong in the future? The pale blonde ponytailed Yamanaka Ino looked at her companion in shock. She couldn't imagine that her gluttonous teammate would be so powerful in the future. Although it was with the help of a sneak attack by Uncle Akimichi Choza, it couldn't change the fact that they pummeled and killed a Kaga-level powerhouse. 
Dead, dead. In the exam space, Haydn looked at pain exaggeratedly, no way. It's not really because of taking off his clothes, is it? Hearing Haydn's words, all the Akatsuki members subconsciously grabbed onto their red cloud robes. Although they all couldn't believe it, but. It took no more than ten seconds after Ashura Path took off his clothes, then, death. This. Isn't this too coincidental? That, Bayaku, do you have any more uniforms for the organization? They want some more too. Note, Bayaku equals Conan's codename, Kakuzu pointed to the four ghostly. Pale masks on his back and controlled the four masks to nod their heads. Speechlessly looking at Conan for a while. Um, Bayaku, I've been in the organization for half a year. Shouldn't I have a spare? Daidara raised his arm. The tongue on his palm extended out of his palm as if to say, one more please. I don't. Conan spoke with a cold face. She glanced at the severely deformed Azura path and made up her mind. When she had time, she should reserve more sets of clothing for the organization. She couldn't spend all her money on explosive tags. Haydn heard Conan's answer, touched his chin, and then turned his eyes to Abito, who still couldn't move. Hey, what are you doing? Abito had calmed down a bit by now and was immediately shocked by Haydn's action when he saw him peeling off his clothes with a scythe. Don't make so much noise. Anyway, when we get out later, the leader won't let you go. You shouldn't waste this outfit. It's a little dirty, but I don't mind it. In the video, Deva Path's gaze didn't fluctuate, looking at the three people who attacked him crazily, as if a human being was watching an ant trying to bite him. Shinra Tensei. Boom. A wave exploded, and the three people who besieged Deva Path were instantly blasted away. The three men climbed up and constantly attacked Deva Path and finally found that the Shinra Tensei used by Deva Path had fatal defects. The Jutsu had a five second cooldown period. Under the constant attacks of Hitaki Kakashi, Akimichi Choza, and Akimichi Choji, the three finally joined forces to control Deva Path. Hitaki Kakashi directly condensed Chidori and charged at Deva Path. This scene shocked everyone who watched the live broadcast and heard sharp sounds of lighting. They finally showed an expression of relief. Finally, pain will fall. Kanoha's technical expert Kakashi is really good. He could even analyze such important information in battle. With a five-second interval, as long as the attack is sustained, there is no effect even with his sealless jutsu. Now, six people have fallen, too. With such strength, it seems that they aren't strong enough to be Kanoha's enemy. Could they have some other means? Have you noticed that this pain hasn't taken his clothes off? In the discussion, Hataki Kakashi's Chidori was about to stab Deva Path. Suddenly, a familiar figure fell from the sky and took the initiative to shield Deva Path. It's him. Kakashi was shocked that the arriving figure was Azura Path, who Choji and his father had just smashed a few moments ago. It's just that, at this point, even if the Deva Path had just been smashed, his clothes were still on. They should have guessed. How did this happen? Shit, isn't he dead? A group of people spoke angrily. They felt that their IQ had been insulted. They just saw it with their own eyes. Kanoha's fat duo killed him, and his body cracked. Now, he had reappeared intact. What's more, the other party actually absorbed Kakashi's Chidori. How is this possible? Watching Kakashi use Sharingan's power twice to save Akimichi Choji, who was passing on information, and finally die of exhaustion, they suddenly felt a sense of sadness. Even a shinobi like Kakashi, who was famous, was no match for the other side. The other side seemed like he was just playing Kakashi from beginning to end. Tsunade said that Akatsuki appeared to find Uzumaki Naruto. Gulp. Does it mean that they, at the moment, aren't using their full strength? What? That's impossible. Totally impossible. Everyone was startled but then shook their heads quickly, denying the answer. No way. There was no way that such a monster could exist in the shinobi world. If he still had hidden strength, this was a surprise comparable to seeing the shinobi god. However, when people thought of Pain's calm appearance, a bad feeling rose spontaneously in their hearts. He, may really have that kind of strength. On the other hand, Choji, who escaped, passed on the information that Kakashi exchanged with his life to the fifth Hokage, Tsunade. 
Tsunade directly summoned the giant slugs and passed out the intelligence by using the slugs. At the same time, on another screen, Kanoha's torture department appeared, using a powerful seal technique to seal the animal path's huge summon beast. Marino Ibiki directly trapped the animal path, trying to get information. This deeply moved the shinobi crowd watching the broadcast, thinking that the very powerful Kanoha shinobi would complete a kill. As a result, Marino Ibiki didn't expect that animal path not to feel any pain, so she didn't fear torture at all, and he was beaten by her. Once again, the free animal path called out huge summon beasts and entered the battle. With the re-entry of the giant summon beasts, the battle instantly escalated. Kanahagakur became more and more chaotic. A violent battle was fought, a powerful jutsu raged, leaving everyone watching trapped in a bout of bleary-eyed confusion. Everyone was excited by the video on the live broadcast. No matter the powerful Kanoha or the more powerful Akatsuki, the mysterious veil was torn off before them at this moment. Especially for the civilians in the shinobi world, the live broadcast invited them into the shinobi world. The battle was still going on. On the fourth screen, the wandering Naraka path was defeated by Kanoamaru with a ball-shaped sealless jutsu, which surprised everyone. But before the crowd was further shocked, Kanoha's deva path had already chased the fleeing Choji to Tsunade. Kage level confrontation. The battle rating instantly climbed. Countless people nervously watched Deva Path and Tsunade confronted each other. Tsunade, as the fifth Hokage, was surrounded by four Umbu. But everybody could see that she had lost momentum. Compared to Deva Path's heavy atmosphere, the calmness shown by Kanoha's fifth Hokage looked fake. Because she was a Kage, she had to pretend to be calm. The fifth Hokage doesn't look very strong. Why did she only appear now? Is she worthy of being a Kage? She doesn't deserve it. If third Hokage-sama were here, he would meet the enemy the moment he showed up, and we wouldn't have lost a lot of Kanoha shinobi. Several villagers in Kanoha watched the video with tears in their eyes. The familiar scenes in the video made them panic, wanting to substitute the village leader with another one. In their hearts, Hokage-sama was an invincible being, a god. As soon as they appeared, these people who disturbed the village would be immediately suppressed. But as the fifth, Tsunade, didn't deserve to be Hokage at all. She cowered behind Kanoha's shinobi until her opponent reached out to her, and she did nothing but summon her beast. How did such a person become Hokage? It can't be, just because she was a student of the third Hokage-sama. At that time, looking at Tsunade, who confronted Deva Path, the entire Kanahagakur was furious. Sarutobi Hiruzen took a puff of his pipe, and his finger subconsciously tapped on the stem. Unlike ordinary shinobi, how could he not know the duties of a kage? What Kanoha needed at that time was a brilliant mind, not a muscle-headed leader. Senju Tsunade did a good job, and she deserved the name of Hokage. It's just. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at the six figures in the picture and sighed with a trace of guilt in his heart. The fighting had been going on for so long, and besides the people of the Ino Shika Cho group, Sarutobi Hiruzen only saw one of his family members, Hataki Kakashi. People should know that Kanoha had 30 to 40 clans and families, large and small. With the strength shown by these pains, a clan could bury them by bringing out their few jonins. But who would have thought that these families would let Akatsuki wreak havoc in Kanahagakur? Internal fights actually affected the external fight. Do each of these families think they were Shimura Danzo? Stupid. Sarutobi Hiruzen's eyes flashed a trace of coldness. He didn't care whether those groups of people had any opinions about Tsunade's coming to power or why he only saw Kanoamaru. Some people should be given a visit soon. I am, do you think we should move? Ichiraku Tuchi. No, Raman Ichiraku's shop owner, Tuchi, slapped his palm, narrowing his eyes, looking at his beautiful young daughter, and asked aloud. He came to Kanahagakur with Ayam because Kanoha was the largest shinobi village, which was very safe, but now it seemed that Kanoha wasn't too safe. Just now, he saw that the three-headed dog almost accidentally destroyed Raman Ichiraku's store in the video. He had already seen that Kanoha shinobi had done their best to some extent, but Akatsuki obviously wasn't going all out. In order to get news of Uzumaki Naruto, they wouldn't directly kill everyone, but when they found information about Uzumaki Naruto, they would definitely kill everyone. Maybe. 
one move could blow Kanoha flat. No, no way. Kanoha is too dangerous. I'd better take Ayam with me. As if to verify his guess, Deva Path asked Tsunade for Naruto in the video, but Tsunade directly refused. At this moment a Hokage's duty was fully reflected in her. She was the Hokage that had to protect everyone in Kanahagakur, not one person. At this moment, countless people began to understand, and some of them understood Senju Tsunade. She didn't show up because she had to do more important things. In fact, her heart was heavier than anyone else. Just as the crowd somewhat understood Tsunade, the scene took a sharp turn for Kanoha. Human Path suddenly appeared behind Shizun and directly launched a soul-sucking technique to capture Shizun's memory and kill her. Pain got the news he wanted, so he didn't care. He decided to use the Shinra Tensei to erase Kanoha from the shinobi world in one fell swoop. At this moment, let the world feel pain. Glancing at the frozen Senju Tsunade, Deva Path turned around coldly, his body drifting up slowly. Tsunade looked up and saw the dazzling light behind Deva Path. All she could see was a dark figure with a big shadow and two strange Rinnegan. At the same time, all the scenes on the live broadcast combined into one, and everyone's attention was focused on Deva Path. What is he going to do? Why is he flying? Questions kept appearing in their minds, but before they could understand, the answers had already appeared. Shinra Tensei Deva Path was blazing high in the air, and an invisible repulsion force spread rapidly with him at the center of the circle. The repulsion ball expanded rapidly and instantly touched the ground. The Kanoha building beneath Deva Path's feet bore the brunt of the huge pressure and was instantly destroyed. Boom! 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 With the constant enlargement of the repulsion circle, explosions sounded, and Kanoha's buildings began to disappear. Not collapse, but disappear. As if erased. Not even the remains of the building. The repulsion passed by, and everything in Kanahagakur turned to rubble, leaving only the solid ground as if it were a desert. Countless people began to die, whether civilians or shinobi, whether genin or chunin. They could not resist this miraculous force and were destroyed instantly. Only the jonin could rely on speed to avoid the expanding force. Outside the live broadcast, watching Kanoha's Hokage rock with the five Hokage's faces symbolizing the glorious history of Kanoha were destroyed one by one, silence fell. With sullen faces, the whole atmosphere in the village was depressing. They thought that they took Akatsuki seriously enough, but to their surprise, it was still not enough. Far from enough. The fourth Rakage's face swelled with blue veins. He was secretly pleased when he first saw Kanoha destroyed and even joked with Derui. But now, even if the prophecy came true, and Akatsuki destroyed Kanoha with one jutsu, he didn't have any joy and even wanted to slap his forehead. I just had to run my mouth. This power, this godlike force, couldn't be stopped by Kanahagakur, nor could his Kumogakur or any of the other shinobi villages defeat it. This wasn't a level a shinobi could achieve. Although he was unwilling to admit it, he couldn't admit it, but in his mind, this power shouldn't belong to a human. Smack! The pipe in Sarutobi Hiruzen's mouth fell from his stunned mouth. He didn't pick it up, and the two umbu behind him didn't stop it. They let it fall from the roof and hit a passerby's head. Sarutobi Hiruzen's eyes were dull, and he couldn't wait to slap himself. Is this a kaga level shinobi? Is this a kaga level that could be overcome by mere jonin? What nonsense! A single person could erase a shinobi village from the map. How could a kaga level shinobi do that? Even a sage couldn't do that. Sarutobi Hiruzen felt as if he had lived his whole life in vain. Thanks to that, he has been angrily scolding Danzo for being short-sighted, but now it seemed that he was the blindest one. In Kanoha streets, countless people sat down on the ground, their legs were weak, and even a smell appeared from their lower bodies. It's horrible. It's terrifying. How did Kanoha attract such a terrifying guy? Uzumaki Naruto. Where's Uzumaki Naruto? Why hasn't he come yet? Didn't you say he would come to save us? Does he have to wait for us to die? A middle-aged woman on the streets of Kanoha wailed in utter shock at the tragic state in the live broadcast. Just hand over Uzumaki Naruto, sacrifice him alone for the safety of everyone in Kanoha. Why don't you hand that monster over? He hasn't come yet, 
he must be taking revenge on us. A monster is a monster. Such a cruel heart. We used to be a little unkind to him, and now he wants us to die. And the fifth Hokage, she must be sheltering the monster. Sacrificing our lives for the safety of the monster. TSK. Tsunade, this woman is too dirty. Her Senju family is dead, so she wants to bring Kanoha down with them. How did a person like her become a Hokage? That's it. The life of a monster for the peace of an entire village. Even if the monster dies, he should contribute to Kanoha. He is a sin himself. If he dies for us, he can purify his sins. Yes, yes. At this moment, the crowd's emotions completely erupted. What they had just concluded in their hearts about Senju Tsunade was now all transformed into anger. Conspiracy. This is a conspiracy. Otherwise, why not hand over Uzumaki Naruto? They weren't sure about the special quality of Uzumaki Naruto, but if he was just an ordinary civilian, would Hokage-sama have sheltered him so much? No. Definitely not. The woman's voice was very infectious and penetrating, which made some of the scared silly people wake up and quickly join the crusade. Humans, once again, embodied their blindness and narrow-mindedness. Some shinobi heard the shouts, then looked at each other. They knew better, but even if Naruto had that kind of identity. If Hokage was the first to know that pain was that destructive. For the sake of the village, why was she still persistent? They don't know, and to their worry, the fifth Hokage might not know that future answer either. At the entrance of Kanahagakur, Uzumaki Naruto was looking at the video with some boredom. Why hasn't he appeared yet? I wouldn't have gotten lost, would I? This made Naruto a little worried. Naruto didn't care about the destruction of Kanahagakur in the video. Because he had already thought of the solution. After all, the exam space said that he would stop them, and if this really happened in the future, it would be better for him to come back earlier. Suddenly, a loud ruckus came, and Naruto heard someone calling his name. Naruto's heart rejoiced and was just about to run in the direction of the sound. Is it because everyone knows that I saved them in the future and wanted to thank me? When he fully heard the content of the voices, Naruto suddenly stopped. He discovered, to his disbelief, that those people were going to hand him over. They wanted to trade his life for their safety. The reason was. I deserve it. At this moment, Naruto's fortitude was completely broken, tears flowed silently, and he looked around in confusion. Now, he wasn't the genius Naruto who hadn't appeared in the video. Now, he was just the loser in Konoha. He pretends to be optimistic, and he often played pranks just to attract people's attention and make them acknowledge him. What did I do wrong? Why should he be welcomed with verbal abuse and beatings when he was young, why should all other children have friends, and he didn't? Why should he only eat noodles and drink expired milk that would upset his stomach? Naruto didn't know the answer, and he didn't know who to ask. He was born without parents and didn't know who they were, but he was still a child. Tears were surging. He didn't know, he didn't understand. He had tried his best not to trouble others. He just wanted approval from others. Was it so difficult? For a long time, his confused eyes looked at the screen above. Was it necessary to save such a village? At this moment, in the middle of the picture, Deva Path Pain descended from the sky and landed in the sunken pit. Decades of Kanoha, in his hands, went up in smoke. This gave him an inexplicable feeling. Swish. 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 Series of figures standing on the edge of the crater, looking down at the two panes below. Kanoha's forehead protector on their heads reflects the light of the sun, and anger in their eyes. These people. Damn it. Damn it. On the roof, Saratobi Hiruzen gritted his teeth and looked at the figure on the edge of the pit. He really didn't expect these people to stand up after Kanoha was destroyed. Especially when he saw Danzo with one eye and a large number of Kanoha Umbu behind him, his anger instantly broke through the sky. Danzo, at this time. He isn't dead. Damn it. The clan's not doing their job is one thing, but you Danzo. Once again. Once again, when the village was in danger, he chose to stand by. Your route, is it just to target the clans within Kanoha? Sarutobi Hiruzen clenched his fists. Now, he just wanted to turn back and fight with Danzo. 
Now he was full of anger. He couldn't wait to make an appointment with all the family patriarchs and give them a violent whack on the head. But he couldn't. All of this hadn't happened yet. If he did that, he would lose his dignity as the Kage. Saratobi Hiruzen closed his eyes, and his chest went up and down several times. When he opened them again, his mood had calmed down a lot. At this time, there were new changes in the video. Whoosh! A figure leaped down from above and a slender leg smashed viciously at Deva Path Pain. Pain leaped gently and easily escaped Tsunade's attack. Bang! Tsunade's leg smashed on the ground, and a deep gully of two or three meters wide instantly tore forward. Kanoha, not a place for you to run wild. At the moment, Tsunade was covered in scars and wobbled, as if she was about to fall down at the next second. You can't stop me. Deva Path's eyes were indifferent, and his tone didn't fluctuate at all, as if destroying Kanoha was just a trivial matter. There are only two of you left now, we outnumber you. Tsunade's face was resolute. In her opinion, the other party had performed such a horrible technique, his body must have lost most of its chakra. Now was the best chance to avenge Kanoha. With her hands in a seal, she raised them to her eyebrows, and Senju Tsunade softly chanted. In seal. Release. Whoosh. A strange pattern suddenly appeared on her face. Stimulated by this secret technique, every cell in Tsunade's body began to produce chakra at no cost. In addition, Tsunade's wounds healed quickly at the speed visible to the naked eye. After finishing everything, Tsunade looked up and looked at pain. Today, she had to kill both of them. Seeing the scene in front of her, Tsunade's pupil shrank with a jerk. Six. Six pains. Those pains had come back to life. Off screen, people of the shinobi world saw it clearly. Just now, the pain who hadn't made a move summoned a monster and then saw all the other pains who should have died in battle come out of the monster's mouth. At the moment, six pains gathered together. What is this technique? Damn it, doesn't that mean that the other pain could never be killed without killing that one pain first? With this powerful enemy, Kanoha is in danger. While the others were chattering, the six pairs of cold, unfeeling eyes on the screen stared at Tsunade, which made her heart sink completely. It seems that today is a terrible day. Tsunade smiled bitterly, but she felt more relaxed than ever before. Kanoha was gone, so was the chain that tied her. What remains was only the duty of the Kage. As it happens, in Kanoha, all the Kages died in battle. Tsunade was determined to die. She took a deep breath and assumed an aggressive stance. Ashura Path looked at Tsunade, who was stubbornly resisting, and his feet stomped hard. Spider web like cracks spread out from the bottom of his feet as he used the recoil force to charge directly at Tsunade. His weapon materializes on his arm, and this blow, if it hits, would kill her in one hit. Ashura Path's figure bursts out extremely fast, so fast that Tsunade simply couldn't react. The strong gale from the other party's fist had already stung her face. Feeling the force on from her opponent's fist, Tsunade's face changed. No. There's no way to avoid it. Swish. In this life-or-death moment, an orange-red figure descended from the sky, like a god descending from heaven, blocking in front of Tsunade. He calmly looked at Ashura Path's attack and shot out a fist. The fist was firmly thrown at Ashura Path. In Tsunade's eyes, the fist was extremely slow, as if it was a light and floating wisp. But in Ashura Path's eyes, the fist was extremely fast and came crashing down on him with the force of ten thousand thunderbolts. He was horrified and tried to dodge, but found himself unable to do so. He was locked in. He couldn't dodge, only blocking hard. In Ashura Path's vision, that fist grew larger and larger, eventually taking up his entire line of sight. Boom! At the moment of contact with the fist, a huge force ran through Ashura Path, and it was too late for Ashura Path to react. He was smashed to the ground with a fist. Bang! The severely deformed head was directly embedded into the ground, and the iron sticks used to transmit chakra were broken. Bang! 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 Just after Naruto's blow killed the Ashura Path, three huge figures with weapons crashed down from above, splashing smoke all over the sky. 
When the smoke dispersed, people could see clearly that 300-meter-tall toads, of different colors, were in the shape of a line, protecting the figure in the middle. Behind him was the stunned Senju Tsunade, at the foot, lies the distorted Ashura path, surrounded by three summoned beasts. At first glance, they were enormous and shocking. Naruto. The visitor was none other than Uzumaki Naruto, who had learned sage mode. Behind Naruto, Tsunade looked at his billowing orange cloak and saw illusory images. Two figures inexplicably emerged in her mind and coincided with Naruto. It was the fourth Hokage Namikaze Minato and Jiraiya. Tsunade felt infinite emotion in his heart. The boy who could be dealt with one finger back then, has now grown to such a level without her realizing it. Tsunade Obeisen, go rest, I'll take care of this. Naruto smiled back at Tsunade. Tsunade was about to say that she could still fight when she suddenly saw Naruto's yellow-black pupils and orange-red eye shading. Hmm, be careful. Tsunade took a deep look at Naruto. She knew that staying here would only drag Naruto down, and Naruto now, was much stronger than her. Using a slug to transmit information to Naruto, Tsunade jumped up and went to the top. Those eyes. In the exam space, Jiraiya couldn't believe his eyes when she saw Naruto's orange eye shading. Naturally, he understood what state Naruto was in at that moment, but that was what left him in disbelief. However, both the three toad brothers behind Naruto and the energy running mode in Naruto's body at the moment, let Jiraiya know that Uzumaki Naruto inherited the sage technique from Mount Mayaboku. What shocked him was not that they passed the technique to him. He was shocked that, this boy's qualifications were better than him. In sage mode, he couldn't gather nature energy to himself, but also required the cooperation of the two toads, and his nose would also have the characteristics of a toad. And this kid, except for his pupils and eye shading, had no other change. It's simply a natural sage body. Jiraiya licked his lips with excitement. He couldn't wait to run back to Kanoha now, hug the boy in his arms and kiss him. He was tired of looking for the boy in the great toad sage's prophecy. As a result, this boy was in Kanoha. Minato, you have a good son. Jiraiya looked at the figure with deep emotion. If it weren't for Gamabunta being there, he wouldn't have recognized this boy. Surprisingly he didn't have his mother's red hair. Are Minato's genes that powerful? Is he the one who would defeat me? Nagato looked at Uzumaki Naruto with great interest. He was ready to see how this little guy would defeat him. Just now, as the video played, he also concluded so. But no matter what he thought, he would have made the exact same choices as he did in the video. As for the rest of the Akatsuki, they had no energy to pay attention to Jiraiya and the leader's expression at the moment. They were stunned by the scenes just now. They knew their leader was not human, but they never thought that he would be so inhuman. Too damn freaky. Compared to him, they are embarrassed to call themselves S-Class Renegade Shinobi. Weird and powerful Jutsu, the ability to infinitely resurrect. Not to mention Kanoha, even all the other Akatsuki members together, might not be able to defeat him. On the other side, Orochimaru completely panicked. Sweat ran down his face, and the clothes on his back were wet with cold sweat. He was now very tense and knowing the terror of the leader, he was already planning his escape route for later. After all, he was someone who rebelled from Akatsuki. Cool. So awesome. Too awesome. Uzumaki Naruto clenched his hands into fists and looked above at his future self, with two gleaming eyes. The handsome blonde hair, billowing coat, and huge summoned beasts, all made him extremely excited. This was who he wanted to be. This was the future he wanted. Uzumaki Naruto's eyes were filled with tears again. He couldn't wait to have that kind of strength right now, to teach those who despise him a lesson. He was a hero. The hero who shattered that big fat man with a punch. Watching the video of himself taking the lead in charging towards the enemy, Uzumaki Naruto covered his mouth with both hands for fear of screaming out in too much excitement. He was worried about himself, who was going to fight that person face to face, and at the same time, he was looking forward to his performance. This conflicting feeling drove him crazy. Why? Why? How could that loser be so strong? What about me? What about me? What about me? Uchiha Sasuke, come out. In the hospital, Uchiha Sasuke's eyes were getting redder and redder, 
watching Uzumaki Naruto take the lead, but also having the strength to kill the terrible enemy with one blow. Uchiha Sasuke's entire body trembled. Please, come out quickly. Don't disgrace the Uchiha clan. On this side, Uchiha Sasuke overcame his body's urge to faint with great perseverance, while on the other side, Hyuga Hinata was the opposite. Hyuga Hinata followed her clansmen back home to find her parents and her sister, Hanabi, watching the live broadcast while eating their meal. Father, I'm back. Hmm, come and sit. Wunchen, Wunchen, come here, come here. Hinata respectfully saluted her parents, and then knelt down beside Hanabi. Hyuga Hayashi glanced at the shy young Hinata with a flash of disappointment in his eyes. Hanabi had already shown her talent in Taijutsu at a young age, while Hinata. A trace of heartache flashed in Hyuga Hayashi's eyes. His own eldest daughter, who will most likely be carved with Junjutsu, was simply not fit to be a shinobi. Eat your lunch. Shaking his head, Hyuga Hayashi decided not to think about these things and turned to watch the live broadcast. Eh. Naruto Kuen. Hyuga Hinata looked up, only to see Naruto in a cool pose. Wunchen, Wunchen, why is your face so red? Hanabi looked at her sister as if she had discovered a new continent. Wunchen, your head is smoking. Ah. Father, father, Wunchen fainted. The sage technique. Animal path made hand seals. Three huge summoned beasts appeared with a bang. The three toads behind Uzumaki Naruto saw the situation. They directly pulled their weapons out and rushed up. Six giant beasts frantically fought each other, but it was clear the three beasts summoned by Animal Path were no match for the Toad brothers from Mount Mayaboku. It was only a matter of time before they lost. Naruto didn't bother with these minions, his entire focus was on pain across him. Knowing all the information, he was very angry now. His fists clenched once again. Naruto coldly raised his head, and a strong killing intent welled up in his eyes. Whoosh! Naruto's figure disappeared from his original place. No, it didn't disappear, but his speed was too fast. People's eyes could no longer capture his figure. Once again, Naruto appeared in front of Preta Path, and his fist swept past Preta Path. Although he didn't touch Preta Path, Preta Path seemed to have suffered a heavy blow. The person freakishly spun a few times in mid-air and slammed to the ground without being able to make a sound. What? What's going? On here? Mithyun, in the Land of Iron, looked in horror at the Uzumaki Naruto on screen. His attack didn't touch the other party at all, but the other party was hit hard as if Uzumaki Naruto had an invisible weapon in his hand that hit the enemy. Mithyun's heart slightly sank. The threat of an invisible attack was fatal to a fighter who could only strike in close quarters. Is this sage mode? Senjutsu Chakra, this boy really accomplished it. Jiraiya's eyes seemed to burst with light. Although he couldn't see Naruto's Senjutsu Chakra, he knew that it was Senjutsu Chakra. Only Senjutsu Chakra could have such a strange way of attacking. Moreover, Jiraiya was sure that this boy's understanding of natural energy had surpassed him when he saw him throwing off the enemy with another blow. This made Jiraiya somewhat speechless. He didn't know whether to be happy or sad. The students he taught were better than him, one after another. Sage Art, Wind Release, Raisin Shuriken. A punch blew Preta Path away. Uzumaki Naruto didn't give the opponent a chance to react, his right hand was held high, and a light blue raisin shuriken was thrown to the other panes. This was the most lethal jutsu he had at the moment. Under the power of the Senjutsu Chakra, the potency was even more terrifying. Looking at the rapid sweeping attack, pain could only dodge separately. But they didn't expect that the oncoming raisin shuriken suddenly paused, instantly increased in speed, and moved toward the crowd. Human Path, standing at the forefront, didn't even have time to react before being cut at the chest and falling to the ground in two halves. Boom! That's not all. After cutting human path, the raisin shuriken instantly exploded. Chaotic chakra swept outward, forcing the Akatsuki members to continue to dodge. This. 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 Looking at Uzumaki Naruto's performance, as if it was all easy for him, everyone in the shinobi world was shocked. Uzumaki Naruto, is it that strong? Less than two minutes after he appeared, half of the six pains were destroyed by him. 
A punch killed the Azura path that attacked Tsunade, a second punch killed the Preta path that could absorb Jutsu. Then, he released a powerful sealless Jutsu and tore up human path. This performance was even cooler than the fifth Hokage, Tsunade-sama. This strength was stronger than the fifth Hokage, Tsunade-sama. Surely it didn't mean that. He was the sixth Hokage carefully cultivated by Kanoha, right? For a time, everyone who saw the live broadcast noted down the name Uzumaki Naruto firmly in their hearts. Everyone knew that in the shinobi world, a rising star was blossoming in its own brilliance. At this moment, each of the Kage of the other shinobi villages seemed to feel uncomfortable, as if they had eaten flies. This feeling. It's like. The shinobi world list was filled with people from that village, not their own village. They couldn't abduct him. They couldn't kill him while he hasn't grown up yet. So. Just watch him grow. Pa. In Iwagakure, Anoki slapped himself in the face. Damn it. I should have kept my mouth shut. Ten minutes ago, he just said that if the fourth Hokage were to be resurrected, it would be better to let that Uzumaki Naruto boy grow up quickly. After all, at that time, he still thought Namike's Minato's speed was the most problematic. Right now, it was the both of them. With the strength shown by Uzumaki Naruto, let alone win the Fourth Shinobi World War. He could break through the Fourth Shinobi World War, back and forth. Would it be difficult? Yes. Would it be difficult? Of course not. Anoki once again felt that Kanoha was full of talented people. Suddenly, his eyes were raised, and he saw Kuratsuchi, who looked a bit agitated below. M. Anoki hesitated for a moment. Then his gaze revealed a flash of determination. Now that Akatsuki had been exposed in advance, the Allied Shinobi forces wouldn't become a reality any time soon. By then, Kanoha would dominate, his Iwagakure would have nothing left. There's no time to hesitate. If he hesitated, he would be defeated. Sending a woman wouldn't be in vain. Although it's difficult and the chances were slim, with that guy's future achievements, Anoki thought it was worth a try. What if Kuratsuchi brought back a shinobi genius grandson-in-law for him? Thinking of this, Anoki put on a kind face, approached Kuratsuchi, and touched her head affectionately. Kuratsuchi, about that Kanoha Chunin exam. Originally, our Iwagakure wasn't going to participate, but I thought that although you have the strength of a Chunin, you haven't been officially promoted. So, I'm going to Kanoha this time, and I want to ask Kanoha for a place in the exam. What do you think? It's no use, Naraka Path isn't defeated yet, and Pain is unharmed. In the exam space, sensing the gaze of the Akatsuki crowd, Nagato spoke outright. He also didn't expect that the other party could fight so well. Should I say that he's really worthy of being from the same clan? However, he shouldn't be able to make any waves. Nagato's eyes flickered, if he guessed correctly, he was about to let Deva Path use that technique. With that technique, he should be able to capture Naruto and collect the Kyubi. What was the problem? Why did I turn to Kanoha's side? Nagato's heart was full of doubts. Ho ho ho. Ha ha ha. Oh, oh. In Kanahagakur, Uzumaki Naruto was excited and kept jumping like a fool. His eyes fixed on the screen, not wanting to miss a single frame of the picture. So cool. So cool. Humph. I'm going to be so powerful in the future. Who would dare bully me? Outside the video, Uzumaki Naruto was thinking this way. In the video, the battle was still on a roll. Fukasaku and his wife also joined the battle, unleashing a sky of yellow sand to cover Uzumaki Naruto's attack. Fourth one. Uzumaki Naruto hid in the yellow sand, quietly lurked to Animal Path's side, rolled out a Raisingan in each hand, and abruptly pushed it toward Animal Path. Boom. Boom. After two muffled sounds, Animal Path had two holes through her chest and fell to the ground. Uzumaki Naruto dived back into the yellow sand, looking for an opportunity to strike again. With just one look, Kanoha's torture department head Marino Ibiki couldn't do anything to Animal Path, but Naruto. Killed her in seconds. Dash, binge guys, we're dropping this. Announcement in next chapter end. Not giving everyone a chance to continue being shocked.
In the video, Deva Path directly used repulsion to clean up the yellow sand all over the sky and fought with the exposed Uzumaki Naruto. At this moment, Uzumaki Naruto had consumed 9 out of 10 Senjutsu Chakra, and the Sage Mode had automatically faded. But he had reserved two Shadow Clones in Mount Mayaboku to store Senjutsu Chakra. The Shadow Clone summoned by Fukasaku was dispersed, and Naruto's own Senjutsu Chakra immediately filled up. Naruto also entered Sage Mode again. Uzumaki Naruto's second burst caught Deva Path, who was fighting with him in close quarters, off guard. With a lapse in defense, Deva Path was sent flying by a punch from Uzumaki Naruto, landing backward. Taking advantage of his weak moment to hit him. Uzumaki Naruto's eyes narrowed, and his hand activated his Senjutsu Chakra. A Raisin Shuriken appeared in his hand, and he threw it at Deva Path in midair. At the moment, Deva Path was in midair, and there was nowhere for him to dodge. His Shinra Tensei was still in its cooling state, so he could only take the blow. Is he finally going to die? No way, he hasn't undressed yet. But now he can't dodge at all. Crap, that pain, he's resurrected again. Damn it, if we don't take the lead and kill that guy who can revive, there's no point in fighting this battle. Amid all the buzz, Preta Path, who had died, was resurrected and instantly appeared. He stood in front of Deva Path and absorbed the Raisin Shuriken with his ability. Uzumaki Naruto obviously noticed this as well. A burst of bright red smoke was released to conceal his form. At the next moment, the two Raisin Shuriken were sent off and attacked the two pains. Preta Path moved again to stop one of them, only to find that it was actually Uzumaki Naruto's clone. Before he could react, the second Raisin Shuriken had broken through the gale and arrived in front of Deva Path. But, five seconds had passed. Deva Path shot out and performed Shinra Tensei to destroy it. At the same time, Uzumaki Naruto himself suddenly descended from the sky, with two ready-made Raisin Shuriken in his hand, blasting directly into Naraka Path's body. Naraka Path couldn't avoid it. He was blown away by Uzumaki Naruto's Raisin Shuriken. From the six pains, only three were left. Deva Path saw Naraka Path die. With a cold snort, he raised his hand. A sudden outbreak of suction caught Naruto off guard. Preta Path quickly dodged, pinned Uzumaki Naruto in his arms, and began to absorb the chakra from his body. But he didn't know that the chakra in Naruto was no ordinary chakra but Senjutsu Chakra. The hungry ghost absorbed the Senjutsu Chakra but couldn't balance the natural energy in his body. His body quickly turned into a frogman-shaped statue. The cooldown time was over. Deva Path did the same thing again. He sucked Naruto towards him, grabbed Naruto's neck with his left hand, and slammed him hard to the ground. Boom! Naruto was smashed to the ground. With his body's landing point as the center, spider web-like cracks with a length of several meters instantly appeared on the ground. Looking at Naruto, who vomited blood, Deva Path was unmoved. He summoned a black stick with chakra with his right hand and impaled Uzumaki Naruto directly through both palms, nailing him hard to the ground. Then, the black stick in Deva Path's hand shot out continuously and completely nailed Uzumaki Naruto to the ground. QB capture successful. Did, did he lose? Outside, in the shinobi world, everyone was dumbfounded by the turn of events in the blink of an eye. Didn't the exam space say that Naruto prevented pain from invading Kanoha? How could he be nailed to the ground now? Wasn't this embarrassing oneself? Seeing the dozens of long black sticks impaling Naruto, the shinobi crowd frowned. Regardless of whether Naruto, who had no resistance now, could save himself and succeed. Let's just say that after he escaped from those black sticks with a dozen wounds all over his body, would he still be able to stop pain? No, are those Kanoha shinobi just watching? Not going down to save him? That's, heh, so this is the number one shinobi village. That old geezer standing up there, isn't that the old bastard, Kanoha's Danzo? Why hasn't he sent anyone down there yet? No way, Kanoha's people are too heartless. Just now, the guy was trying to defend them, and now when he's in danger, they are all just standing by. Listening to the group below feeling bad for Uzumaki Naruto, the fourth rakage, also felt disdain for Kanoha's behavior at the moment. Glancing at the stupid Senju Tsunade on screen, the disdain in Iceheart was heavier. If this boy were from his own village, if nothing else, 
he would never let him fight pain alone. At the very least, I would have thrown Killer B over there with him. Surprisingly, there was no one from Kanoha. Ha! Huh. Suddenly, the sneering fourth Rakich's eyes lit up, and a burst of joy surged in his heart. Kanoha did a good job. Great! It's you who has chilled people's hearts and given me an opportunity. I licked his dark lips excitedly and instantly came up with a dozen abduct, no, attract Uzumaki Naruto plan. He narrowed his eyes, looked at the screen, analyzed Uzumaki Naruto's character, and thought to himself which plan would have a higher success rate. Ugh. If I had a granddaughter, why go to all this trouble? At the same time, on the pit wall in the live broadcast. Despite Umbu's obstruction, Senju Tsunade was about to go down to stop Pain from taking Naruto away. Suddenly, beside her, a graceful figure jumped without hesitation. It's her. Senju Tsunade looked at the rapidly descending figure for a moment. I didn't expect for her to jump in, in this kind of situation. Ojusama. In the branch family of the Hyuga clan, Hyuga Niji looked at the image of the figure leaping down. His eyes instantly widened. It's Ojusama, that's right. Although the young Hinata in the picture had grown up a lot, the pure white eyes and black long hair told Hyuga Niji that this was Hyuga Hinata. Hyuga Hinata's movements were incomparably athletic, flipping several times in the air and jumping steadily onto the summoned bird with Animal Path. Animal Path didn't expect someone to leap down from above at this time, and before she could see who was coming, her chakra had exploded and shot brazenly. Gentle fist, eight trigrams palms revolving heaven. The veins around Hinata's eyes bulged, making her face look a little sinister at the moment. Light blue chakra visible to the naked eye escaped from her body. Hyuga Hinata's palms swung like the wind, and her body rotated at high speed, blocking all Animal Path's attacks. Seeing that her attack was invalid, Animal Path turned around and was about to jump off the bird. With just a brief contact, she already knew that she was no match for this woman in close combat. Seeing that the other party wanted to escape, Hinata directly attacked, taking a half step forward with her palms crossed. With the eight trigrams palms, she reached forward and grabbed the opponent's shoulder. Eight trigrams thirty-two palms. Eight trigrams sixty-four palms. Eight trigrams one hundred twenty-eight palms. With Hyuga Hinata's melodious voice, palm after palm blasted Animal Path like a storm. Animal Path could initially resist, but in the end, her body was hammered like a rag by Hyuga Hinata's palms. What horrified Animal Path even more was that Hyuga Hinata's technique had a strange suction force that made it impossible for her to escape. She could only withstand the attack. Boom! At the last strike, most of Animal Path's body was damaged and fell to the ground. Hinata stood on the huge bird and looked coldly at the falling Animal Path. Chakra was quietly running through her hands, forming two lion heads over her hands. The lion heads were completely dark blue, and their eyes exploded with a soul-stirring light. The lion's mouths were wide open as if choosing a person to eat. Their manies were more like burning flames, which were extremely dazzling. Hyuga Hinata stomped hard and leaped. The huge bird beneath her feet let out a wail and plunged toward the ground. On the other hand, Hyuga Hinata took advantage of the recoil force to arrive in front of Animal Path at a faster pace, coming up behind Animal Path. Gentle Step Twin Lion Fists As if a death sentence was pronounced, Hyuga Hinata hit Animal Path again in midair. The two lion fists frighteningly ripped Animal Path's body. Countless pieces of flesh, and chakra sticks, were broken and torn. There was no room for resistance at all, so Animal Path was abruptly torn apart by Hyuga Hinata. Boom! Hyuga Hinata, who had finished everything, bent her body slightly and landed firmly on the ground in midair. Above, the remains of Animal Path's corpse were still falling. Hyuga Hinata slowly got up, stood quietly, and looked at Deva Path coldly. In her hands, the double lion fists were still burning. At the moment, the scene was absolutely beautiful. Dash, binge, a message from my heart, guys, it has been four months since we started our little group and have been uploading daily chapters ever since. From Marvel Superman to Shinobi Exam, from Arthur's Pokemon to Godsuch's Multiverse, we uploaded many different translations and originals. And trust me, it's your support and encouragement that has kept us going on all this time. However, like the setting sun marks the end of the day, 
everything will finally come to an end. I can't put my emotions in words as I type this, but we have no other choice but to drop this. Sigh, with a heavy heart and tears streaming down from my eyes, I announce that we're dropping Pat Rayon page. Visit, Pat Rayon. Com slash Binjinaruto. Read 14 advanced chapters. After all, this is the only way we can keep on translating this FIC for you. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. See you tomorrow lol because of all the love you sent me in the previous chapter comments, half of which got auto-deleted by web novel because you were cursing my ancestors, cough, I mean you were praising my ancestors which made even the web novel jealous. Thus, with teary eyes and a proud smile, I decided not to drop it. So here you go, an extra chapter for my sugar boogers. X. That's. Hinata. Hyuga Hayashi looked at the slim girl on the screen in shock and turned to look at the little girl in his arms. At that time, he couldn't respond. Is that really Hinata? In a flash, the enemy was defeated and killed with unparalleled strength. Hyuga Hayashi couldn't tell whether he was excited or shocked, or both. He looked at Hinata's red face in his arms, and his pale eyes turned red. You made your own jutsu. You created your own jutsu. That gentle step twin lion fists is Hinata's own jutsu. Looking at that destructive power, it was at least an S-rank jutsu. Hyuga Hayashi already figured out how to train his daughter next. Who said that my daughter wasn't talented? Who said that? Come forward. Hyuga Hayashi guaranteed that he could kill that person with a single palm. He didn't need the 32, 64, or 128 other palms. Looking at his red-faced daughter, Hyuga Hayashi couldn't help sticking his forehead to hers, trying to measure the temperature of Hinata's forehead. Still, he heard her daughter's mumble, and his face instantly turned dark. Naruto Kuen, so cool. Hinata. In Kanoha's flower shop, holding a bunch of pink tulips, Sakura stared blankly at the figure on the screen above, lost in thought for a moment. It was as if she realized that something, something was about to change. On the live broadcast screen, in the video, a close-up of Hyuga Hinata's face was shown. Her white eyes sparkled with refreshing warmth, and her white pupils made her look holy and flawless, as beautiful as a fairy. Instead of destroying her beauty, the dust and scrapes on her face gave her an earthy air that made her beauty even more genuine. Her shawl-like hair swayed gently with the breeze. If it weren't for her, the two lion fists burning in her hands and the remains of animal path scattered around, everyone would only think that she was just a beautiful girl. Under the gaze of countless people, Hyuga Hinata, who was once timid and shy, made her feelings known when she faced pain. Because. I love you, Naruto Kuen. Wow. 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 Outside the screen, everyone who saw this scene was subconsciously quiet and then immediately clamored. No one knew why, but they suddenly had the feeling of a knife piercing their hearts and breaking them in half. They wanted to ask themselves, what just happened? Why did they have to suffer this unwarranted disaster? Moreover, looking at the beautiful person on screen, they suddenly had an impulse to let pain kill Uzumaki Naruto. Especially Hyuga Niji, who was now, in a complicated mood. Ha ha ha. In the exam space, Jiraiya's wild laughter sounded. He did not expect that his young disciple, who hadn't been admitted yet, would have the same unwavering love from a girl, just like his father, Minato. With a girl who could stand up for herself in such moments, Naruto, you are really blessed. Jiraiya shook his head and pressed down his own envy. At that moment, he saw the beautiful love among the younger generation, and that shadow reappeared in his mind. This girl is very strange. Nagato suddenly spoke. No one knew the courage needed to face Deva path better than him. Even the fifth Hokage, Tsunade, was a little uneasy in front of Deva Path. But this girl, surprisingly, used the battlefield as a stage for her confession. Having the resolve to die. The others heard Nagato's muttering to himself, but no one knew what he was thinking. Not far away, Abito, whose robe was stripped by Haydn, was staring at Hyuga Hinata. At this moment, he was surprised that the world still had the slightest possibility of salvation. It turned out that there were people like him in this world. For the sake of love, struggling desperately. And destroying the world for love. Eh. It's her. It's the gloomy, dull, dawdling one. 
Uzumaki Naruto recognized her as his classmate Hyuga Hinata at a glance. The same girl who was bullied back then and for whom he fought for. Looking at her confession on screen, Uzumaki Naruto's head was full of black question marks. She likes me. Why does she like me? But I like Sakura ah. Uzumaki Naruto felt so torn between the two girls, and now he was a little unsure of how to choose. He stroked his chin like an old man and decided to give the girl a chance to find out about her. Although she was beautiful and powerful, her family seemed to be rich. But he was Uzumaki Naruto, how could any girl just capture him just by thinking about it? He was the man who would become Hokage. Hyuga Hinata knew that she was no match for Deva Path. With her own strength, she could instantly kill Animal Path by taking advantage of a sneak attack. But her original goal wasn't pain. Before pain could react, Hyuga Hinata used both hands and feet to break the black sticks inserted in Uzumaki Naruto's body. Deva Path had a rare expression on his face. It was a surprise. Watching Hinata struggle to deal with the black spikes, Deva Path waved one hand, and repulsion was unleashed, directly knocking Hyuga Hinata away. Hyuga Hinata fell to the ground, spat out a mouthful of blood in disarray, and braced herself to get up. Before she could rush to Uzumaki Naruto, she got beaten away again. Hyuga Hinata climbed up, again and again, constantly attacking the black sticks on Naruto, but was always stopped by pain. There was no way she could only attack pain. When she forced him to dodge, she rushed to Naruto again and again. But she had been attacked too much, and her internal injuries were extremely serious. Now, she was in severe pain every time she took a breath. More fatally, the physical injuries and exhaustion had severely affected her speed. Within Shinra Tensei's five-second cooldown, she simply couldn't do anything but repel pain before rushing to Naruto's side and pulling out the black spikes. But she still persisted. Blood spurted out from all over her body, and the sight in Hyuga Hinata's eyes had turned bright red, but she still gritted her teeth and stood up again, stumbling closer to Naruto. She was slow as if every step of the way would exhaust her whole body. But she still moved her steps firmly, even though her steps were very small. Even if her line of sight had been blurred. Step by step, step by step. Fall, climb up again. Fall again, climb up again. Her legs trembled violently, and even Naruto, who was stuck on the ground, began to pray for her. Hinata, don't come over, don't come over. Not only Naruto, but the whole shinobi world, everyone who watched the live broadcast looked at the screen speechlessly. Hyuga Hinata's perseverance made them forget that she was Kanoha Shinobi. At this moment, they had nothing but sympathy and deep admiration for Hyuga Hinata. They all knew in their hearts what this strong girl would face next. So now they were eager, for a miracle. They hoped that this girl's strength could awaken the last shred of humanity in Deva Path, even if just a little. Just. Just let the girl go. As if everyone's wish had an effect, this time, facing Hinata, who stood up, Deva Path didn't attack. But before anything could happen, another question appeared in the sky. Question, did you join Pat Rayon yet? A. I will join right now. B. I will join after right now. C. Binge is most handsome. D. Pat Rayon. What's that? Give me your bank account number. E. I am as broke as Binge. Can only afford the highest tier. I don't understand, why would someone as weak as you, fight me? Why? When you know, you'll only die. For the first time, Deva Path's voice took on human emotion, that of disbelief. Hyuga Hinata was now close to Uzumaki Naruto. Hearing Pain's inquiry, she leaned on the black rod that nailed Uzumaki Naruto's hands and slowly looked up. Uzumaki Naruto, who was lying on the ground, could see her clearly. On her face, Blood ran down her forehead and hanging down the tip of her nose to her mouth. At the corner of her mouth was a large bloodstain. Hinata. Uzumaki Naruto's voice trembled slightly. He did not understand why Hinata did this. He had been alone since he was a child and had long been used to being alone. He didn't have a real friend until he graduated and was assigned to different classes, so although Uchiha Sasuke didn't recognize him, he still regarded him as his friend. Jiraiya was more like a father than a sensei to him. But then Sasuke defected, Jiraiya died, and he returned to being alone. 
Since he was a child, this was how he has been, so he didn't think it was wrong for other shinobis not to help him. Because of this, when Hyuga Hinata came down, it puzzled him. Why did she do this? Hyuga Hinata looked at the surprised Naruto, her mouth slightly raised, and a beautiful but sad smile appeared on her face. That smile, like a light, suddenly filled Naruto's entire world. Then, Hyuga Hinata said something that left Uzumaki Naruto completely dumbfounded. I never go back on my word. Because that's my ninja way. Uzumaki Naruto's pupils suddenly dilated, and at that moment, even lost focus. He looked at Hinata mechanically. He never thought that Hyuga Hinata would say such words. In Naruto's mind, the words were more stimulating than the phrase, I love you, Naruto Kuen. Deva Path didn't want to waste any more time and raised his hand to blow Hinata away. The next moment Hyuga Hinata flew out and fell in front of Pain, raising dust. A black chakra stick appeared in Deva Path's hand and was thrust directly at Hyuga Hinata's heart. Poof! Hinata! Boom! In the Hyuga family home, a powerful momentum exploded. Every door and window was shattered, followed by an angry roar. Hyuga Hayashi's eyes were in tears, his eyes were open, and his long billowed. Glancing at Hyuga Hanabi, who was trembling with fear, Hyuga Hayashi forced down the killing intent and hatred in his heart and showed a difficult smile. Hanabi, don't tell your sister about today's things. Just die. Just watch her die. Garbage Kanoha. Rubbish Kanoha. Killer B angrily criticized Kanoha. Hyuga Hinata's death made him forget to even speak in his favorite rap rhythm. Not to mention him, almost all Kyumo shinobis were disgusted by what Kanoha had done. Four of the six pains were destroyed by Uzumaki Naruto, and one by Hyuga Hinata. There was only one left, but surprisingly no one from Kanoha's crowd came forward. Ridiculous, how ridiculous. Hyuga Hinata was pinned down by Deva Path. If only a few people went down, they could have taken the opportunity to release Uzumaki Naruto, and the result of the war could be rewritten. Kanoha. Countless shinobis were watching the battle above, but none of them dared to jump down. And the Hyuga family. Ha! Hey. You guys are really used to watching your people die calmly. The shinobis from Kumogakure were full of sarcasm. Now they felt that it was simply an insult to their own Kumogakure to compete with Kanahagakure for the number one shinobi village title. Watching the people of your own village die. You Kanoha, are really skilled. You Kanoha, really deserve to be the first in the shinobi world. If you ask me, Kanoha should be on the shinobi world list. The number one cowards of the shinobi world. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. In Sunagakir, Gara calmly looked at the screen. He thought he had found his own kind. Both Uzumaki Naruto and the girl with the white pupils were the same kind of people as he was. Outcasts. In the exam space, Jiraiya's face was very ugly. He didn't expect that many of Kanoha's shinobis at the top didn't come down. They really let the Hyuga girl face pain on her own. What a chilling thought. Jiraiya frowned, Kanoha's shinobis were never afraid of death. Otherwise, Hataki Kakashi and Akimichi Choza wouldn't choose to die. But, why on earth? Dead, dead. Uzumaki Naruto froze. Somehow, when Hyuga Hinata was killed by pain, his heart twitched. As if he lost something very important. Uzumaki Naruto quickly looked at the screen, only to find that the Uzumaki Naruto on screen roared angrily after Hinata's death. Then he turned into a crimson monster and fought with pain in a frenzy. While the crowd was glued to the screen, the image suddenly disappeared and was replaced by a nerve wracking breakdown. Uzumaki Naruto persuaded and defeated pain and all those who died in Kanoha were resurrected, then the picture reappeared. It was Hataki Kakashi, carrying a tired Uzumaki Naruto on his back, returning to the entrance of Kanahagakur. There, countless people were standing, waiting for their hero to return. The image faded away amidst the cheers of the crowd. The fifth question is analyzed. No more. That's it. Shit, that's too fucked up, right? Exam space, isn't that lacking? Looking at the sudden and inexplicable end of the analysis, everyone in the shinobi world was blindsided. It was easy to go from getting a little bit at a time to gaining a lot, but it was difficult to go from gaining a lot to misery. 
having witnessed the wonder and shock from the video, how could they possibly accept the textual analysis? Moreover, they had just seen Uzumaki Naruto transform into the Kyubi. Although only a few tails, that was the real tailed beast ah. Still the most powerful Kyubi. A more earth-shattering battle was about to break out. People in the shinobi world had hunches that the intensity of this battle was worse than that of the fight just now. But how come it wasn't shown? Now, they couldn't wait to grab the exam space and shake it. How could such a big Kyubi, and pain, disappear just like that? How did it become Konoha, those damned people, welcome Uzumaki Naruto? Also, how did they come back to life? How did Uzumaki Naruto persuade pain? People felt that their hearts couldn't stand it. Countless questions weighed on their minds, but there were no solutions, no answers. This feeling was too unbearable. They all had their hearts in their throats, ready to enjoy a good battle, but the result, a fade to black. And then, everyone came back to life. Resurrection was as simple as that. You think it's childbirth. So time-saving. People in the shinobi world felt so powerless even to vent. Luckily, there are videos of the other four questions. I hope the next video won't be so anticlimactic. This is too much to bear. It was only half of the video. More annoyingly, it was accompanied by a text. I feel as if it was mocking us. What's all this about? In Kirigakure, Turumi Mei spoke a little frantically. It was as if a cat was lying at the tip of her heart, tugging her heartstrings with its claws, making it impossible for her heart to calm down. She exhaled deeply, causing the chest to swell in waves. At the same time, in the exam space, Akatsuki's people were also confused. They were still waiting to see the leader lose, but it just disappeared. Unlike other people's lack of understanding, Nagato's mind was clear at this moment. Kanoha's group of obviously dead people ended up coming back to life. He must have used his own outer path, samsara of heavenly life technique. At the cost of his own life, he resurrected everyone in Kanoha. So, Uzumaki Nagato had some doubts. He invaded Kanoha. I'm not the only one who died, right? Nagato clicked his tongue, not knowing what to say for a moment. But he found that Conan, behind him, had been looking up as if looking for something. Conan, what's wrong? I don't know. I have a feeling like someone is watching us. Conan frowned. This feeling had been there since she entered the exam space. She didn't know what was going on. Hmm. Someone watching this place. How is that possible? Even he couldn't do such a thing. Nagato was about to deny it, but Conan had already said something, exam space, is someone watching us here? Conan swore that she was really just asking a casual question. She was even prepared for the exam space not to answer. However, the exam space gave her the answer. It's just that this answer directly made the people in the exam space feel their scalps were full of pins and needles and fell into silence. To ensure the fairness of the examination, everyone in the shinobi world can see your every word and deed. The integrity of the exam starts with you and me, or search Benjefix on Patreon. Fuck. In the exam space, everyone in Akatsuki was frantic. Why didn't you say something so important earlier? First, the organization was exposed, then they were exposed. But such personal matters also got fully exposed, this wasn't a joke. The battles in the shinobi world were also an information battle. Once the information was mastered, they would become very vulnerable in battle. The Akatsuki members looked at Nagato in horror but found that Nagato's emaciated face didn't show any emotional fluctuations. This put their restless hearts a little at ease. Compared with their exposure, their leader, Pain, was simply stripped and hung up for display. Now that the leader wasn't in panic, what were they panicking about? At the thought of being exposed, the Akatsuki members suddenly blinked and looked at the suppressed Achiha Abito. At this moment, Abito was like a roasted prawn, curled up with his skin bared and red. Luckily, he still had a few pieces of intimate clothing on him that didn't let him go completely naked. Haydn. I want you dead. Haydn. I'll kill you. I'm going to kill you. Abito's face was stuck on the space floor, thinking that in this way, everyone in the shinobi world wouldn't be able to see him. His teeth gritted together, and a hoarse voice escaped his mouth. 
Looking at the answer on the screen, Jiraiya was also stunned. They could see everything. Then that stupid scene just then. Tsunade was able to see. Jiraiya's face suddenly turned red. He felt some shame. Then he excitedly looked at the screen and waved his hand vigorously, almost shouting out. Hey, Tsunade, wow, can you see me? Pa. That was the sound of Tsunade slapping her own forehead. This guy. Tsunade's face turned red. Shizun's watchful eyes beside her could almost embarrass her to death. When you come back, I will settle accounts with you. Tsunade hastily dropped some harsh words, gave Shizun an unpleasantly blank look, and continued on her way. She always felt that people were looking at her on the road, which made her blush even more. She simply rolled up her clothes and wrapped them around her head not to be recognized by others. Now, the whole world knew, one of the Sanin liked one of the other Sanin, Tsunade. It's. It's still too humiliating. When Killer B looked at Jiraiya's stupid appearance, he suddenly felt offended. He braced himself a bit and seemed to feel a bit jealous. He felt that those Kanoha people had hijacked this magical exam system. Why are they all like this? Killer Beat suddenly felt that everything was boring. He knew Tsunade and Jiraiya of Kanoha, to be precise, had fought them. Like him, he always thought that Jiraiya was a staunch bachelor and even once thought that his older brother was a good match for Tsunade, that violent woman. When he heard about the allied shinobi forces of the shinobi world, he was a little secretly pleased, thinking that he could have a fifth Hokage as a sister-in-law. But now, Killer B glanced at the fourth wreckage, folded his arms, and shook his head in disappointment. The forever bachelor. What are you looking at me for? You also thought of it. I felt Killer B's gaze was a little odd. Well, it occurred to me, brother, that you can only be with. Not bad. I didn't expect that you would learn to use your brain. I interrupted Killer B and motioned for him to keep quiet. Now, it was very likely that because of Akatsuki, the future would change. What will Akatsuki do when they learn that their plans to capture the tailed beasts have been exposed? Now, it's not just the shinobi world that's changing. The future of the shinobi world will, too. A time of chaos is coming. Anoki sighed, as a kage from the previous generation, his strategy was only slightly higher than other current kages. He had already thought of what the rakage thought of. He thought of it even more thoroughly. If nothing else, Jiraiya's future had definitely changed. Now, his head was stuffed with information. He won't continue to investigate Akatsuki. If he didn't continue to investigate, he wouldn't die. If he didn't die, it would lead to other things. If nothing else, teaching Uzumaki Naruto in advance was definitely acceptable. The shinobi world had now kicked off a chaotic prelude. To be honest, Nagato didn't believe the answer given by space at first glance. Then he took a second look. A third look. A fourth look. His heart began to collapse. He had already begun to regret why he, and everyone in Akatsuki, were so excellent that they had answered all the questions correctly. When did being good and strong become a fault? What shamed him most was the phrase, at the top of the shinobi world, which must have been heard by everyone. Talking about that internally was fine. But the whole shinobi world must have heard this. So be it. On the contrary, the image of him failing to beat Uzumaki Naruto was also revealed. He was still at the top of the shinobi world. Shame. Such shame. Now, he felt as if he was being exposed and naked to the whole shinobi world. However, what was this inexplicable sour feeling at the bottom of my heart? Nagato thought he was going crazy. Although hundreds of millions of curse words were raging in his heart, Nagato still strived to maintain his lofty and cold image. <laughs> Taking a deep breath, Nagato tried to calm himself frantically. I'm a god, not a man. I can't make a fuss like mortals. It's just a live broadcast, isn't it? Alas. Nagato pushed down the sourness in his heart and began to think about other things. The Eye of the Moon plan would definitely not work, not to mention whether it could achieve peace in the shinobi world, it must be shelved just because of Zetsu's lies, and Uchiha Abito had also been deceiving him. Not to mention, the relationship between Zetsu and Uchiha Madara was still unclear. However, whether the Eye of the Moon plan was successful or not, 
Akatsuki would still capture the tailed beasts. Whether it was cutting the battle power of the shinobi villages or stopping Black Zetsu's plan, Nagato felt that the tailed beast capture plan still needed to start. And, start early. Anyway, Akatsuki had already been exposed, not broken. This would make the shinobi world a little more chaotic and create an opportunity for him. He could take advantage of this. And while Uzumaki Naruto hadn't grown up yet, he still had absolute dominance in the shinobi world right now. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that his thinking was reasonable. Payne took a deep breath, and a burst of brilliant light erupted in his eyes. Jiraiya's behavior gave him some inspiration. Now may be the best time to announce Akatsuki to the shinobi world. Nagato was just about to open his mouth when suddenly, inexplicably, he remembered Daidara's phrase that gave him goosebumps. Being the leader of Akatsuki, being the most powerful existence in the shinobi world, and making everyone in the shinobi world feel pain, why not take this opportunity to bring fear to everyone in the shinobi world directly? Perhaps, if they feared him, there would be fewer wars. It was just as well to see if he could create a peaceful shinobi world with fear and pain, and if so, why would he agree with Uzumaki Naruto? After all, the outer path, samsara of heavenly life technique could only be performed by voluntarily giving up one's life. Nagato's mind raced, trying to find or create a phrase that would rival that of Daidara's. After all, if he wanted to shout to the whole shinobi world, repeating Daidara's phrase was below his dignity. Suddenly, a light flashed in Nagato's mind. Dash, binge read latest translated chapter on Pat Rayon. Or search Benjefix on Pat Rayon. Don't forget to vote PS. Nagato's mind was sharp. He quickly caught the glimmer of light in his mind, and then a compelling phrase appeared in his mind. Nagato mentally recited it, and it was as if a flame rose up from his heart for a moment. The pores of his whole body were relaxed, and both his mind and body were plunged into extreme comfort. Nagato tried his best to control his facial expression so that he wouldn't behave unnaturally. He had already made a good draft in his heart. He wanted to inform the shinobi world that Akatsuki's next move was to capture the tailed beasts. He wanted to make everyone in the major shinobi villages afraid and then profit from it. Turning his wheelchair with both hands to move himself forward, Nagato waved his hand in the same manner as Jiraiya. Listen up, all of you in the shinobi world. I, Uzumaki Nagato. Suddenly, Nagato's heart thumped. He suddenly forgot what was next in his draft. What's even more frightening was that the more he thought about it, the faster the draft he'd thought up for a while disappeared. Now, it's more like it was never there. Nagato clicked his tongue, and beads of sweat began to appear on his forehead. He was too nervous. He had never spoken in a crowded place. At most, he would control Deva Path to deliver an impromptu speech, but using a front puppet was different from doing it live. Not to mention that he was now facing a live broadcast to everyone in the entire shinobi world. What to do, what to do? What am I going to say? Nagato felt his mind go blank. No, I have to say something. That's it. Nagato's heart snapped as he uttered words that would shame him for the rest of his life. At the peak of the shinobi world, no one could beat me, Pain. After Pain finished, Deva Path Pain flashed behind him. He appeared behind the wheelchair and pulled it backward with great speed. The other Pains immediately gathered up and formed a wall to surround Nagato. Sasori looked at Nagato, who was hiding, and his mouth moved but didn't say anything in the end. He felt that there might be some reasons for the leader to do so. Sasori shook his head. He wasn't interested in other people in the shinobi world and didn't care about being stared at as a puppet. It was Daidara, who watched the leader's movements, and his eyes lit up, but then they darkened again. He was also a flashy person, but unfortunately, not as Janibio as the leader. Although he always talked about art as an explosion, he still wanted some dignity. Unlike the leader, who could shout in the sky above Kanoha, let the world feel pain. That was too Chinibyo. Daidara was thinking about this when he suddenly saw Haydn step out from beside him, holding his huge scythe upside down and holding the collar of his red cloud robe up, blocking half of his face. Akatsuki's people knew what Haydn was up to when they watched him move forward with incredible momentum. He wanted to take this opportunity to spread his heresy. As expected. Haydn stopped after taking about a dozen steps forward. 
His scythe was dancing in the wind with one hand. He wore the red cloud robe, and his matching silver eyes and slick back hair looked very impressive. Haydn twirled the scythe for a while, feeling that the momentum was brewing. He grabbed the end of the sickle to control it. Hum the hum of vibration on the tip made everyone look at him. Gulping, Haydn was a little nervous in his heart, but in order to promote Jashinism and gain the great Jashin Sama more believers. He had to do it. Handsomely pulling his collar, Haydn raised his head 45 degrees and looked to the sky, giving all those watching the live broadcast in the shinobi world the illusion, I'm looking at you. I am Haydn, a Jashinist. In Kanoha. Uzumaki Naruto blinked his big blue eyes and stared blankly at the Akatsuki group, who had suddenly changed their demeanor. He felt as if something was suddenly wrong with this group. Ever since they found out. They were live broadcasted from the beginning. And one by one, they became abnormal. Their pretentiousness gave Uzumaki Naruto a strong sense of dissonance. This made Uzumaki Naruto curious. Is it true that everyone becomes abnormal when they're on air? Especially the leader of Akatsuki, Uzumaki Nagato, he was the strangest. Naruto craned his neck. The corners of his mouth were slightly raised, and his smile was surprisingly somewhat devious from a distance. Who gave you the courage, brother? You can't even beat me, so what's the point of such nonsense? Kanahagakur, the Hyuga clan. A series of figures gathered in front of Hyuga Hayashi's residence and stood quietly. Clan head, I have something important to discuss with you. Inside the house, Hyuga Hinata's family of four was eating. Hinata had just woken up, however, she didn't see the scene about her in the video. So, she was a little unclear as to why Hanabi didn't eat properly and kept staring at her. And her father, who had always been serious, looked at her from time to time and looked awkward. As for her mother, she had a smile in her eyes, and she didn't know what she was thinking. This made Hinata feel that the atmosphere at the dinner table was extremely strange. A voice from outside broke the unexplainable atmosphere at the dinner table, and Hinata was just about to excuse herself while her father took care of clan business when she heard him speak faintly. Something came up today, so you guys go back first. But the clan head, it's a matter of OJ. I told you to go back. Did you hear me? Yes. After a long while, there were some noises outside, followed by the sound of a group of people leaving. Feeling that her father seemed angry, Hinata almost wanted to bury her whole face into her rice bowl. Hinata. Ah. Father. Being called out by Hyuga Hayashi, Hinata was shocked and thought she had made another mistake that had upset her father and was about to apologize when she heard Hyuga Hayashi say, I heard you say that you met a friend at school. Hinata froze for a moment, assuring herself that she had never said that to her own father. Even if she said this, it was with her mother and Hanabi. Besides, when she was at school. Named Uzumaki Naruto. Hinata was once again stunned and then instantly depressed. She knew what her father was going to say. It must be, you're a Hyuga, how can you be friends with him? You're a Hyuga. How can you have no friends? Ah. Uh. Hinata looked up dumbfounded, with a grain of rice still hanging at the corner of her mouth. She looked very cute. Then, she saw it. His father got up and wiped the grain from her mouth with a handkerchief. Hinata was completely shocked. She keenly felt that something was wrong, but she didn't know what it was. This can't be my father. Hinata looked at her mother suspiciously. Was she still dreaming and hadn't woken up? She remembered that she fainted when she saw the handsome Naruto. Hinata felt that she had caught the truth of the matter. Tomorrow, your mother will cook some lunch, so you can invite Uzumaki Naruto to be a guest. Eh. Hyuga Hinata could not hold back any longer and screamed out. She looked at her father, who had a serious face, and her mother, who was looking at him with good humor and amusement, and her mind raced. There's something wrong with her father. Invite Naruto Kuen home as a guest, that's. Meeting the parents. Hyuga Hinata's face flushed. Then, she straightened up and fainted. Hyuga Hanabi saw this and clapped her hands with some excitement. Mother, mother, look, Wunchen passed out again. I told you Wunchen's head would be smoking, in the exam space, the Akatsuki party was discussing solutions. They certainly couldn't continue watching those video analyses when they knew it was being broadcasted. 
especially the analysis of the first question, they would rather not know than to let others know. Exam space, can you block the monitoring? Exclusive rewards can be blocked. Group rewards cannot be blocked. The number of unblockable video analysis is 1 out of 5 of the total number of questions. Akatsuki looked at the strange requirements of the exam space above, and at that time, they didn't understand what the exam space meant. Itachi blinked his eyes. The deep lines of his face made him look gloomy. He slowly spoke up and said, this means that our next video analysis is all blockable. Yes. Seeing the affirmative answer from the exam space, everyone in Akatsuki was delighted, and then they thought of Jiraiya. Jiraiya was more harmful to the current Akatsuki than Abito, or Zetsu and Orochimaru. Go ahead, test space. Nagato, as if not seeing the eyes of the others, directly spoke. He hadn't decided what to do with these people after the exam. However, the most important thing right now was to watch the video analysis of the other four topics. Just after Payne's words, the fog in the exam space reappeared and quickly became thicker again. Then, the screen in front of everyone in the shinobi world turned pure white. The images and sounds all disappeared. Is it really blocked? The shinobi world crowd froze for a moment. In the next moment, intense discontent brewed in their hearts. It actually blocked them. It won't show them the video. Akatsuki, you are so stingy. The shinobi world burst out into angry curses. Cursing was just cursing, but the hearts of the shinobi world people, like ants on a hot pan, all felt anxious. How did everyone from Akatsuki die? And how did Black Zetsu deceive Uchiha Abito? What was the impact of Jiraiya and Pain's battle, and what was Jiraiya's sage mode? One by one, the questions seemed to take root, as if they were growing wild in their minds, making them feel their whole bodies start to itch. Hey, hey, here we go, there's a picture, there's a picture. A few short minutes later, the audience from the shinobi world suddenly noticed that the white fog began to fade on the screen, revealing Akatsuki's group. Soon, the fog dispersed completely, and everyone found that everyone in the exam space seemed to stand in place as if they were frozen. And as if restraining the rage or other emotions in their hearts, their bodies were slightly trembling. What happened? People in the shinobi world had already started brainstorming various scenarios. Nagato slowly calmed down his shocked emotions. Compared with others, Nagato was slightly less shocked. After all, he had long thought that his death was due to Naruto persuading him to use Outer Path, Samsara of Heavenly Life technique. But he didn't expect that Uzumaki Naruto had actually talked himself out of it with a single statement. Nagato shook his head with a bitter smile, but what his little brother said did give him something to look forward to. Especially when he thought that at that time, he killed his master Jiraiya and appeared in front of him as his enemy, Naruto actually restrained the urge to strike him dead. For that alone, Uzumaki Nagato was impressed with Uzumaki Naruto. Nagato collected his thoughts. He also saw the death of the others and was shocked. His eyes fell on Hashigaki Kisame. Nagato's heart warmed. In order not to reveal information, he chose to kill himself. Such shinobi were reusable. Nagato's eyes swept over the crowd that hadn't recovered from the shock. Looking at Uchiha Abito, whose face was pressed to the ground and whose body was trembling violently and crying silently, he sighed in his heart. All the videos were incomplete, just like the fifth analysis, many things were deleted. Just like the video of Rin's death, only five people appeared, Madara, Black Zetsu, Abito, Kakashi, and Rin, which obviously lacked many things. It's just that these missing things, only Abito himself knew. With time, some people had gradually recovered from the shock. But they didn't say anything, just stood there looking serious. This was what they said before. No matter what you see, don't show it. Otherwise, it was very likely that the people of the shinobi world would deduce something from it. At the moment, Haydn was livid. He stood there without saying a word, holding his big sickle with both hands. He was so miserable. Not only did he not leave a corpse intact, but the only part left, his head was buried and watched by the Nara clan. Motherfucker, I'll kill all those Nara people later. Suddenly, the sound of teeth gritting beside him caught Haydn's attention. He turned his head to see that Kakuzu's eyes had turned an eerie green, his fists were clenched, and his body was trembling violently. Haydn's heart felt angry, 
but Kakuzu. He was still his partner. Ha ha ha, art is an explosion. Bayakusan, that was awesome. Daydara was full of excitement. Compared with Conan's 600 billion explosive tags, the forbidden technique released before his death was simply lacking. The main thing was that it didn't blow up that bastard from the Uchiha clan. Explosion, explosion, explosion. You fucking explosion freak. A voice full of anger rang out from behind Daydara. Daydara looked back with a jolt. He saw Kakuzu's green eyes. As if he was an evil spirit coming out of hell, he approached him step by step. Behind him, four demonic faces followed Kakuzu and closed in, making Daydara move back step by step. Kakuzu, Kakuzu, you, don't get excited. You'll get killed if you do anything here. Daydara kept his hands in front of him. If he was outside, he wouldn't be afraid of Kakuzu. But in this space, Kakuzu looked like he was ready to die together. The furious Kakuzu heard Daidara's words, and his eyes recovered a trace of reason. He put Daidara down and turned his head to Conan, his teeth nearly grinding. The hard-earned money he collected for a lifetime was all used to buy explosive tags by this woman. The most annoying thing was that she still couldn't blow Uchiha Obito up. You defeated bitch. Kakuzu even had an impulse to quit Akatsuki, but thinking of the leader's combat strength, he wisely suppressed the urge. But some things must be asked, and he didn't want to not gain anything from this. Bayakusan, I want to ask you a question. Hmm, it's your money. Conan's quick answer caused Kakuzu to freeze before the question could be uttered. He thought that Bayaku would avoid answering and that Bayaku would admit under pressure. He really didn't think that Bayaku would admit it so quickly. Outside the space, everyone saw that the Akatsuki members were acting as if they were playing riddles, with their heads full of questions. From their words, it seemed that Akatsuki's Conan used Kakuzu's money to buy something that would explode. Would explode. Explosive tags. But how much is an explosive tag? Looking at Kakuzu, how many explosive tags did that woman named Conan buy? Ten thousand. A hundred thousand. Or perhaps. A million. People in the shinobi world continued to stare at the live broadcast screen. They knew that their opinions couldn't control the live broadcast at all, so they learned to exclude themselves. Compared with Akatsuki's riddles, they were more interested in the next thing. Rewards. What could such a magical space reward them with? As if knowing their thoughts, Nagato saw Kakuzu had stopped asking and spoke to the space in the space. Exam space, we will first receive the group rewards, and then we will collect the exclusive rewards after blocking everyone from the outside. Yes, reward will be issued. Dash, binge hearing Nagato's words, everyone in the shinobi world wanted to curse him outright. And again, they fucking wanted to block them out. Although everyone in the shinobi world was dissatisfied, a pair of eyes were honestly staring at the screen. At the moment when the characters began to appear on screen, everyone subconsciously held their breaths. Those who perform well in this exam can get exclusive rewards, but exclusive rewards aren't issued yet. Awarded to Uzumaki Nagato and Uchiha Itachi. Full marks for this exam, group awards have been issued. Award recipient, group. Reward, chakra limit increased by 5%. Reward, personal enlightenment increased by 1%. Reward, Personal charm increased by 1%. Reward, personal luck increased by 1%. Reward, Taijutsu, intermediate skywalk. Reward, secret technique, intermediate armament hockey. Special group reward, makeup opportunity plus one. Special group reward, makeup exam token. As they watched the rewards flash across the screen, everyone in the shinobi world was in a daze. They didn't expect that the rewards from the exam space would be so astounding. They had never heard of some of the rewards. But just by the name, they were not sure what to expect. Just the first item alone was enough to drive them crazy. Chakra limit increased by 5%. Everyone was shocked. They had all thought that the rewards of the exam space would contain rewards to improve the strength of the Akatsuki group, but they hadn't thought that it would be in this way. Increase in chakra limit. Was this God's means? Seeing the first reward, all the Kage level powerhouses in the shinobi world narrowed their eyes. This reward. It's too unbelievable. 
They were all Kaga-level powerhouses and naturally knew how huge 5% of their own chakra was. It was no exaggeration to say that at least one more S-rank jutsu could be used. This addition was terrifying, especially for Akatsuki, a group of S-class renegade people from various shinobi villages. The third Hokage, Sarutobi Hiruzen, clasped his hands together. His eyes were staring at the screen. At this moment, he really wished that these rewards were fake. If the exam space really gave it to everyone from Akatsuki. No, not everyone, just Nagato himself, this reward was too unbelievable. The power of a jutsu was directly related to the amount of chakra, just like how a Kanoha's Genin jutsu wouldn't be able to beat a Kanoha's Chunin jutsu. Although they were the same jutsu, they had different amounts of chakra, so the power they exerted was naturally different. In other words, if Pain, who had raised his chakra limit by 5% and wanted to destroy Kanoha again, it would be much simpler for him. In Kanoha Hospital, Sakura stood at the door of Uchiha Sasuke's ward with a bouquet in her arms and gently pushed the door in. Sasuke, how are you feeling? Sakura placed the flowers on the edge of Sasuke's bed with some restraint, feeling that she was too proactive. Pa! Sasuke slapped the flowers to the ground. The petals were scattered in the air, just like Sakura's mood, full of sadness. I don't need your pity. Get out of here. Go away. Sakura was a bit aggravated by the inexplicable yelling. Looking at Sasuke's red eyes, Sakura quickly apologized. Sasuke, I'm sorry I disturbed you. Get well first, I'll come back later. She picked up the flowers on the ground and ran out. In the ward, only Sasuke was left. With amazing momentum on the screen. Damn it. He is getting stronger again. Damn it. That's not fair at all, is it? Everyone has a different amount of chakra, and boosting from the limit isn't the same as boosting the same amount of chakra. That's right. If there was a genin among these people, wouldn't he suffer a lot? In this way, they felt that the reward from the exam space wasn't fair enough. But as soon as their words began, they were silenced by other voices and were ridiculed in passing. Fairness? Who are you talking to about fairness? Is it the exam space? Then order it to stop blocking us later. I guarantee you, the next exclusive rewards are even more freaky than these rewards. Can you order them to keep it broadcasted? Does it care about being fair? You're just stupid. Chakra is refined from human cells, which means that the upper limit of chakra is fixed. Now, boosting it by 5% is equivalent to improving their physical quality in a different direction, and you still think it's unfair. If you set a fixed value, it will be unfair to the strong instead, or even directly cause the weak to die a violent death. In my opinion, this reward is fair. Hum as the rewards appeared one by one on the screen, the light continued to flash over the crowd of people in the exam space. As if characters in a game were being upgraded, the golden light flashed. Everyone in Akatsuki were shocked to discover, I'm getting stronger. It turned out that getting stronger could be so simple. Then, they looked at their leader in astonishment. They found that their leader had changed a lot. The original skinny and bony appearance had now eased. Although it was still far from the appearance of an ordinary person, at least, he now looked less ghastly. This also gave the crowd a new level of understanding of Uzumaki Nagato's strength. 5% of chakra could only restore him to this extent. Was his chakra that excessive? Not giving them a chance to think much at all, Shu Shu Shu, the rewards flew down to them. The shinobi crowd looked on with envy and jealousy as they watched the group on the live broadcast. The other rewards didn't change their aura much except for the first one, which made a noticeable difference. But in terms of temperament, great changes had taken place in everyone in the exam space. That was an indescribable feeling, anyway. People in the shinobi world felt that those in the exam space became more pleasing to the eye. When the golden light flashed on everyone for the fourth time, the screen unraveled the other prizes. Taijutsu, Intermediate Skywalk, through this special martial arts, the user is given the ability to fly in the air and for a short time. This technique is a team answer reward and cannot be passed on to others. Wow! Looking at the analysis on the screen, everyone in the shinobi world felt that they were going crazy again. They were going completely crazy. Could people fly using taijutsu? Taijutsu, flying. 
would they have to step on air and fly to the sky? And it gave that taijutsu to Akatsuki. Exam space, do you think that the shinobi world isn't chaotic enough? Having the ability to fly was almost impossible in the shinobi world. Anyway, up to now, apart from Anoki in that pain just now, they really didn't know anybody else that could fly in the shinobi world. Now, there were 13 more all at once, no. It's 18. The scary part was that these people were all basically from Akatsuki. People in the shinobi world were already imagining the scene where Akatsuki's dozen or so men, in red cloud robes, used skywalk and neatly fell from the sky. The most terrible thing was that Nagato, their chinibyo leader, was very likely to fly up again and say, let the world feel pain. Just as the faces of all the people in the shinobi world changed, a somewhat gloating voice suddenly sounded. Since this taijutsu is called skywalk, it must use legs, right? In an instant, looking at Nagato in his wheelchair, everyone's eyes lit up. But soon after that, the analysis of other rewards made their moment of gloating disappear and turn into deep envy. Intermediate armament hockey, consuming chakra to lay down black steel-like protection on the surface of the body. The strength of protection depends on the amount of chakra used. This technique is a group answer reward and cannot be passed on to others. Special group reward, make up opportunity plus one. All 13 people in this exam will get one makeup exam opportunity and be exempt from one makeup exam penalty. Special group reward, makeup exam token. The holder of this token will get an opportunity to open up the makeup exam space. The holder is the host of this makeup exam and can choose the makeup examinees by themselves. A makeup exam is random, and there is no reward for success and punishment for failure. Order. The makeup fee of all the makeup exam examinees will be exempted. Dash, binge looking at the series of rewards, everyone hadn't woken up from the shock. The live screens all over the world suddenly disappeared. They disappeared so abruptly, it was as if they had never appeared before. Seeing this scene, everyone knew that the space was going to be issuing exclusive rewards. At the thought of this, a group of extremely dissatisfied people began to comment in succession guessing what the exclusive rewards the space would be. After all, even the team rewards were so magical and terrifying, how could individual rewards for performing well on the exams be any less than these group rewards? In the exam space, see the white fog rising again. Everyone knew that others could no longer monitor everything here. As his eyes swept past everyone's faces, Nagato reached out and took hold of the golden token suspended between them. There was only one makeup exam token, which also involved the exam space. Nagato would never let it fall into the hands of others. Fortunately, neither Orochimaru, Jiraiya, or Black Zetsu said anything. Although their eager eyes had revealed their thoughts, they all knew that they had to accept the reality. Whoever took this token would face endless attacks from Nagato, Pain, and even Akatsuki. Exam space, issue the rewards. Exclusive reward, modern education in essence. Recipient, Uzumaki Nagato. Exclusive reward, The Gate of Time. Recipient, Achiha Itachi. Additional reward, Water of Life. Recipient, Conan. Exclusive rewards are for your own use only. Almost instantly, the three people had extra information and usage functions of their respective exclusive rewards in their minds simultaneously. Unlike the physical objects obtained by Uchiha Itachi and Konan, Uzumaki Nagato received a video directly instilled in his mind. Killing people, cannot solve a dispute. War cannot achieve peace. Jutsu is the primary productive force. Education starts with children. Studying for the peace of the shinobi world. The picture in his mind had just begun to play, but just the opening three sentences made Nagato's whole body shiver. He had a vague hunch that this so-called, modern education in essence, contained the method he was struggling to find that would bring peace to the shinobi world. Nagato looked at the footage expectantly, and then a vast scene that he couldn't imagine or even dream of appeared in his mind. The dark starry sky suddenly lit up with a light, and it was a water-blue planet. It rotated quietly. The picture was beautiful. In the next moment, the perspective shifted violently, like a dive in the starry sky, Nagato fell rapidly towards the planet. If it weren't for the constant suggestion in his mind that this was a video and there was no danger, Uzumaki Nagato would already have opened up the repulsive force from Shinra Tensei. 
In the next moment, the picture suddenly changed, row upon row of tall buildings, schools rising high, streets busy, and pedestrians walking by. When had Uzumaki Nagato ever seen such a scene? He froze. He gawked at the prosperous era he couldn't imagine and carefully observed every pedestrian. They may strut or hurry, but in their eyes, there was no concern for the future. There was only deep confidence, and even, a little, pride. This made Nagato extremely shocked. He couldn't help wondering, where is this place? Is there no war here? Why do people here live so? Nagato found that he couldn't find a suitable adjective to describe this place. But. This was the prosperous era he wanted to realize. It was even more perfect than he had imagined. Suddenly, the scene around Uzumaki Nagato changed. The next moment, he was already sitting in a classroom. At the front, an old man with an abhorrent face was banging on the blackboard with a walking stick. Don't be distracted in class. You, yes, don't look behind you. It's you, the new boy. Alas, you guys are the worst class I've ever taught. Today, we're talking about the first lesson, tomorrow will be better. Looking at the old man on the podium whose saliva was splattered everywhere, for a moment, Nagato was, dazed. Just as Nagato was undergoing transformation, Uchiha Itachi was looking curiously at the small, palm-sized door in front of him. He didn't expect to get an exclusive reward even if he performed well in the exam space. The gate of time brings the user back to a certain period of time for five hours, which can modify the past timeline and influence the present world. Looking at the analysis in his mind, Uchiha Itachi instantly went dry at the mouth. Travel through time and modify the past. Influence the present. This. 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 Uchiha Itachi's hands began to tremble violently, and the three tomo in his eyes instantly turned into Mangekyo. He took a deep breath and pressed down the impulse to use it immediately. It's terrifying. This was terrifying. This gate of time's energy efficiency was by no means achievable by Jutsu. If this was given to certain people, the consequences were terrible. Fortunately, this gate's user was limited to him alone. Itachi closed his eyes so that no one could see anything different about him. He was going to take a trip to Kanoha when the exam was over. Uchiha Madara, who assisted in the extermination of his clan, could be a fake, and there were some things in the clan's territory that most likely were also tampered with. If that's the case, this gate of time came at the right time. However, whether one decided to use this thing or not, some preparations had to begin. Water of life, heal all injuries. Just this one sentence, made Conan's hand tremble as she held the small green bottle. Exam space, this water of life, can I use it for Nagato? No restrictions for your exclusive reward. Conan instantly cried tears of joy when she saw the response from the exam space. Sure enough. Sure enough, there is a way for Nagato to recover given by the exam space. Since Nagato was disabled, they tried countless ways, but they started with hope and ended with despair every time. Nagato had also become more and more withdrawn. But now, Nagato finally had a chance to recover. Conan held the green bottle tightly as if it were the most precious treasure in the world. In fact, it was exactly so. With the ability to heal all injuries and illnesses, it could drive the whole shinobi world crazy if news got out. As a shinobi, who didn't have a few hidden illnesses and injuries on their body. The effect of this water of life was to prolong life. Just then, several lists above the space were simultaneously scrolled down but stopped at just one name slot. Jutsu list, number one, Golden Will Reincarnation Explosion. Taijutsu list, number one, Eight Gates. Binding list, number one, Chibaku Tensei. Summoning list, number one, Demonic Statue of the Outer Path. At the same time, above the space, Ruji also received his reward. Host's reward, Genin level chakra. Host's reward, three taijutsu techniques. Host's reward, five D level jutsu. Host's reward, one C level jutsu. Host's reward, taijutsu, intermediate sky walk. The rest of the rewards have been subtracted. Dash, binge for a long while, Nagato woke up quietly, with a wise gleam in his eyes. He now had countless ideas and sufficient strength and was ready to reform the shinobi world drastically. Unfortunately. 
Nagato sighed, he could only let the pains walk for him because of physical reasons, and the pain still had a certain limit in the distance. This was too inconvenient. Nagato, drink this medicine. When Nagato was lamenting, Conan suddenly handed over a small green medicine bottle. And without saying a word, she pulled open Nagato's mouth and poured it down. When a group of people in the exam space saw this scene, they suddenly narrowed their eyes quietly and speculated one by one. Is that little green bottle Conan's additional reward? What could it be? Maybe enhancing strength or healing one's body? A cooling sensation went down his throat. Nagato was stunned to find that the cooling sensation had spread throughout his body in that instant. Then, an unbearable, terrible itch appeared on him, as if countless ants were rhythmically moving through his body, gnawing at his heart in unison. Conan watched Nagato nervously. At the moment when the water of life was poured into him, Nagato's body began to swell like a balloon. Dozens of black chakra sticks inserted behind him had been squeezed out of the body by the newly grown muscles. At the moment when the black rods were separated from the body, all the pains immediately fell to the ground together. But Nagato had no time to evaluate the others. At the moment, he was leaning on the wheelchair with one hand, trembling to get up. I. I recovered. Nagato looked at his lower body in disbelief. Although he was still unstable, he did stand up. What exactly did Conan give me? It made him recover so quickly from his incurable injuries. Even his drained chakra body recovered altogether. This was simply a miracle. Nagato shook his fist excitedly. Now, he was more than a few times stronger than he was earlier. It was such a massive difference. This exam is over. Please leave the exam room in an orderly manner. A light door made of fog suddenly appeared, and the crowd understood that this was the exam space starting to drive them away. With a twinkle in his eye, Nagato picked up a black rod of chakra that had fallen from his back, bent it directly into a bracelet, and slipped it over his hand. Suddenly, all the pains lying on the ground opened their eyes and dashed towards the exit. The black rod of chakra was Nagato's means of controlling the pains. Although it was more efficient to control them while it was inserted into his flesh than affixed to the surface of his body, at the moment, Nagato disregarded these because of his own powerful chakra. Quickly occupying the exit, Nagato's feet moved. His body suddenly rose up, and his red cloud robe was billowing in the whistling wind as he passed through the doorway and landed on the ground outside the door. Seven figures in a semicircle directly surrounded the exit. Skywalk. The other people of Akatsuki looked as if they were stirred and also moved. They also left the exam space and also stood at the entrance. Orochimaru looked at Jiraiya, who looked glum, and slowly walked out, followed by Zetsu and then Jiraiya. The fog dispersed slowly, and the weight on Uchiha Abito's body disappeared. He quickly got up, took out a robe from space, and covered himself with it. His feet moved, he rose up in the air and rushed out of the exam space. Zetsu. Out of the exam space, Uchiha Abito was still in the air when he roared. A huge wooden thorn appeared in his hand. He directly thrust it towards Zetsu. Abito. Black Zetsu gave a hateful cry and looked at the incoming wooden spike with a disdainful smile. Uchiha Abito dared to attack him with wood release. Does he really think that his wood release was awakened by himself? Heh. Zetsu didn't move. Uchiha Abito suddenly became stiff and fell from midair. He was horrified to find that half of his body couldn't move, as if he was controlled by another person. What made him feel more terrified was that half of his body suddenly bulged with a whole white human-shaped creature. This is. White Zetsu. Black Zetsu looked at Uchiha Abito with disdain and told White Zetsu in Abito's body to strike directly. The moment White Zetsu made a move, Jiraiya's figure appeared in front of Abito. Ninja Technique, Wild Lion's Main Technique. Jiraiya's spiky hair instantly became longer and directly bounded Uchiha Abito together with the white Zetsu on him, saving Uchiha Abito. Swish, 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 swish. At the same time, the other Akatsuki members had moved to surround Zetsu, with Abito, Jiraiya, Orochimaru, and Itachi in the middle. They quietly waited for Nagato to speak. As soon as Nagato gave the order, they would instantly strike and turn the five people in the middle into dust. Uchiha Itachi stood quietly. 
he was the only one who didn't do anything since they came out of the space. If it had been the former me, all five of you would be dead by now. Nagato spoke slowly, his voice indescribably strange. The original lofty and cold voice, at the moment, had a different inexplicable tone of affinity. Killing people, cannot solve a dispute. War cannot achieve peace. Jutsu is the primary productive force. Zetsu, leave the ring, and I'll let you go. Nagato's words stunned Black Zetsu. He didn't expect Nagato to take the initiative to let himself go. This. Could he be afraid of my relationship with Uchiha Madara? Black Zetsu had lived for thousands of years, but at this moment, only such a possibility came to mind. Even so, it was good for him. It's just a delay in the plan, and for the time being, he could still keep the underground white Zetsus from being exposed. Black Zetsu hesitated for a few seconds, took the guy ring directly off his right pinky finger, and threw it at Nagato. Then with a deep look at Nagato's rinnegan and an eye roll at Uchiha Obito, Zetsu's body shook and sank to the ground. After waiting underground for a while, seeing that Nagato really didn't do anything else, he left with the countless white Zetsus who had just arrived in this area in a big wave. Orochimaru, take your ring. Work hard to achieve peace in the world. I'll let bygones be bygones. Orochimaru blinked and pulled out a ring from his pocket that had the word ku and put it on his left pinky finger. Glancing at Jiraiya, Orochimaru walked out of the encirclement without saying a word, and joined the group of the remaining three Akatsuki members. No one knew whether it was intentional or not, but Orochimaru joined the encirclement right next to Haydn. Haydn san, can you give me the black cloud robe in your hand first? When Haydn heard Orochimaru's words, he subconsciously hugged the robe in his arms tighter, stared at Orochimaru with wide eyes, and looked at Orochimaru with intimidation. You rotten snake, you just came back, and now you want my robe? TSK. Keep dreaming. Nagato didn't pay attention to Orochimaru's side. He took his eyes off Jiraiya and settled on Itachi. Itachi quietly lifted the shoe ring on his hand, joined the group encirclement, silently expressing everything with his action. Uchiha Itachi's heart was in turmoil right now. Besides, he didn't have much contact with Jiraiya, and he hated Uchiha Obito even more and wanted to get rid of him. Seeing this scene, the corners of Nagato's mouth picked up slightly. Jiraiya, I'm going to have to keep you here, for now, to keep you from delivering the message. Nagato then stepped into the encirclement. This time, he was ready to take matters into his own hands and capture Jiraiya. Yes, to capture Jiraiya, not to kill him. He would subdue Jiraiya, and then he would act as a teacher and educate Jiraiya. And make Jiraiya agree with him. In this way, he would have one more like-minded person. By the way, the rest of Akatsuki should also study together. And every time after listening to his lectures, each person must also submit a report. Nagato was well aware of how fast the members of Akatsuki would make progress and how painful it would be. Because in the exclusive reward. That's how he got here. Dash, binge one of the reasons why I delete the reviews. Check para comment and chapter comment. Nagato, don't go on the wrong path again. You already know that your idea is wrong. Come back to Kanahagakur with me, and I'll get justice for you and Yahiko. Jiraiya looked at Nagato with awe. He knew that he was no match for Nagato. He fought with the original six pains, but only three were destroyed with his full strength. Now, fight with Nagato in his prime. He dared not even to think about it. Justice? Nagato smiled and shook his head. Since he was beaten by the old man with that cane a few times, Nagato understood how important it was to be able to laugh. The reason why Nagato shook his head was that Jiraiya still didn't understand the situation. The exam space could revive Hashigaki Kisame, which proved that there was no difficulty in reviving a person for the space. What's more, Kabuto was Orochimaru's spy, which he knew. That was to say, Orochimaru also had a jutsu to revive the dead. He had more than one way to bring Yahiko back to life. What kind of justice was needed? Nagato didn't want to waste time with Jiraiya. From the video analysis of the first question, he had learned that if he didn't have such a smart mouth like Uzumaki Naruto did, the best way to persuade the opponent was to defeat him in battle. Tie him up and convince him slowly. Uzumaki Nagato was about to make his move when suddenly Uchiha Obito, 
who was tied by the hair, reacted mentally and his Mangekyo Sharingan slowly rotated. Immediately afterward, a pitch-black void appeared, from which two figures, one black, and one green, jumped out. Nagato raised an eyebrow, not expecting these two to appear in this way. When Hashigaki Kisame, who was carrying Samahata, saw the newcomers, his face suddenly froze, and his expression was unnatural. Hitaki Kakashi and Mike Guy came. Kakashi and Guy had just landed. When they saw that Jiraiya had subdued Uchiha Obito, they were overjoyed. They got into Kamui's dimension space at the end of the live broadcast. Sure enough, when Abito opened his Kamui's dimension space, they could also appear beside Abito. At this moment, seeing the other Akatsuki members standing at attention, the three of them suddenly put their backs against each other and took precautions. I don't have much chakra, I can't take everyone away. I must leave one person behind to break the trail. The one who spoke was Kakashi, who was already a little pale. He could barely unleash his Sharingan powers and take two people away. Jiraiya was just about to say that he should remain when he heard Mike Guy directly say, you take Jiraiya-sama and Uchiha Obito first. They know a lot more important information. I'll stay and break the trail. Hearing this, Jiraiya took a deep look at Mike Guy. Strength, understanding, and putting others first. It was with shinobi like Mike Guy, Kanoha was able to realize the title of the first shinobi village in the shinobi world. When the situation was urgent, Jiraiya immediately decided, okay, leave it to Guy. Kakashi, let's go. Kakashi glanced at Guy, his eyes fluctuating several times. While gritting his teeth, he directly opened Kamui's dimension, bringing Jiraiya and Uchiha Abido into the dimension space. Kakashi was very remorseful at the moment. If he knew Jiraiya would subdue Abido, he wouldn't have asked Guy for help and came on his own. Right now, Guy had to stay there to stop them from chasing them. With the current state of Akatsuki's people, Kakashi had already thought of what would happen to Guy, which made him even more remorseful. Don't think too much, Kakashi. This is Guy's choice. Kakashi looked at Jiraiya but found that although Jiraiya had tears in his eyes, he was full of perseverance. Uchiha Itachi looked at the motionless Nagato with surprise, and so did the other members of Akatsuki. They didn't expect the leader would simply let Kakashi and Jiraiya go. They didn't believe that their leader had no means to stop Kakashi. What's more, if he was bent on keeping Jiraiya and a move to stop them, could Jiraiya still be able to walk? The leader was no longer calm as water. Rather he was deep like the sea. Could it be that the leader really believed that, killing people, cannot solve a dispute? The Akatsuki crowd quickly shook their heads. Akatsuki, as the biggest warmonger in the shinobi world, would the leader of their organization, who was obviously super strong, convince people with virtue? Wouldn't that be a joke? While the Akatsuki members were cursing in their hearts, Mike Guy was sizing everyone up. You're Akatsuki. Guy felt that the present situation was somewhat similar to that of decades ago. At that time, his own father was facing the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, and now he was facing the even more terrifying Akatsuki. Therefore, Might Guy was ready to go all out. Now, it's my turn to be the green beast. Guy's body suddenly burst with a green light. This was the appearance of chakra burning, also a symptom of the opening of the third gate of the eight gates. The seventh. Gate of Wonder. Might Guy was condensing momentum, ready to jump straight to opening the seventh gate, when suddenly Nagato spoke a word, which stunned him. Wait a minute, Might Guy. You're trained in the eight gates. Hmm. Mike Guy was stunned. How did Nagato know this? The chakra in his body that had approached the gate of wonder point abruptly and slowly faded away. Yes. How do you know that name? Guy stared right at Nagato and suddenly noticed a crow falling on Nagato's shoulder. The crow slowly turned around, and blood-red windmill eyes suddenly caught Mike Guy's eye. Sharingan. Illusion technique. Damn it. Guy was shocked. The chakra that had been retreating was about to condense and break open the gate of wonder when he suddenly found the ground beneath him shattering, taking him with it into the sky. At the same time, two voices sounded. Chibaku Tensei. Chibaku Tensei. Nagato, together with Deva Path, used Chibaku Tensei, the Akatsuki members took out their fastest speed to run and create distance. After turning around, 
they looked at their leader in horror. They didn't expect that the first place in the binding list, the Chibaku Tensei, was actually held by their leader. What's more, they didn't expect the leader, who was so powerful, to have no martial ethics. Making a sneak attack with Deva Path was just, but it also interrupted Mike Guy's technique outbreak. They understood the devastation in Mike Guy's heart. For a while, the Akatsuki crowd looked puzzled. Hashigaki Kisame, in particular, looked at Mike Guy, who was sealed in the stone ball and was totally dazed. Fuck. Is this still possible? Directly finish the guy before he gets a chance to condense his chakra. Hashigaki Kisame felt as if he had mastered the new fighting style. He learned. Learned how to trick people. Nagato controlled the rubble to be attached to the bind in succession and felt that the struggle had disappeared. He controlled the 10 meters wide ball to come closer to him. Don't look at the fact that the Chibaku Tensei ball didn't look too big from a distance. Its power far exceeded the one used to seal Uzumaki Naruto. After all, this was Nagato and Deva Path in their prime together. Nagato patted the stone ball, the corners of his mouth smiled again and looked at the stunned eyes of the crowd. He explained, as you can see, Might Guy is the number one taijutsu user in the shinobi world, according to the shinobi world list. Even the Eight Gates is the number one in the taijutsu list. So why would I want to fight him head on? Read latest translation, chapter 60. Everyone was awesome. Only Danzo was taking a beating, on Pat Rayon. He didn't even use two hand seals. He directly struck first. Abruptly suppressing the other and gaining a person with two spots in the list. This envy. Hashigaki Kisame was feeling in his heart right now. It's so cool. It's so awesome. Looking at Mike Guy, who couldn't even fight back, was directly sealed. Hashigaki Kisame only felt relieved. At this moment, in his heart, the fear of being driven to suicide by the Might Guy instantly disappeared into thin air. His own destiny had also been changed. This made Hashigaki Kisame a little excited. Looking at his leader, Hashigaki Kisame looked forward to asking, Leader, is he dead? No, not even injured. He was just sealed. I'm going to take him to Kanahagakur. Kanahagakur. Everyone in Akatsuki was surprised again. They didn't expect the leader to move so fast. Are you going to kill Uzumaki Naruto before he grows up? Haydn's face showed a malicious smile. He looked at Hashigaki Kisame and Kakuzu, and then at Uchiha Itachi. Leader, take me with you. I want to send all those Nara clan people to see Jashin-sama. Haydn smiled grimly and then added, and that Shikamaru. No. Nagato shook his head. Now, he increasingly felt that the Akatsuki members' thoughts were too backward. It was almost impossible to compare with him, this academic master, who scored over 90 points in every subject. It seemed that the ideological education of the Akatsuki members must be put on the agenda. Nagato decided in his mind that he would teach them to study when this trip to Kanoha was done. It's not just me, it's everyone in Akatsuki. We are all going to Kanahagakur together. Ah. Uh. Everyone in Akatsuki was surprised again. They didn't expect Nagato would be so generous this time. Did he realize that one of the reasons for Akatsuki's failure was that he was fighting on his own? At this thought, the members of Akatsuki suddenly began to feel excited. Taking the whole group to Kanoha. Just thinking about it was exciting. They really wanted to see the expression on the Hokage's face when they appeared together. Before they could imagine the old face of the third Hokage, Sarutobi Hiruzen, Nagato had spoken again. Conan, rescreen the candidates for the Chunin exam in Kanoha this time and have all eligible genin from Amige Cure take it. Then Nagato looked at others, including Orochimaru. The rest of you, first sneak into Kanoha and look for Uzumaki Naruto and Hyuga Hinata's whereabouts. If you get the chance, bring them out, and remember, don't hurt them. Akatsuki's members looked at Nagato with question marks in their eyes. They didn't understand the meaning of this sentence. Sneak into Kanoha, no problem. Investigate the whereabouts of Uzumaki Naruto, no problem. But who the hell is Hyuga Hinata? What's the use of that chick other than being tough and resistant to beatings? And. They looked at each other, and all saw the disbelief in each other's eyes. 
Akatsuki was all set to infiltrate Kanoha at the risk of being discovered for the sake of kidnapping a child. All the members of Akatsuki looked at Conan together. They knew that at this time, only Bayaku could change the leader's orders. Conan was stunned by Nagato's orders and changes. She looked at Nagato's bright appearance and frowned slightly. She thought that the change in Nagato was definitely related to the exclusive reward from the exam space, but she couldn't imagine what kind of reward made Nagato change so much. What about you, Nagato? Me? When he heard Conan's question, Nagato froze. Did I express myself so unclearly? I'm taking back the sealed Mike guy to Kanoha. What else is there to do? To exchange people. First, negotiate with each other with the usual etiquette. If it doesn't work, then battle. Talk to Kanoha with affection, ask Kanoha to hand over the little younger brother and future sister-in-law. If that doesn't work, exchange them for Mike Guy. If they disagree, the members of Akatsuki should have found a clue of where the two are and bring them out secretly. If that doesn't work, I still have other ways. I have other things to do. Ladies and gentlemen, Akatsuki was founded for the sake of peace in the shinobi world. Now, the true way of peace lies in my hands. I hope that all of us will work together and make contributions towards peace in the shinobi world. Akatsuki looked at their leader speechlessly. Looking at the current leader, they suddenly missed the original cold pain a little. Leader, is getting more and more chinibyo. Daidara shook his head and turned to leave. He wasn't pain, and sneaking into Kanoha, not a direct attack, required a lot of preparation. The other Akatsuki members also left, and soon, only Nagato and Pains, who had burning gazes, were left in place. Education, we should start with children. Two days later, two figures, one big and one small stepped into Amigekure. They made no other move. Just stepping into the Amigekure and letting the rain pour down on them. They were none other than Momochi Zabuza and Haku, who came from somewhere else. Momochi Zabuza squinted at Amige Kure. When he saw that the rain that covered the village was a jutsu, he was slightly pleased. He came with a secret method to locate Samahada, and now it seems that he was right. Akatsuki should also be here. Whoosh! Whoosh! Just as Momochi Zabuza looked around, pieces of white paper suddenly floated in front of him, forming a human figure and finally turning into Conan. Who are you? Bayaku. Momochi Zabuza's husky voice sounded, I am Momochi Zabuza, an S-rank renegade shinobi from Kirigakure. I want to join Akatsuki. Conan looked at Zabuza. She turned and jumped to the building above Amigekure, come with me. Through the Rainmaker Jutsu, Nagato discovered Momochi Zabuza as soon as he entered Amigekure. At this moment, sensing that Conan had brought the other party up, Nagato stopped studying. Not long after, Conan brought Momochi Zabuza to him. Hearing that Momochi Zabuza was going to join Akatsuki, Payne's eyes lit up. He didn't expect that conveying Akatsuki's name would have such an advantage. He looked at Momochi Zabuza expectantly, without seeing him move. The terrifying pressure instantly weighed on Momochi Zabuza's body. Payne controlled the pressure to increase slowly. When Momochi Zabuza was about to collapse, the pressure on his body suddenly became lighter. Akatsuki's ring, which had a character on it, floated in front of him. From today onwards, you are Akatsuki's guy. We are committed to achieving peace in the shinobi world. Then Pain told Momochi Zabuza about the essence of Akatsuki and the plan to leave for Kanoha soon, then asked Momochi Zabuza to get ready to leave with him tomorrow. This shocked and amazed Momochi Zabuza at the same time. He didn't understand why this current leader of Akatsuki was different from the one in the exam space. As if he was behaving differently. Conan handed Momochi Zabuza a red cloud robe, which she had newly made in the past two days. Conan was scared by the army of people begging for clothes led by Kakuzu and supplemented by Orochimaru. These days, she was busy verifying the new genin in Amigekure and occupied coordinating the Akatsuki members' infiltration into Kanahagakure. She already had a headache. Glancing at Haku, Conan's eyes lit up. At this time, there were only two new genin in Amige Cure. With this girl, it was just enough to form an additional small team to take the Kanoha Chunin exam in six months. Translator, yes. 
Conan said Haku is a girl. Backslash, slash, dash, binge read latest translation chapters on Pat Rayon. Fifteen plus chapters ahead. Time was like the plumpness of a young girl. If not grasped, it would pass by in a flash. Three days later. Entrance of Kanahagakur. Saratobi Hiruzen wore his Hokage hat and Hokage cloak. Behind him was a group of Kanoha shinobis. To his left, Danzo stood coldly with his arms around his chest. Next to Danzo was Jiraiya, who had just returned yesterday. On the right, there were the two Hokage advisors. This was the highest welcome specification Kanahagakur could offer right now. Saratobi Hiruzen puffed his pipe purposefully, thinking about the recent troubles. Yesterday, Jiraiya carried the unconscious Hataki Kakashi back to the village. He said that in order to save him, Mike Guy was most likely killed in the line of duty. Hataki Kakashi was in a coma because of the serious shortage of chakra in the process of helping him escape. Saratobi Hiruzen believed in him. What Hataki Kakashi and Mike Guy did, how could he not know? He also knew that Jiraiya was saying this because he didn't want him to pester these two about leaving the village without permission. However, Saratobi Hiruzen didn't expect that. Mike Guy would stay behind. Although they didn't see Mike Guy's body, in that case, even if he was really a number one in the exam space's shinobi world list, the probability of Mike Guy's death was close to 100%. In other words, a sure death sentence. He knew the eight gates, so naturally, he knew the cost of opening the eight gates. Therefore, Saratobi Hiruzen only hoped that a few more Akatsuki members could be eliminated before Mike Guy's death. Saratobi Hiruzen sighed. Because of the live broadcast, the shinobi world had become a mess right now. No matter where he was, all he could hear was discussions about the live broadcast. In particular, the civilians living in Kanoha these days were frantically submitting their applications to leave the village, saying that Kanahagakur was too dangerous and they wanted to leave. It was hard to persuade them over and over, just to stabilize them. But then, Jiraiya brought back information on Akatsuki. Uzumaki Nagato had recovered and became even stronger. Just when Saratobi Hiruzen thought this was sufficient anxiety, the Kages of the other four shinobi villages surprisingly wanted to visit Kanoha together at this time. By the way, there was also a neutral country. Mithyun of the Land of Iron was also coming. Saratobi Hiruzen sighed again in his heart. Of course, he knew what these people were doing here. That was the only good thing that's come out of the recent period. However, to his displeasure, the meeting was held in Kanahagakur. In the past, the five Kage talks wouldn't be held in one of the five major shinobi villages to ensure security and unnecessary trouble. They would choose a neutral country or shinobi village for talks. While Saratobi Hiruzen was thinking, yellow sand suddenly swept in front of the crowd in front of Kanoha. The sand dispersed, revealing several figures. Raza, Chio, Maki, Tamari, and several other Suna shinobis. Saratobi Hiruzen was just about to say something when three figures covered with lightning came whistling by. Arriving in front of Kanoha, the fourth rakage I dissipated the chakra armor and dropped Killer B and Derui. Where is Kanoha's noble green beast, Mike Guy? Ice loud voice directly shouted out, making the faces of some people in Kanahagakur who knew about what happened look ugly. Saratobi Hiruzen took a deep breath and pressed down his anger. His voice was somewhat disappointed. Two days ago, Joan and Mike Guy was killed in the line of duty. What does the fourth rakage have to say? Dead? I was stunned. Then, after sweeping his eyes at Jiraiya, whose face was incomparably ugly, as if he thought of something, he shrugged his shoulders. He came here mainly to ask Kanoha for information, and beating Mike Guy was just an interlude. Now that Mike Guy was dead. How could he compete for titles with a dead man? Gentlemen, sorry I'm late. While speaking, Mifune, from the Land of Iron, came running from a distance with a group of people. I nodded his head, glanced sharply at the people brought by Mifune, and found that they were all senior samurais. They waited for a while, and Turumi Mei walked up slowly with a group of people. After waiting for a while, Anoki appeared. At this point, the Kages of the five shinobi villages and Mifune of the Land of Iron gathered for the first time. Gentlemen, I came to Kanoha this time, besides sharing information on Akatsuki, I want a spot for Iwagakure in Kanoha's Chunin exam. 
Just as they sat down, Anoki directly spoke. He didn't bother to beat around the bush with these juniors, directly explaining his purpose in coming. Exam quota. Sarutobi Hiruzen paused. He didn't expect Iwagakure to come up with such an idea. Originally, Kanoha's Chunin exam was to be held six months later. After all, Uzumaki Naruto's class of students wouldn't take the graduation test until two days later. His target is Naruto. Jiraiya immediately thought Anoki had such an idea. Speaking of Uzumaki Naruto, Jiraiya hadn't had time to see the child since he returned to the village. The original plan for Kanoha's Chunin exam didn't include Iwagakure. Sarutobi Hiruzen tapped the stem of his pipe slowly and methodically, then looked at the other three kages, is that what you all have come for? Sarutobi Hiruzen was delighted to see the three people thinking at the same time. Just as he was about to feign refusal, he heard Anoki's sorrowful voice ring out. Sarutobi Hiruzen, don't be too quick to refuse. If you were Akatsuki and knew that Kanoha would stop you in the future, which village would you be attacking first? You. Sarutobi Hiruzen's face suddenly showed an angry expression. When he was about to hit the table, he heard Anoki continue. Your Kanoha is now the first shinobi village to be potentially attacked by Akatsuki, and even now, members of Akatsuki are already lurking in your Kanahigakur. That's impossible. Sarutobi Hiruzen continued to put on an angry face. What Anoki had thought of, he had naturally thought of long ago, and now he was merely retreating to advance. With Jiraiya around, Kanoha had the advantage of the information, and it was easy to set a trap for these guys. As for Akatsuki's infiltration into Kanahagakur, it was impossible. Now, Kanoha's root and Umbu were monitoring the entire Kanahagakur, and any suspicious person would be checked out. Akatsuki couldn't hide inside here at all. Akatsuki aims to capture the tailed beasts, and we all have Jinchuriki in our villages, so we are all their targets. Akatsuki's strength is not something that one of our shinobi villages can fight against on its own, so we must unite. In our current situation, we certainly can't form an allied force. After all, we can't just rely on a live broadcast to trust each other. However, we can start an offensive and defensive alliance against Akatsuki. Share all the information on Akatsuki. When an Akatsuki member is found, or one of our shinobi villages is found to be an Akatsuki target, the other villages must send someone to help. I agree. Ice eyes flashed. This plan seemed to be fair to all five villages, but it was actually a kind of fishing in troubled waters for Kanoha. He loved to take advantage of the situation. Raza glanced at Sarutobi Hiruzen and said nothing. His son Agakir was once defeated, which almost made them a vassal state to Kanoha. Suna originally had a quota in this Chunin exam, and he was trying to destroy Kanoha together with Orochimaru through this Chunin exam. But he didn't expect such a thing to happen. We are simply making an offensive and defensive alliance against Akatsuki. Raza's gaze fluctuated for a moment as if to emphasize and support the opinion. They took the bait. Sarutobi Hiruzen smiled coldly in his heart. A feeling of intellectual superiority came over him. Anoki was right. Akatsuki's first target would definitely be Kanoha. Therefore, bringing all the villages into the water together was Sarutobi Hiruzen's strategy. Sarutobi Hiruzen's eyes fluctuated. The first goal was achieved. Now, it was time for the second goal. The battle has begun, and the children cannot be allowed to continue to rest on their laurels. I'm going to advance Kanoha's Chunin exam in five days. In addition, to show our sincerity this time, all genins in your shinobi villages and students from ninja school who graduated this year can take part in the exam. Sarutobi Hiruzen's words suddenly surprised the others, and then they were overjoyed and rushed to agree. They had such a plan, but they didn't expect Sarutobi Hiruzen would propose it himself. Immediately afterward, the five people regulated and elaborated on the above two points. On the other hand, Mifune pestered Jiraiya, who was looking for Naruto and asked him about sage mode. A day later, all of Kanoha Ninja School's current graduating class graduated early and were informed that they would be divided into separate classes and directly follow the other genins to take the Chunin exam in four days. Sarutobi Hiruzen's big move immediately attracted the attention of those who cared. That night, a pure white snake climbed out of Kanahagakur, arrived outside Kanoha, and climbed into the hands of a village girl. 
After circling in the hands of the village girl, the snake spat out a note and then disappeared. When she opened the note, she read, Orochimaru-sama, Kanoha's Chunin exam will start early in four days. Raza sent Maki to contact me, ready to continue pushing the Kanoha's annihilation plan. Suna will be responsible for creating chaos. At that time, you and he will jointly kill Sarutobi Hiruzen. After that, the other shinobi villages will not give up this opportunity to strike, and Kanoha will definitely be seriously damaged. In addition, I was recently targeted and unable to pry into Uzumaki Naruto's whereabouts, surrounded by a team of Umbu and rooters taking turns watching every day. I suspect they think I am the Kabuto mentioned in the exam space. In Kanahagakur, Akatsuki's undead duo transformed into an elderly couple walking along the streets of Kanoha. They were the first team to infiltrate Kanoha, and for that reason, the two of them moved quite a bit. Hey, what is the leader's problem? All of us at Akatsuki could have just gotten Kanoha out of the way. Why go to all this trouble? Listening to Haydn's complaints, Kakuzu, who took the form of an old woman, glanced at Haydn coldly. As the most frequent teammate changer in Akatsuki, Haydn was the longest teammate who followed Kakuzu. Not because he was immortal, but because his heart was useless to Kakuzu. His head didn't have a bounty on it either. That was all. That's something you can say to the leader. Haydn sniffed, looked at Kakuzu speechlessly, and cried out. Have you noticed that there are more ninjas from other villages? Isn't it because of the impromptu earliness of Kanoha's Chunin exams? I heard that in this batch, many students graduated early. Haydn touched his flabby face and looked over to a dirty little girl on the side of the road, who he felt as if she had been looking at him. When there are more people, there will be chaos. Now, most shinobi in Kanoha are maintaining law and order, which is also beneficial to our actions. Kakuzu nodded his head. He had found several bounty hunters among the shinobis from these villages. These people came to Kanoha. It seems that we should speed up. The leader and new members are already on their way. If we can't find Uzumaki Naruto and Hyuga Hinata before the leader comes. Let me see. Haydn didn't wait for Kakuzu to finish his sentence before walking towards the little girl across the street with his black pretentious walking stick. Haydn learned when he came here that Uzumaki Naruto was now about the same age as this girl. Instead of looking aimlessly, it was better to ask the child of the same age as Naruto. Hello, little girl. Haydn bowed, greeted the young girl. He was just about to continue to get close when he suddenly noticed the young girl was staring at him with a burning look. That look, including three points of surprise and seven points of joy, made Haydn feel his face nervously, what's wrong with my face? The little girl looked around at other people in the street, saw that no one was paying attention to them, motioned for Haydn to squat down, and then whispered in Haydn's ear. Believe in Jashin and gain eternal life. An apostle of Jashin. Haydn's eyes suddenly widened. His body stepped back and looked at the little girl in front of him with horror. He had been out of Yugikura for so long and had never met any other Jashinists. He always thought he was the only one in the whole shinobi world, but he didn't expect to meet one in Kanoha. Is she also? Without waiting for Haydn's inquiry, the girl directly pulled Haydn and ran to one side. Haydn gave Kakuzu a look and let her take him by the hand. The girl took Haydn and ran for a while, then arrived at a dilapidated house. She sat Haydn down excitedly, poured Haydn a glass of water after panting. Then squatting in front of Haydn, with her hands on her face, she happily looked at Haydn. Hey, you are the Jashinist Haydn-sama, right? Pfff. Haydn almost spewed out a mouthful of water. His getup wasn't just a transformation, but also Kakuzu's earth grudge and some other stuff. Kanoha's shinobis didn't recognize him. How did a child recognize it? Haydn had long confirmed that this little girl was just an ordinary girl with no chakra in her body. Otherwise, she wouldn't be reduced to the lower levels of Kanoha. Where are your parents? Looking at the dilapidated house, Haydn frowned. The house looked like it hadn't been lived in for a long time, and he didn't understand why the girl would want to live here. He wasn't sympathetic and felt sorry for the little girl. He simply wanted to know if the girl's parents were also faithful followers of Jashin-sama. They were burned to death by the village. I took advantage of the disorder to escape to Kanoha. The little girl's face was calm without a trace of sadness. 
no outsiders are allowed to enter Kanoha. I came along with a caravan doing business with Kanoha, and I was left behind in Kanoha because I was too much trouble for the caravan. How did you know that I'm Haydn? I've seen you before. The little girl said justifiably, and H. Dirty Face was full of joy. A few days ago, she saw Haydn on the live broadcast and knew that the other party also believed in Jashinism. Therefore, Haydn gave her a sense of long-lost affinity. Unexpectedly, there are people who believe in Jashin-sama. I thought that after my father and mother died, I was the only one. With that, she looked at Haydn expectantly, Haydn-sama, may I join you in conveying the teachings of Jashinism? You can't. He has other things to do. Kakuzu appeared inside the house at some point, listened to the little girl's inquiry, and directly helped Haydn refuse. Haydn was somewhat conflicted at the moment. On the one hand, he wanted to help the little girl follow the teachings of Jashinism. On the other hand, he had to complete the task from the leader. You came to Kanoha for a purpose, right? The little girl wasn't discouraged. In her past, she had been rejected many times, and had long known that she must be worthy of someone else's help. If I can help you accomplish your purpose, Haydn Sama, will you take me with you? Haydn's eyes lit up at the words. He knew that after completing this task, Akatsuki would certainly have a period of calm, and he could take advantage of this time to find other Jashin believers with her. Do you know Uzumaki Naruto and Hyuga Hinata? Haydn spoke with some eagerness. He couldn't wait to bring them both to the leader now, and then he would go with the little girl to find Jashin's congregation. You're talking about him. The girl suddenly realized. If it were anyone else, she really wouldn't have known, but Uzumaki Naruto was now a popular figure in Kanahagakur. He's been in and out of the Hyuga residence a lot lately. I've heard people say that he's going to be the Hyuga clan's son-in-law. I don't know if that's true or not. However, I know that he now eats ramen without paying for it because I've seen it with my own eyes. Many shops warmly invited him to eat. They even hung up a sign that says Naruto doesn't need to pay, saying that it was for Naruto to take care of them in the future, but Naruto only eats ramen. Come on, and I'll take you to find him. After saying that, the girl took Haydn and went out again. Kakuzu saw the two leave and leaped gently to the top of the eaves. There, a kunai was pressed against a stack of explosive tags, with a note next to it. There was only one sentence in the note, and the time marked happened to be today. Uzumaki Naruto will take this chunin exam, creating chaos and opportunities. Kakuzu was surprised. No wonder he saw so many bounty hunters and signs on the road. It turned out that their target was Uzumaki Naruto. Kakuzu put the note back, glanced at the explosive tags, jumped down, and chased after Haydn and the girl. In Amage Cure. Conan looked at the twenty-four genins in front of her, waved her hand, and marched toward Kanoha. Originally, for Kanoha's Chunin exam, six months later, Amage Cure planned to send seven teams, a total of twenty-one people. Among them, Conan's favorite team was the team composed of Oboro, Mubi, and Kagari. But now that Nagato had asked for all the shinobis who meet the requirements to participate, Conan turned Amagekure upside down and managed to find two newly promoted genins. It so happened that Momochi Zabuza arrived with Haku. Otherwise, Conan didn't know where to find a genin to make a team for them. Speaking of Haku, Conan was very surprised. He was a boy with beautiful eyes. More importantly, he also had ice release, a rare bloodline limit. Because of this, Conan paid a little more attention to the team he was in. With this attention, Conan discovered something very interesting. Dash, binge if we cross 550 power stones today, I will release one extra chapter tomorrow. You can also read the next 15 plus chapters ahead on Pat Rayon right now. Nah, Uzumaki Naruto is eating ramen inside. I also want to eat some ramen. No money. You're a bad man, I don't like you. Kanna puffed up and looked at Kakuzu. She brought him here, and he wouldn't even invite her to eat one bowl of ramen. Kanna looked at Uzumaki Naruto, who was devouring his food in the ramen store, with deep envy in her eyes. Eating ramen, free of charge. He must be very happy. Haydn saw the little girl pouting. Stretching out his hand, he took out a money bag from under Kakuzu's sleeve and threw it to Kanna. Yes. 
Kanna cheered and rushed into Ramanicharaku, boss, three bowls of ramen. There are too many people around him, and we can't get exposed. We can't lay hands on him right now. Kakuzu glanced around Ramanicharaku and closed his eyes slowly as if the tired old lady was closing her eyes. After Kakuzu finished speaking, he suddenly found Kanna walking out with a bowl of ramen. Looking at Kakuzu, she tilted her little head and handed the noodles to Haydn. Haydn froze, looked at Kakuzu, smiled warmly, and took the ramen. Kanna threw the money bag to Kakuzu and skipped her way back. Jealous, right? Ha ha ha. Haydn blew a few breaths in Kakuzu's direction, looked at Kakuzu's ugly face, laughed, and took a big bite. Kakuzu got up and was about to leave when he found Kanna holding a bowl in front of him. Hey, big bad guy, this is for you. Kakuzu froze, his pair of eyes narrowed. He did not expect that this small girl had even bought a bowl for him. Watching Kanna run back again, Kakuzu suddenly spoke up, this little thing of yours, it's quite interesting. That's right. Boss, do it. I've watched the surroundings. That kid is alone. Not far away from the undead duo, a dozen wandering shinobis stared at Ramanichiraku. They weren't professional bounty hunters. However, the price offered by the underground bounty house was too high, so high that even if they knew that Kanoha was at the deep end of the pool, they still snuck into it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The person who was called the boss squeezed his somewhat damp palm, and his heart was incomparably nervous. Although this wasn't the first time he had done such a thing, it was the first time he looked for trouble in a major shinobi village. At the same time, on the other side, several figures were looking at this group of wandering shinobis, and the presence at the head of the group snorted coldly. I never thought that these damn guys would dare to steal business from us. Wait a minute, let them do it first. Let them attract Kanoha's attention, and then we'll make our move. He he he, the boss is wise. Meanwhile, in the Hokage's office. Hokage-sama, the Kazakage looking for you. Raza is looking for me. Sarutobi Hiruzen was stunned. At this time, all the candidates taking the Chunin exam had arrived in Kanoha, and the Kages of the other shinobi villages should all be resting in their exclusive places. What does he want from me? He said that he knew something about Orochimaru and wanted to consult with you. Orochimaru? Sarutobi Hiruzen once again wondered how Orochimaru had anything to do with Raza. Let him come in. At the Uchiha clan's area, a figure in a black robe stood there quietly. In front of him was the ancestral monument of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Itachi looked at it for a long time and finally concluded that the tablet had been tampered with. Uchiha Itachi instantly had a murderous look. As expected, behind the Uchiha riots. It wasn't just the Uchiha clan who encouraged his father to rebel. There was another conspiracy behind this. Do it. Aji, Asen. You lead the men to create chaos and attract the attention of the others. Ashi and Ago, you come with me. Seeing that Uzumaki Naruto was leaving after eating some ramen, the leader of the wandering shinobis gave a direct order. A dozen figures scurried out together, kunai explosive talismans in their hands shot indiscriminately, and suddenly a series of explosions appeared on the streets of Kanahigakur. Boom. Boom. The sound of explosions continued. Umbu and Root, who were scattered all over Kanoha, moved simultaneously and rushed towards where the explosion took place. Looking at the explosion not far away, Kakuzu and Haydn frowned at the same time. They didn't expect someone to launch an attack at this time. Isn't that just stupid? Kakuzu squinted at the figure rushing towards Raman Ichiraku and frowned. Such a crude attack couldn't be from his own colleague. Then, Kakuzu saw several figures behind these people, and suddenly his heart fell. Be careful. Uzumaki Naruto heard the explosion, looked at Kanna, who was walking out the door with a bowl of ramen and directly threw her down. A shattered log with fire shot from the side of the two and plunged into the opposite wall. Uzumaki Naruto got up, picked up Kanna, and ran. Opposite the two, watching Kanna being taken away by Uzumaki Naruto, Kakuzu and Haydn looked at each other and quietly followed. After them. When the wandering shinobi saw Uzumaki Naruto flee and was just about to give the order, a brilliant glint of a blade appeared. In the next moment, he was already on the ground. Immediately afterward, countless slashes lit up, 
and all the wandering shinobis were eliminated before they had time to react. Confirmed, all dead. Confirmed, all dead. Kakashi, wearing a cat-faced mask, listened to his subordinate's report and pulled his own knife out of the bounty hunter leader's chest with an expressionless face. These guys, who thought they were well disguised, didn't know that both the wandering shinobis and the bounty hunters were exposed as early as the first moment they entered Kanoha. The reason why they were allowed to live until today was because of the orders from the third Hokage to make an example out of them. Naruto. The root team is following him. Can it be solved quietly? Haydn looked at the figure with a mask jumping on the roof in front of him, with a thoughtful look in his eyes. We can't. Kakuzu shook his head. The other three squads were all elite shinobis of Kanoha. It wasn't difficult to kill them, but it wasn't something they could do quietly. Hmm. Something's going on. Kakuzu was stunned and saw the masked figures jumping from above, enclosing Naruto and Kanna in the middle. Your. Naruto had just shielded Kanna behind him, and before he could finish, a hand slash struck him on the back of the neck. Naruto's eyes went dark, and he directly passed out. Carrying Naruto on his shoulder, the man glanced at Kanna. Crack. A pair of hands suddenly reached out from the back of Kanna's neck, covering her head with one hand and holding her chin with the other, and gently twisted it. Kanna suddenly lost her life. Everything happened in a flash. Before Haydn and Kakuzu could even react, Kanna had already been killed by Kanoha's root. Looking at Kanna slowly falling down, Haydn paused. Then instantly flew into a rage. He didn't understand why the umbu of Kanoha would kill her. Just because she saw Uzumaki Naruto being abducted. It turned out, Kanoha was no different from those bounty hunters. Not even as puritanical as a bounty hunter. Dare to harm Jashin Sama's follower. You. All of you have to die. Haydn's voice sounded like the wail of evil spirits. He slowly pulled out his retractable spear and gave it a gentle tug. Haydn, calm down. Kakuzu stretched out his hand and grabbed Haydn's shoulder, trying to stop Haydn, only to find that Haydn's rickety-looking body was already standing tall, and somehow the red cloud robe had already appeared on him. My people were killed. You're telling me to calm down. Now, I finally know why there are so few followers of Jashinism. If the wicked are not removed, it's difficult for believers to survive. Haydn looked at Kanoha's umbu not far away, got up slowly, and walked towards them. The tip of the black retractable spear swept against the ground, making a harsh sound. Kakuzu, what is your faith? Money. Sure enough, you are a bad man. Haydn stopped and looked back at Kakuzu, in the past, I only knew to preach. Now, I know that punishing evil is more important. Hmm, wait for the leader to collect our bodies. Seeing Haydn's self-exposure, Kakuzu shrugged indifferently, and his body also went back to his original form. I must be insane, going crazy like this with you. He knew that the Kages of the five major shinobi villages were now in Kanahagakur. Akatsuki. It's Akatsuki's Kakuzu and Haydn. The two showed up and were about to snatch Uzumaki Naruto from the root members. Quick, tell Danzo-sama, quickly. Akatsuki's undead duo have invaded Kanoha. Bonus chapter, what happened? Akatsuki organization. Akatsuki is coming, Akatsuki is invading. What? So, should we move? Kanoha is too dangerous too. I blame you. Saying Kanoha is safe and tricking us into coming here. Me? Stop blaming me. Who would have thought the Kanoha, which was obviously super strong, would also be overly destructive? In the house, a couple of civilians shivered and took shelter. From time to time, a burst of running footsteps sounded on their roof. That was Kanoha's shinobis, assembling rapidly. What about Raza? The third Suchikage, Anoki, solemnly floated in midair. Behind him was a group of skilled shinobis from Iwagakure. What a good scheme, Sarutobi Hiruzen. Anoki's mind was blazing. He didn't see Sarutobi Hiruzen set up until this moment. A good scheme. Now it seemed that the reason why Sarutobi Hiruzen had advanced Kanoha's Chunin exam, on the one hand, as he said, was to train the new strength of the shinobi village and not let them get too comfortable. 
After all, at their current age, the battlefield was at least a little over ten years ago. On the other hand, this was Sarutobi Hiruzen's baiting plan. He knew that Akatsuki was most likely to attack Kanahagakur first, so he wanted to draw Akatsuki out through the Chunin exam while five shinobi villages were gathered. Unexpectedly, Akatsuki really took the bait. Anoki grunted coldly, ready to fight Akatsuki off, then find Sarutobi Hiruzen to cause trouble. How dare you treat me as a tool? Kazakage-sama ordered us to help Kanoha fight first. He will arrive later. Maki heard Anoki's follow-up question and spoke without humbleness. Now, Suna and Oto were ready to attack, just waiting for the Kazakage to succeed. With Kanoha without a leader and Akatsuki and other shinobi villages working together, Kanoha would be destroyed in one fell swoop. It's just. A trace of worry flashed in Maki's heart, at this time, did Kazakage-sama make the right choice? You all deserve to die. Haydn ran between the members of Kanoha's route, one by one. The retractable spear in his hand penetrated the head of a shinobi, and the mask on the person's face shattered open. Without looking, Haydn charged straight for the others. Haydn's heart was full of anger. He finally found a Jashinist's, but Kanoha killed her. He wanted to kill them all. He ignored the opponent's sharp blade thrusting at him, allowing it to strike his black as iron red cloud robe, emitting a dang dang sound. The next moment, Haydn swept the retractable spear in his hand, and the guy directly died. Fire release, searing migraine. Kakuzu instantly arrived and sliced a shinobi's neck. Then, he controlled his earth grudge doppelganger to spit out a fire release, killing a shinobi who was about to attack Haydn from behind. Haydn, it's time to go. Kakuzu had no religion and wasn't a believer. He couldn't appreciate Haydn's anger at the moment. He didn't even understand what Haydn was so mad about. Isn't it just a woman? What for? Lightning release, double lariat. A hoarse, low roar sounded, making Kakuzu pale. That jutsu. There was no mistaking it. It could only be that person. The rakage. Kakuzu looked in the direction of the voice, his intermediate armament hockey was opened, and his whole person instantly looked dark. At the next moment, a figure with lightning release chakra gathered all over his body rapidly rushed in. The thunder roared, and after only one tenth of a breath, the other person had already rushed to Kakuzu. His elbow was raised, directly hitting Kakuzu's face. Boom! Kakuzu didn't have any chance to react at all and was directly prevented from falling over. Behind him, a broken mask fell out of Kakuzu's red robe, and Kakuzu's body shook, standing there as if nothing was wrong. Kakuzu looked pale and looked at the broken mask at his feet. He didn't expect to defend himself with armament hockey but was still killed by a blow. This is horrible. Was the fourth rakage that powerful? Kakuzu's eyes rolled and absorbed the fire attributed doppelganger behind him into his body, and only after doing so did he feel a little more at ease. At the same time, the fourth rakage had appeared in front of Haydn and jumped gently above Haydn's head. Lighting chakra converged on his feet, splitting fiercely from top to bottom. Guillotine drop. Bang. At this moment, Haydn's whole body also became pitch black. His hand was holding the retractable spear to block the fourth rakage's foot. The retractable spear was also covered by Haydn with the armament hockey. Otherwise, it will be kicked to pieces by this rakage. Crack. Crack crack. The sounds from the retractable spear make Haydn's expression change. Looking at the cracking retractable spear, Haydn looked angry. The retractable spear suddenly shattered. Haydn advanced, ignoring Rakage's slamming fist. The tip of the broken spear stabbed the fourth Rakage in the eye. Haydn's mouth opened, ready to catch the blood spurting out directly with his mouth. Then he would use the curse to kill the fourth Rakage instantly. Elbow bolt. Looking at Haydn's attack, I didn't dodge. He gathered chakra in his elbow and slammed it towards Haydn's chest. The punch, which was obviously thrown afterward, landed directly on Haydn's body. Haydn's armament hockey was directly smashed, and the tremendous force directly threw him back. Tsk, 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 if it isn't Haydn and Kakuzu. Why are they so miserable? Daidara's cheeky voice came from behind Haydn, and in the next moment, Haydn felt a pair of palms against his back, trying to counteract the force on him. And then. 
Haydn felt the person behind him flying backward while carrying him. Shit. Why are you so aggressive, Sasori? Sasori, help me quickly. Boom. At Haydn's scream, a puppet appeared from nowhere behind the two, directly stopping them. That Daydara kid? Anoki drifted away, looking at Daydara and Haydn, who fell to the ground, his face changed slightly. It seemed that Akatsuki sent more than just Haydn and Kakuzu this time. Anoki looked at the chakra line linking to the puppet, his expression changed. He looked up, and his face instantly shifted dramatically. When everyone saw Anoki's demeanor and looked up, they suddenly paled and acted even worse than Anoki. How, how is this possible? Above the crowd, a handsome boy wearing a red robe and orange hair quietly floated in the sky. If a few of them came, then so be it. But he was surrounded by hundreds of puppets wearing red robes. These puppets were filled with all kinds of weapons, and chakra lines were connected to the central person's body, filled with the aura of depression. Performance of a hundred puppets. It's a sorry. Chio slowly emerged from the crowd. She just heard Anoki's cry. Because she didn't know where Raza had gone and was worried that soon as Maki wasn't enough for this occasion, she came out. Unexpectedly, she saw Sasori. The only way to break performance of a hundred puppets, besides killing the manipulator, is to cut the other party's connection to the puppets in the first place. As soon as Chiyo's words were spoken, Turumi made blatantly attacked. Her bloodline limit, lava release, could cover all the puppets in a wide range. Moreover, her melting apparition technique was very corrosive, which could disconnect the chakra line. Lava release, melting apparition technique. Chirumi Mei took a large breath and spat out a large amount of acid from her mouth in the next moment, directly coating the puppets in the sky. Who? A figure in a red cloud robe flashed from the many puppets, looked at the incoming acid, opened his mouth, and ejected a large amount of water, enough to form a lake. Water release, water colliding wave. The attacker was none other than Hashigaki Kisame, who had been hiding among the puppets to protect Sasori's puppets. Ha ha ha. Shinobis, are you amazed? I can fly. Daidara laughed out loud. His feet moved, and his body suddenly rose from the ground, as if stepping on an invisible ladder, and ran up in a fluid motion. Seeing this, Haydn and Kakuzu, not caring about their wounds, initiated skywalk and went straight up into the air. Below, Kanoha and the countless shinobis from the five major shinobi villages looked pale as they looked up at the terrifying scene above. Five Akatsuki members wearing red robes were surrounded by hundreds of red-robed puppets as if five demon lords were floating above Kanahagakur with a group of evil spirits ready to bind their souls. Suddenly, everyone looked to the other side of the sky, where several figures were whizzing by. They walked in the air at a strange pace, and the figure at the end was carrying a man on his back. That's not all. The figure in front of these people, with one hand in the sky, controlling a ten-meter-wide black ball in his hand, approached. They were so fast that they arrived on top of the crowd in the blink of an eye. After seeing their faces, everyone felt as if they were plunged into an ice cave. Seeing their cold eyes, some people had started to go weak in the legs and fell to the ground in fear. Some even pissed themselves. Who is it, who is bullying my Akatsuki members? Meanwhile, in Kanoha's Hokage's office. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at the mysterious Raza with a calm face. Raza, the Kazakage, wasn't strong enough, and his wisdom couldn't fix the situation. He couldn't see the bigger picture, let alone making Sarutobi Hiruzen, Anoki, and Turumi may stop looking down on him. After all, under his management, Sunagakir gradually became the weakest of the five shinobi villages in the shinobi world. Just like Kirigakure, under the reign of the fourth Mizukage. What's more, he was almost overtaken by Turumi Mei. Suno was weak, which was why Sunagakir was attached to Kanahagakur to a certain extent. Of course, the main reason was their failure in the Third Shinobi World War. Magnet release, golden prison. Raza's hands quickly made seals, and then his hands slammed together. A large amount of golden sand spilled out from under him. The golden sand rapidly spread out, and the Hokage's office was completely filled and sealed in an instant. Inside the gold prison, Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at Raza with a grim face. The pipe in his mouth fell to the table. Because Akatsuki appeared, 
Sarutobi Hiruzen was afraid that something would change, so he deployed the Kanoha secret guards around him to check the situation. Now, the staff in Hokage's office could only fight by themselves. Raza's technique surrounded the interior of Hokage's office with gold sand. No one could see anything from the outside, and no sound could be transmitted outside. The clerical staff below wouldn't even know what was going on up there. Raza, what are you doing? Are you going to start a war between Suna and Kanoha? War. Raza looked at Sarutobi Hiruzen with scorn as if he had heard a funny joke. He stared at Sarutobi Hiruzen and took out a small white snake from his pocket. Snake. Sarutobi Hiruzen froze. Then, he felt the somewhat familiar chakra from the snake and felt startled. A flame jutsu erupted from his mouth and shot towards the white snake. Orochimaru. Fire release, great fireball technique. Just when the white snake was about to be struck by the blast, the little snake's big mouth stretched and spat out a bigger snake. Then, like a reverse nesting doll, each snake got bigger and bigger. In the end, the snake directly spat out a soggy man from its mouth. Orochimaru. He was wearing Akatsuki's robe, covered with mucus. When he saw the fireball, he flicked his wrist, and a slender sword appeared in his hand. Hung the hand holding the sword shook gently, and in the humming sound of the Kusanagi sword, the sword turned pitch black. Ha! At the sound of Orochimaru's soft snort, the Kusanagi sword slashed through the fireball, which unexpectedly split it in half and streaked away from Orochimaru, exploding behind him, blowing up a wave of sand. This. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at Orochimaru incredulously. After all these years, has his sword skill become as strong as this? In the shinobi world, jutsu confrontation was normal, but cutting through jutsu with a weapon was next to impossible. Because cutting jutsu required not only nature transformation, chakra, and combat skills, but also other more difficult things. Except for Kanoha's white fang and mifun, Sarutobi Hiruzen hadn't heard of anyone who had this ability in recent years. Even Hitaki Kakashi's Chidori that could cut through some jutsu, but that was only jutsu, not his father's blade. No, it's not Orochimaru, it's that black. Armament Haki. After thinking everything over, Sarutobi Hiruzen paused. Jiraiya never gave him information that armament Haki would have a restraining effect on jutsu, could it be? Orochimaru's own improved armament Haki. Orochimaru looked at Sarutobi Hiruzen and didn't explain. He took out a scroll and patted it gently. Two coffins with one and two written on them suddenly appeared in the sand prison. Raza's golden sand prison was very strange. It isolated sound and prevented the opponent from performing summoning techniques, so Orochimaru purposefully prepared this. Magnet release, gold dust imperial funeral. Raza raised the golden sand all over the sky and attacked Sarutobi Hiruzen. Because of the tight space, he couldn't exert all of his strength. After all, Gold Dust Imperial Funeral was a move that didn't distinguish between friend or foe. Sarutobi Hiruzen leaped up high and attached chakra to his hands, attaching himself to the ceiling, thus avoiding Raza's attack. While they were fighting, Orochimaru's neck suddenly stretched out strangely and bit Sarutobi Hiruzen. Sarutobi Hiruzen couldn't escape, Orochimaru had bit his foot. Huh, Sarutobi Hiruzen, today is the day you'll die. Raza sneered. His hands clap on the yellow sand on the ground. A golden sand spike emerged in midair and aimed at Sarutobi Hiruzen. Magnet release, gold dust world method. A thin bamboo shoot like golden sand spike shot flew toward Sarutobi Hiruzen. Sarutobi Hiruzen raised an earth release to block the flying thorns, and more than a dozen shurikens were thrown toward Raza. Shuriken Shadow Clone Technique Under Raza's shocked eyes, more than a dozen shurikens directly turned into hundreds of thousands. The dark shurikens were like rain. The most terrible thing was that the force behind every shuriken was frightening. Raza rolled up the yellow sand and surrounded himself in it, and countless shurikens stabbed on the golden sand shield. They jabbed in one tip at a time. From the inside, black dense blade tips covered the entire golden sand shield. It was so dense that a normal person would instantly pass out in fear after seeing this. Orochimaru, why aren't you moving? Raza's angry voice was about to continue to curse, but he suddenly felt something and looked back. But, it was too late. 
Orochimaru's head was hovering ghostly behind him. A shuriken was curled around his tongue, and it stabbed straight into Raza's heart. Poof! Blood instantly erupted. Orochimaru moved his neck and pulled his head back. Orochimaru, you betrayed me. Raza looked at Orochimaru angrily, pointing one hand at Orochimaru and holding a sand pillar with the other hand as his body shook. He felt his power being rapidly stripped away and felt his vision rapidly blurring. The next moment, with a bang, he directly fell to the ground. Only then did Orochimaru's sinister voice ring out, some people can only be killed by, me. Oh, it's ironic that the untrustworthy end up dying at the hands of the even more untrustworthy, Raza. Sarutobi Hiruzen sarcastically looked at the dead Raza and then looked at Orochimaru. Since the other party had turned against them at this time, he must have left the Kanoha village completely. Fortunately, after Raza's death, the summoning technique could be used. Summoning technique, Enma. Watching his sensei's movements, the corner of Orochimaru's mouth grinned. Sarutobi was unable to distinguish whether it was a smile or grief. Sensei, do you like the funeral I prepared for you? Orochimaru stretched out his hand and knocked on the two coffins. Two figures walked out of them. Looking at the two figures, Sarutobi Hiruzen instantly sucked in a cold breath. He didn't expect that Orochimaru not only desecrated the dead, but he actually desecrated the two first kages of Kanoha. Orochimaru, you deserve to die. Sarutobi Hiruzen instantly became furious. He thought of the army of the dead in the future Fourth Shinobi World War, and his eyes were suddenly filled with killing intent. Originally, he wanted to escape, but now. Orochimaru must die. In the future, he would be more threatening to Kanoha than Akatsuki was. At least, Kanoha had Naruto to fight against Akatsuki, and Jiraiya also said that when Pain invaded their village, Kanoha didn't lose anyone. But Orochimaru was different. As long as I don't let Orochimaru's desecration of the dead technique spread, the Fourth Shinobi World War may just. With this in mind, Sarutobi Hiruzen tightened his grip on the adamantine staff and raised the stick's head, pointing it at Orochimaru. I taught you jutsu, but I didn't teach you to be a man. This is my fault. Orochimaru, it's time to settle this. On the other hand, Sasori saw the leader coming and directly put away all the puppets. Nagato took Pain and Hashigaki Kisame all the way to the Akatsuki group, glanced at Haydn and Kakuzu, who were in a mess, and looked down quietly. The atmosphere instantly froze. Below, all the shinobis saw the many figures above them while their faces were stunned. It was silent throughout Kanoha, pin drop silence. Jiraiya looked at the people above, and his heart sank. He knew everyone from Akatsuki who entered the exam space last time. He was aware that Zetsu and Abito had left. In comparison, Jiraiya was shocked to find that Akatsuki was only missing Konan, Orochimaru, and Uchiha Itachi. Could it be that might guy killed the three of them before death? But, Akatsuki has one new person. Jiraiya stared at Momochi Zabuza, who was being carried by Naraka Pain, and his thoughts raced. Jiraiya never thought Nagato would be so cruel this time, directly bringing everyone in Akatsuki to kill him. Now, Akatsuki members gathered in Kanoha. No. It wasn't just Akatsuki. It should be said that all the skilled combat forces in the shinobi world were gathered in Kanoha. If there was a battle, the consequences would be unimaginable. And even if he knew all of Akatsuki's weaknesses, he only told Sarutobi Hiruzen. With Jiraiya's knowledge of Sarutobi Hiruzen, he would certainly not tell the other shinobis from other shinobi villages about this information right now. Therefore, Jiraiya wasn't sure who would win the battle. Sensing that the morale of his side had been affected, the fourth rakage grunted coldly. Akatsuki, are you trying to go to war with the entire shinobi world? The domineering words of the fourth rakage slightly eased the morale of the shinobi of the five major shinobi villages. But they found that the gaze of the Akatsuki crowd above them wasn't on them at all. Not a single person reacted to ice words. Awkward as hell. Nagato looked at Uzumaki Naruto, who was still unconscious below, his left palm moved slightly, and an invisible attraction arose. The root members below suddenly felt a suction force coming out, and in the next moment, Uzumaki Naruto was already released from his shoulder. Naruto. Jiraiya's complexion suddenly changed. He used his sky walk and directly took off. 
he chased Uzumaki Naruto and flew towards Nagato. Deva Path's figure moved and appeared in front of him like a ghost, blocking Jiraiya's only way. Just when Jiraiya was blocked by Deva Path, an unexpected figure suddenly appeared from the crowd. She pulled Naruto, who was about to be scooped up by Nagato, with one hand and blasted Nagato with one punch. Nagato's right hand was still dragging the stone ball that sealed Mike Guy. When he saw Uzumaki Naruto was being taken away, he swung the stone ball and blasted it at the newcomer. Boom! The stone ball made contact with the fist, and in the next moment, the figure's arm was instantly bent into a bizarre shape. The figure was also attacked by a huge force and shot towards the ground with a bang. Tsunade. Jiraiya, who was in the air, was the first person to see that figure clearly. At that moment, he saw Tsunade fall to the ground after being knocked unconscious by Nagato. He immediately pushed Deva Path, who was fighting with him, away and chased after Tsunade with Skywalk. Tsunade was falling, and her hand that was holding Uzumaki Naruto automatically released. Nagato controlled Deva Path to pull him up and hold the boy in his arms. Uzumaki Naruto, capture successful. Deva Path's cold words made the faces of all the shinobis below instantly grim. Sure enough, Akatsuki knew that Uzumaki Naruto would stop them in the future, so they came to capture Naruto. Damn it! Below, each of the shinobi gritted their teeth and looked at the Akatsuki crowd, eager to beat them up to death. If a gaze could hurt someone, the Akatsuki's crowd would have died a hundred times over. Where is Hyuga Hinata? Nagato turned a blind eye to the eyes below and directly asked the Akatsuki members. Still in the Hyuga clan. Hyuga. Pain nodded and looked at Jiraiya, who flew back holding Tsunade. The stone ball that already had cracks because of her was smashed. Chibaku Tensei, release. With a soft puff, the stone ball directly broke apart into countless gravel and hit the two people. At the moment the stone ball broke, a body wearing green clothing and shining blue suddenly and violently fell. Guy. Jiraiya was overjoyed when he saw that guy wasn't dead. Guy, Naruto is in their hands. We must get Naruto back. Guy, whose whole body was sparkling with blue mist, heard Jiraiya's words, turned his head to look at pain in midair. Suddenly, his pair of eyes were wide open. It's you. Almost as if the words were squeezed out from his teeth, Looking at the Akatsuki group, Guy looked indignant, full of anger. He didn't think that one day, he would be fooled by the enemy. 8 Gat. Ku. Before he could shout out the opening words, he saw Deva Path holding Uzumaki Naruto in one hand and with the other, his chakra spewing palm was on top of Uzumaki Naruto's head. If you move, he will die. Guy, stop. Jiraiya hastily spoke out, interrupting Guy's subsequent actions. Guy blinked. This scene. He was inexplicably familiar with it. Jiraiya-sama, as long as I open the eight gates, my speed can exceed the other sights. I will be able to save Naruto before he kills him. No, we can't gamble with Naruto's life. Jiraiya's face looked grim. He felt the gap between this Nagato and the Nagato he saw in the exam space. More purposeful. More merciless and on the other hand, more powerful. Jiraiya took a deep breath and handed the unconscious Tsunade to Shizun, who came running in a hurry. Nagato, what are you going to do? I want to achieve peace in the world. You think what you're doing now is bringing peace to the shinobi world? Jiraiya laughed angrily. For the first time, he regretted teaching this guy in the beginning. Perhaps, letting Orochimaru kill him at the beginning was the right choice. Looking at Jiraiya's appearance, Payne suddenly remembered a phrase he had learned that was very appropriate for the current scene. How can a songbird know the ambitions of an eagle? With that, Payne sighed deeply. Until this moment, he deeply felt that the shinobis of the shinobi world were too stubborn. Too foolish. Even if they didn't know how to adapt, the worst thing was that they couldn't accept being corrected and had great ideas. At the moment, the loneliness of being at the top deeply affected him. Uzumaki Nagato was deeply aware of the difficulty of change, the great responsibility, and the seriousness of his mission. However, he must bring peace to the shinobi world. And this was his first step. He needed to start by opening the minds of these foolish people. Today, I will let you know that I'm superior, 
and I'll also convince people with virtue. Payne smiled coldly and pulled out a golden token in his hand with two big gilded letters on it, Makeup Exam. It's the Makeup Exam token. The moment they saw the token, everyone panicked. They didn't understand what Payne was doing by bringing out the makeup token at this time. Shit. Stop him. Nara Shikaka yelled. Kanoha's shinobi heard it and was just about to move. Open the makeup, exam space. Makeup candidates, everyone in Kanoha right now. In the next moment, along with the suppressed excitement in Payne's voice, the crowd suddenly found that they had arrived in a pure white space. Makeup exam space is open. The total number of people taking this makeup exam is 62, 111. This exam mode, filling in the blanks. Moderator of this makeup exam, Uzumaki Nagato. Dash, binge.